Do I make a whale noise? You don't know how to make a whale noise. Like oh like my a, god. A long, long high-pitched sonar pulse. <laughs> I'm thinking about the, the dolphin sounds and when Mo is trying to move the dolphin. That was pretty good. Oh no, wait, what was? Yeah, because that's that's yeah, that was actually kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> what is? Bring you'll know. What was he moving? Was it was was it a was it a dolphin? Or was it a whale? Um, wait. Oh, Mo was yeah the the whale. All right, they're on to us. Get him back to Sea World. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> wasn't it? A, wasn't it a killer whale? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it wasn't yeah the sound mind. effect is like. <laughs> <laughs> Are we oh, live yet? God. We're live, but we haven't we're like gone public, babes. so people will hear this oh. in the re-upload. <laughs> Hello, weird oh, re-upload people. Um, yeah, we we watched Star Trek Four: The Voyage Home. What? And so now we just got <laughs> whales on the brain. Oh, I I know about that. Humpback whales. I wonder how many people here have actually seen that. Hey, I, all I whales are humpback whales if you have the right attitude. Give me like <laughs> 10 years when Jay and I are through all Star Trek. Maybe You're not going to watch all Jay. of it. Just TNG loses. Well, we maybe with that on. weak attitude, we won't. It would, take, it would take, I think, nine years to watch all of TNG, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. Well, it, the releases, the weekly ones, would probably take nine years. Not the watching. Speeding the fuck up? Yeah, yeah, weekly. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's it's pretty impressive that within like, I think I think it was what within fourteen years they made enough content that you can watch one a week for nine years. That's pretty good. <laughs> that is pretty crazy. Not bad. Mm. Uh, well, didn't doesn't like Doctor Who be that Star Wars no? shows? So it's, uh, maybe, maybe like in the early days when it was like a production line, um, as in like they just filmed one a week every week the whole year. I mean, that's pretty hard to beat. To be fair. Yeah, we should appreciate them the most. They did the thing. By the way, Jay, I've only seen like one or two episodes of Old Who, and it was like thirty years ago, so I can't really speak to how well that production line worked. But I'm I'm willing to bet it's probably better than the newest seasons that everyone seems to hate. Jay has yes. forced me to watch a couple of the oldie ones, and to be fair, they have a charm. At least the ones I've seen. I mean, the ones that you've seen, I don't think are particularly standout ones. They are charming, however, though. I've, and they spend Jay, more time I've with characters noticed. than the new ones do. That's true. Sorry, I've just noticed Jay's profile picture is a gift. <laughs> <that occasionally flashes up. laughs> Everyone notices that eventually. Yeah. <laughs> it's a come. I want come one. Make... I mean, it took me like 15 minutes to make, and I did it during an EFAP. Mm -hmm. During the arcane EFAP, I just, it was like, that would be funny, and then I did it, and then I... <laughs> you know what, you were correct. It was funny. Or it like, was funny. no one noticed for like three hours, and then suddenly metal burst into laughter, and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was fun. About the old days. You guys being serious, or is that a meme part of the title? You don't actually think Kenobi is good, right? Um... What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you may have thought, may, I, I, we've put out some minis, we've put out some discussions. If you've caught them, you'll have some idea of how amazing we think the show is. Um, if you don't yeah. think it's good, oh. you're just trying to ruin people's fun. Yeah. No, we, we should have we agreed on this beforehand. We should have just spent six hours sarcastically praising it to see if people would notice. <laughs> no, there's no way I could do that. They would have picked enough so quickly. They, they'd see right through us. So, it would have been funny though if they complained so about hard. Ken and Booby on my stream, so it wouldn't even want to work. <laughs> it would it would be funny if you came here like CJ being like, "Oh my god, that show was bad." And then all six of us are like, "That was probably the best thing we've ever seen." Yeah. What if we spent the full EFAP genuinely trying to compliment the best aspects of the show, like just scraping through it and be like, "Can we compliment this? Can is does this work?" Like you Make know, we to be those... as charitable as possible. <laughs> not, not even like, not even like. I mean, hype. I guess that would be too good faith. But just like picking out those occasional moments where it's like that line of dialogue was pretty good, and then ignore if you ignore everything else. That's great. I think we ended up complimenting the same line of dialogue three different times across the <laughs> minis. That's how little we had to say that was good. We just kept hey. being like that one was good. <laughs> Isn't it great how when Obi-Wan is asked what the Force is like, he's like, <laughs> if you're afraid of the dark and then you turn on the lights, it's like that? What a line of dialogue that was good. 
<laughs> mm. Across the, you, six episodes of this million, millions of millions of dollars worth of production of a TV show about Star Wars. We're like, hey, that one line was neat. It was also one liked one it when the Jawa said that cleaning costs extra. That was a great line. Yeah, that was awesome. Great line, yeah. It, you, you have like some kind of job we have to go undercover as a, a fan of this show to do something for whatever reason. And the writers are like, what lines do you like? And you name those two, and, and they're like, what else? And you're like, oh, shit. You Change have a, the subject. You have a guy on the, the chair in, in like where... a van outside who's like, I'm, I'm trying to find you a line. I'm trying to find you a pretty... God what, damn it. What, what Owen says, uh, he is my own. You say that and go, oh, yeah, that's great. And that's three. So now I believe you think the show is good. And you're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> We you three lines across six episodes, and <laughs> and two me. of them are cleaning cost extra. That's three words. Okay, uh, he is my own. That's four words, um, and then the Kenobi thing. So to be fair, two of the three lines are seven words. That's fine. And <laughs> they fall. They almost fall apart the moment you put them into the context of the rest of the episode. So, how does the cleaning cost extra fall apart? I, uh, you gotta just kind of wonder why Obi Wan Kenobi, Obi -Wan Kenobi takes shit like Obi that from Jawa. <laughs> I, sorry, that was a stutter. But why does he take shit like that from a Jawa? Like he'd just be like, "No, how about what, what is he supposed don't to steal do? my shit, or I'll kill you." Well, I wait, would have thought he would have known steal it from him? At, at this point that cleaning costs extra. That'd be my assumption. I I don't think I think he's trying to keep a low profile and threatening the Jawas would be, um, <laughs> it would be would not work with that goal. That's yeah, true. The Jawas are right. like the drama channels of Tatooine. Mm. Um, it's an interesting. Do, you, do Jawas show. have strippers? They're Probably. like a tribe of keen what? stars. What do they even look like with their hoods down? Oh, do we want to know that? Maybe they die. Is that something that? <laughs> Maybe they die. Jawa without hoods. <laughs> It's like it's like shaving the beard off a dwarf. It's a very it's it's a very shameful thing socially. So if if a Jawa pulls down the hood of another Jawa, then he just like melts, or maybe the sun hits him, and he disintegrates like a reverse witch. Wait, oh, yeah. I typed in Jawa without hood, and one of the results I got was Bosk. Like, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, the lore expands. The no Jawas way. are just tiny Trandosians wearing hoods. Maybe no, no, it, they're yeah. big. They just, when they put the hood down, they turn into these big, tall, strong lizard people. <laughs> and I didn't mean for that to sound romantic or anything. Uh, and there's just this cultural acceptance that you don't do that, but no one knows why. You're just not supposed to do it. Little do they know, if they would have all put their hoods down, they'd turn into these big lizard people, and they'd be able to fuck shit up. It doesn't seem to be a genu generally accepted answer. All of the like visuals that I've seen for what a Jawa looks like under the hood is like they don't look anything like each other. Unless unless a Jawa like is just like the style, like that's the style, but like there's loads of different species under there and they the all look style. different. <laughs> well, it could be the born of What's the hood. What's the season? Oh, a brown hood. Oh. Uh, and they have a maximum uh, height. The, can't, the can't be in our gang in. unless you're <laughs> under five feet tall. Oh, what if they're like the um, what if they're like the hunters from Halo and there are a bunch of worms underneath there, like Good a collection right, okay. of I'm in. worms acting as a singular entity? They always refer to <laughs> themselves as we, even yeah. if there's seemingly one individual. What are results for Jawa without the hood is fucking Maskinata. <laughs> 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 Do you guys uh, remember that legendary character? Maz Kanata? Yeah. yeah. I love the diversity of Star Wars. <laughs> Crazy new alien design. Uh and then like and, and she knows everything. And she told us we would find out another time and we never did. I feel like if Maz she, went outside she didn't say we'd find out. She just had to ask the question at another time. They never like, did. I, well, that's true. They didn't. Unless they did it off but, screen. You know, it's probably Bastards. a comic book or something. I have it to remind is. myself what she... Maz cannot... cannot uh... Oh, yeah. I, I remember her. There's... I, I, the, the, I had the general orange alien... Little orange alien kind of look in mm -hmm. my mind. Going back from memory. But I had to take a look. It looks like if she looked up during a, uh, during a rainstorm, you'd get two bird feeders. Anyway.
the pool with a little bit of water. I get it. Oh, look. Oh, no. That's not a cosplay. Oh, my God. Oh, dear God. Oh. <laughs> That's <laughs> horrifying. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. oh I wouldn't oh, fuck that. I feel bad because looks, like, a lot of looks, work would have got into those. A lot it looks of like their face is imploding. But they're terrifying. Yeah. Just because you put a lot of work into something, it doesn't mean you should have. <laughs> well, it's really classic. impressive. The one on the right looks like it's just like a bought rubber mask. If that, because there's there's no way that those are human eyes that far apart. I don't know. Maybe. Hey, <laughs> hey, wow, Jay. Wow. wow. I was gonna say, Adia Taylor Joy is is a nice person. Don't make fun of it like that. It's fucked up. No. <laughs> <laughs> I. I think, by the way, I think I have discovered unintentionally where Ezra Miller is hiding. He's standing, he's hiding behind, uh, Maz Kanata in that okay. robe there. He's so, on the run. Today we're here to gather, gathered here today to talk about, um, oh yeah, I probably should have mentioned it first. Like, where's the mini for the finale for Kenobi? It's getting made, yeah, okay? Fuck. It was a long boy. Um, we've even got this is the first one we have all three of the Ken Booby editors working on it. We've got a third of it each. It's getting pieced together yeah, soon after this EFAT, probably. Um, hoping to come out on me. Sunday, but that's um, only a 50 50 wow. sort of thing. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's not an impossibility. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, that's so, fun. you know. Plenty of fun ahead, um, but until then, you're gonna have to be tidied over by us discussing some some Ken Booby on on this stream here, and uh, you know we got we we we, we, we have I, I don't even know if we ever have covered them, but like there's some reviews of the show after the season finale, and they're quite positive, uh, exceptionally if you may say, and then there's other perspectives to t to to check out as a result of it. I would say that, uh, as the title says, you got you got that. Why, why do fa Star Wars fans hate everything? And uh, uh, I feel like that's why it's good that we have um, possibly the most hateful Star Wars fan I've ever seen. We are seen very hateful on this yeah. cast, being a uh, Jay, of course, put out a tweet. Star Wars is shit. I think that was pretty rude and um, attacked episode four uh, for no real I mean, good reason uh, at all. You hurt episode four's uh, feelings. Forgotten that a stormtrooper hit his head on the door. Yeah, how do you, you feel now that you've been told that 10,000 times, Jay? Does that affect your opinion on the show? Ah, uh, look, look, look running at that. away. Yeah, scared. That's what that is. In, what if, <laughs> kinda, what if kinda, the, the... Yeah? I kind of hope that wasn't on purpose. Well, this happened before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope it was. I want him to know what he's done. Who did that happen with before? Was it the Halo stream? It was, wasn't it? It was ER. Uh, he, like, yeah, died. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, they were like, ah ha ho, alrighty, are you can you can come back now? <laughs> Please, good joke, uh -oh. funny. <laughs> Maybe I, I feel there's a good chance Jay's listening and knows now to stay out for a decent chunk of time to make it no. look as though it was uh, accidental. Look, Jay could be playing 4G says, chess. Oh gosh, the do. apartment internet sure is bad today. You guys are gonna feel so bad when this is the last time we ever. Okay. No, that makes it even funnier. That's even better. <laughs> how come? How come when I I, I still comedy. have this I still have this tab open for Maz Kanata Kanata. Every time I say your name, it's different. Maz <laughs> Kanata, and and one of the little pictures is Ray got her yellow lightsaber from Maz Kanata. Star Wars theory YouTube. I'm like fuck off. Maybe she did. She built, like, it, it was you. made out of her staff. She built it. It was her staff that yeah, was Yeah, and, and Mando Kananta helped her build it. Yeah, just had to get a nose lizard and then they were off to the races. <laughs> right. Also, I think if TFA oh my God, has I established... <laughs> I always forget about the nose lizards and then How I remember you? the nose lizards. So like, oh, right. <laughs> right, yeah, lizards? the nose lizards. That's all lizards. Oh, because they just have noses? Yeah. Well, they all go in someone's nose at some point. Oh, right, the nose lizard from Boba Fett, the one that what jumped into his meant? fucking face and gave him a psychedelic trip where he oh, yeah, that's, found that's a what... tree in the desert and then brought back a limb so that it could be gaffied. 
So not everybody though. probably understood time. my joke then. <laughs> that happened. Jesus. It did. It's great. Someone wrote that, and they were like, this is Star Wars. This is Star Wars. Well, yeah, and then there's people on Twitter like, finally, we understand the deep cultural interestingness of... of Nobody seemed to care about the slavery part. That was weird. They really didn't? That's kind of weird. Hey, listen, I look, think it's a different Shmi culture, Skywalker, okay. Did. Who? No one Shmi cares Sky about that. Is she? Is uh, that a gaffy stick? I don't know. Is a character Did from you name your gaffy stick Shmi Skywalker? It'd be a pretty good name for one. I think so. Really? Yeah, why not? Maybe, like, maybe Dirt Walker. I can see <laughs> well, why you'd call it that. But... Sand... Sand Wanderer. This is modern Star Wars. We gotta subvert expectations. Grit Hiker. Um, Play Poker. Oh. Flicker. Come Guzzler. Yeah, he'd be Link. As I was saying, I don't know if we've ever covered these lads before, but they're famous. Everyone knows them. They're called... Wait, I've actually forgotten. Is it Internet Ooh. Gaming News? Is that what the, the three letters stand for? I, I don't know. I don't all I see is Big Buck Bunny. Yeah, me too. Oh, don't worry about that. I, I would have thought I've given it away. <laughs> I would I not? For actually, what does that? Can we watch this instead? I so, wish we could. <laughs> Wikipedia. Yeah, so it's Imagine Games Network. That's 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 uh, the full Imagine name. Games oh, Network. Like they're, 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 we're not even talking. They're, they're talking about TV shows too. They've cheated. I can, I can imagine yeah. a games network. It's shit. It is pretty shit. I Why don't you imagine a good one then? Look. IGN's liked by basically nobody. <laughs> no, IGN, IGN just has that reputation for you give Call of Duty like nine every year. <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember when they gave uh, Alien Isolation a six out of ten because the guy found it too hard? Whoa. <laughs> what was that? No, he said, he said that Alien Christ. AI was too good. I think. Um, I think IGN and like the generally bad opinion that people have of them is almost indicative of the problem that you are faced with as an organization where nobody particularly cares who writes your reviews, but like who writes your reviews matters a lot because people have different tastes in games. Because yeah. it's the and person who writes your review. Or, or what I mean is people will be like, man, like. They gave Call of Duty a 9, but then gave another better shooter a, a lower score, and then you find out the person who, like, reviewed that one expresses in the review that they're kind of, like, not a fan of first-person shooters or something. Well, isn't it also like... the problem that they pay, like, ridiculously low, uh, like, oh, I mean, a lot of articles late wages to, to, the, to the article writers and shit? It's all, um, um, I think that... It's all, like, mostly up. freelance. Well, it's but... just IGN is, like, the epitome of like the games journalism website i think mm -hmm. it's just kind of funny when a lot of people are going to be getting their news either directly or indirectly through like these sites anyway but like ign definitely has that reputation it's like ah yeah right like have they, have they ever given a five to something they probably have but i'd just be curious what oh, yeah, out of five they, 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 they definitely things. have well it's just they yeah. do but the meme is the IGN scale goes from 6 to 10. Yeah. <laughs> so that is, so a 6 from IGN might as well be a 2. Sounds about right. Yeah. They fucking hate well, yeah. it if it's a 6. It's like, oh no. Meanwhile, if we give something I mean. a 6, people be like, oh shit, is it good? It's like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's adjust your scale. Like, you gotta adjust it to be not 6 to 10 as <laughs> your ratio <laughs> for video games. That. Because I used to have, like, point review scores, I think. And not, not like, even, at, you know, 7.5. It would be, like, 9.2. Like, what? such an odd system. Yeah, there, that was the meme. The 7.8 out of 10, too much water. Yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> that so, water. <laughs> so, so, for them, like, 5 out of 10 is Fallout 76. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, like, wow. Oh, yeah, no, uh, no, Fallout. legit. They gave Fallout 76 a 5 out of 10. That's amazing oh, okay. that that gave it a 5. <laughs> Like the, genuinely, that, that the normie was... scale goes from um, five to ten. Like even literally, they like I'll show you. I found they they list what their uh like basically what their scores mean, and five is mediocre, uh, Medi six is okay, five. and then up so on. It's it's not though by their system. If you get like <laughs> a five, it's a catastrophe. It's a so weird thing with the with the numbers like, because I, I feel like that stretches over to just all different kinds of content creation. This is like, kind of interesting. Like re just recently, when I was watching someone 
doing a, an alcoholic drink for themselves, shots it, it's like, oh, that was disgusting, 4 out of 10. It's like, wait, what? Why did you, why, why did you do that? I just don't understand why this happens all the time, everywhere. The Last of Us is not 10 out of, t like, that game's got problems from a design standpoint. Yes. It was an interesting selection here, right? God of War, presumably yeah. 2018, The Last of Us, oh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Grand Theft Auto V, it's like... It doesn't surprise 10. me even slightly that these are their picks. No, I know, yeah. they're, they're very, uh... I, I guess, like, they're the boring choices for, like, best games Greatest ever, game you know? of all time, like, yeah. Ooh, it, it would I'm... be even better if they had Skyrim in there. It's like, ah, yes. <laughs> The first, no, yeah, to agree with you, the first I'd knock out is The Last of Us. Um, oh. Yeah, The Last of Us shouldn't be in there. It's uh, I look that game, the artificial intelligence is bad. It's just plain bad. And that's like a huge pillar of the... Oh, hey, it's getting remastered, so that won't be a problem. Okay. Last I looked up their Bioshock great. Infinite review. Oh, they gave it like a 9 or something, I remember that. They got a 9.4 uh, out of 10. Yeah, it's, yeah. The blurb <laughs> thingy is, in total, Bioshock Infinite is a brilliant shooter that nudges the entire genre forward in both oh, yeah, uh, with innovations in both storytelling and game storytelling and gameplay. If you say 2013, so. 2013 was very much the year of games journalists getting incredibly insecure about their job and like needing to justify the value of like video games by praising like games like Infinite and The Last of Us for like storytelling as though games haven't told stories like since their inception. <laughs> in some shape or form, as if like there's never been a good video game narrative up until 2013. It was a really odd period for, for like the industry. What do you think right, about Bioshock? Um, like, hmm. What did I'm they sorry, give? I'm just... Nines. They the gave Resident is... Evil Two remake. Oh, it's yeah, probably the remake. remake. Yeah, That's... yeah. Um, I don't know about that. I like that a lot, but. Uh, I never completed it. Also, they've got yeah. Batman Arkham Knight there, which makes mm. me <laughs> curious how they did their mm. review for that when it came out. Like, that one wasn't these... tatters when it came out. Holy shit. Arguably the worst one in the franchise. But when it came out, though, from what I hear, it, it, once it's stable, it's good, right? Or is that not a thing? Yeah, well, like once, it, it, once it's it. actually working and not crashing every 10 seconds, it's okay. But yeah, it's not, right. not the, the best in the series. The performance stability, though, still doesn't change the fact that most of the game you're constantly having to go into the Batmobile and do like tank missions which like mm -hmm. I mean it, it's yeah. cool once or twice but it, you spend like 40% of that game in the Batmobile and it's like oh my god like come yeah, on you, you would have expected um, yeah. Arkham City to show up there that, 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 at least I expected Arkham I City for. actually yeah. I guess um this is this is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I guess that's an interesting one because I really like that game, but I, I wonder how you would um how you uh, yeah yeah hmm <laughs> I'm just I'm just wondering like what I would how I would because like for instance if you look at something like Brawl they probably gave Brawl a nine and it's like would Brawl get a nine like would it actually get a nine you know. I don't well, know. I guess, Honestly, I would have guessed IGN give all the Smash Brothers fucking games 10 out of 10. I wouldn't even have... I guess that's the thing that, that's kind of boring about them is you know exactly what they... If it's like... If it is if it is Grand Theft Auto or if it's Legend of Zelda or if it's a Sony third-person uh, action-adventure game, game with a big budget, then like, yeah, they're going to give it a really good score. It's just really predictable. Except for when you get a 7.8 out of 10 too much water. Those blurbs don't help them. <laughs> like the, things that, the things that they pick to put on their little dot point list for why they like and dislike stuff. I remember that they gave, in their review of Infamous, one of the the things that was put on their dot points was Cole's voice. It's like, when you talk about like summaries for a video game, <laughs> the voice of one character is like a big knock against it. It's a really odd... Especially yeah. when you're wrong, like in that case, totally wrong, but whatever. It's so just for, funny. For great. Got The Next Outer one. Worlds, Division 2, Kingdom Hearts 3, and Greedfall. That's a, that's a hodgepodge there, isn't it? Also, wait, yeah. the image looks like Rocket League. Yeah, I guess I think Rocket League is uh Also an, an 8, yeah. Well. Yeah. I like Rocket League. Yeah, I, I mean. Yeah, Rocket League's good. This selection... I don't think I've played any of them, so... I've heard a lot of good things about Greedfall, but I, I've also heard that it's very, very janky. Like, it's one of those things that it seems like a... a, a well, a team that 
didn't have a lot of resources or money or maybe experience um, polishing games or even time to do so, trying to take on like a Bioware size project. And apparently they did it pretty well. And it's got it's kind of an interesting setting because it's, I think, uh, Frontier US, but there's magic. So I don't know. Seemed kind of cool, but I haven't played it. A lot of people saying Kingdom Hearts 3 is, is not, not cool uh, uh, out of the selection, mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. A lot I of pushback for that. Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> And the Kingdom Hearts was always too weird is, for me. Is the cool guy the outer in its title, right? Not the outer <laughs> worlds. Go, oh, why don't you go yeah. hit him with your key? <laughs> oh, for you good. Can fucking do it again. We got FIFA 20. Really? Okay. Yoshi's okay. Crafted World, Far Cry New Dawn, and Will War Z. Oh, I thought, I thought you normally say, do you normally say Yoshi or Yoshi? Isn't Yoshi. it Yoshi? It, 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 it is Yoshi. That's how Yoshi says his own name. We've talked about this. <laughs> we have talked about this My several God. times at this point. Please, no My more. Life is a lie. Um, is a lie. As for FIFA 20, uh, I'm sure that one was the best of all the FIFAs. Obviously. I, I find it funny that um, they're, in their blurb they say playing a good game with good as a proper noun. That's what it, What is that? Maybe um, yeah. it's the name of a Maybe they're referring company. to a Developers. kind of like a, like it's a tier of a score that they have on their website. Yeah, I guess yeah seven Probably, is yeah. good. I guess it's, but I I guess yeah I don't know. Um, oh, I I like as well because we we skip past it in masterpiece. They said there's no such thing as a truly perfect game. Um, but those that earn a masterpiece label come as close as we could reasonably hope for. Through <laughs> that lens, we actually say that like. The last, sorry, I keep coming back. To, it's like, dude, that game's got <laughs> problems, and like, it's it's kind of baffling that. I remember no, this video. it's narratively great. Yeah. Shut up. Well, wow. hmm. yeah. It's funny as well because, like, I guess we should expect this, but it's just like, has anyone that's seen a game yet you don't recognize? It's like, I guess that's part of the point to allow people to understand what kind of scaling we're working with here. But wow. mm-hmm. the funny thing is. You start to not recognize the games when you get down to like three, two, like that's at that point it's only ever it's never like there's never a triple A game that ever gets a score that low. Well which is kind of interesting, I guess. Let's see if we keep recognizing them with uh Well Okay. We got Wolfenstein Youngblood, Mario Party Ten, oh, Medieval you got a what? Assassin's Creed Chronicles China. The the Assassin's the, Creed what, side score? scroll spin-off. Is what that is. So the, this is what score range was it? Six. Six. Okay. What happened to Mario Party Ten? Was it bad? Um, I have never liked a Mario no. Party game personally. <gasps> How dare you? Do you I'm not sorry. have friends? Or I mean, you, yeah, I guess you know. I guess not. No, I got an X-ray <laughs> girl you, and two dogs. <laughs> are you shit at lots of smaller games? These terrible like, mini games. I, I think it's just I, I don't you have bad like, memory and coordination. Uh, I don't think that's it. I mean, like the, a lot of the games that I do like involve both memory and coordination. But uh, I think it's just the hey, tap this button so that your person can go past the line before the other. Pe- I just don't like those kind of games. It's like, yeah, now we're doing mm. this. And they have and then some like the board mechanic makes it so that like, oh, well, I mean, like, yeah, I'm, I imagine there's Not hundreds just of mini games a, at this point. Yeah. Sometimes you can tap B, too. Yeah, you can tap yeah. B. Ah. As for a uh, medieval, which which one is that? I forget. Remake. Um, you know what medieval is, right? The it's a Fortescue skeleton man. Oh, yeah, the PlayStation Fantasy. One? Yeah, you know the guy that was in um, PlayStation, PlayStation All Stars, was it? Or? Yeah. Well, he was PlayStation All Stars. Yes, he's um. Yeah, that's. He him. was the guy that everyone was like, "Who the fuck is that?" Oh, <laughs> actually. He's he's an amusing looking character. Yes, he is. So um, let's go down to mediocre. Uh, oh boy. Crackdown three, Beyond Eyes, Fallout seventy six, and Moons of Madness. And this is um this is interesting because you look at the blurb. This is the kind of bland, unremarkable game we've mostly forgotten about a day after we finish playing. A mediocre game isn't something you should spend your time and money on if you consider either to be precious, but they'll pass the time if you have nothing better to do. So that mm. is a description that they think applies to Fallout 76, that it is a bland and unremarkable game that was mostly I think it about. is very remarkable. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Well, <laughs> mm. Everyone knows it. 
because of how it's, remarkable it's it was. Problems. And I guess that's the nature of this scale is, do you factor in, like, the means that are available to a developer to realize, because in the case of Bethesda, like, surely they have all the means necessary to create something that isn't as bad as Fallout 76 from a technical standpoint. And, um, you know, like, I, I guess I'm, I wonder how that factors in. Is it mediocre these days? Do they fix bits of it? I don't think, I don't think that the IGN changed their review scores, like, after the fact. Whatever oh. you get, is what you get. Also, Moons of Madness, I don't recognize that. Yeah, I don't know that. Is Never that... Heard. So is that like one of those Cthulhu game? adventure things? Seeing the word Lovecraftian pop up, what is this? Moons what was the game called? Moons of Madness. Never heard of it. Wow, from the clips, I have. I don't know. This this looks different. Has a cinematic flair to its Lovecraftian horror, but the chore-like gameplay does nothing to get in the way of that. It does nothing but get in the way of that. Okay. Okay. Um, on to bad. WWE 2K20. The Legend of Korra. There was a game for that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Games. games. It was, yeah, not, from what I yeah. uh, understand, oh. it's not one of Aliens, Colonial Marines scored a four. Yeah. That's incredible. Damn. Medal of Honor Warfighter scoring a four. That's, that, uh, got a yeah. four. Slightly below mediocre. Well, no, because there's four means bad. Um, which is an interesting scale, isn't it? Yeah. Or is where it's a lot of scores to all like to to just like because three is awful. It's like oh, yeah. you figure awful is probably like really low. Two? The... Yeah. Yeah. And one is like meme tier. I do kind of like... like unfinished or scam. Like you'd call a scam game a one. Going from five to four, it has now become like these are games we wish we'd never played. It's like oh shit. <laughs> Jeez, wow. Well, like, you know, I feel like if it's a scam, it should be a zero. Oh, yeah. well, a scam can be a real game. It can be an actual game that has the like, mechanics and things, but it can also be some kind of a scam. <laughs> Diablo Immortal. Wow. <laughs> Everyone loved Diablo Immortal. Yeah, like, uh, that's the thing. If you were tasked with uh, reviewing Diablo Immortal, where do you say... All right. Well, the game the game itself is actually like kind of kind of good or okay or whatever, but it's it's the most monstrous thing in terms of you know microtransactions and mm. industry damage and things of that nature. So if I have to assign a number to this game, it, it, does what do I do? You know. Well, IGN gave it a six, so they consider it okay. <laughs> I guess uh, IGN kind of identifies <laughs> the review score system, though, don't they? Like the number scores just aren't. Like that, they're, they're not. They're such like a big focus of what people pay attention to with their reviews because of how short they are. But like, they're never helpful as a guide for like you know, or at least an all-encompassing explanation of like the merits of a of a given game. Hmm. Also, Er said that um, Legend of Korra game it has to be the game because the show would never score that high. This is IGN. They probably would give the show that high well, score. I, IGN do very. <laughs> Very skewed as well scores for like films and TV shows. Like Platinum made the core game too, and it was uh, yeah. definitely a pay shot, paycheck gig. They they needed money, and I think they did another couple TV kind of animated show adaptation games that were equally low effort. But I don't know. I didn't end up any, playing any of them. All right. They had a, a little era where they were making a whole bunch of games pretty quickly. Yeah, it's time. To check out Awful. Oh boy. Got <laughs> Devil's awesome. Third, Raven's Cry, Left Alive, and Fighters Uncaged. I don't recognize any of these. Nah. I don't know. I think I Fighters, recognize... Unca Fighters Uncaged, I'm pretty sure, is a Kinect fighting game. Like the oh. Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine uh, getting a. Oh, yeah. What if you were some professional UFC fighter and you just, you just got a Kinect and got that game and you just fucking destroyed everyone <laughs> like i'm gonna destroy everyone in the real world and the virtual world i'm unstoppable the game journalists only didn't like it because it's a reasonable simulation of what an actual fight is like <laughs> i got beat up every time it's like shooting an ar-15 i got ptsd my health doesn't regenerate 
My health <laughs> regenerates very, very slowly. I was going to say, it, it totally does in real expensive. life. It's just not very fast. <laughs> yeah, super slow. And painful. The Culling 2, Fast and Furious Showdown, Quantum Theory, and Fighter Within. I seriously don't recognize anything anymore. I've heard yeah. of The Culling 2 and how yeah. it released and nobody played it. Yeah, it released. Oh, uh, it, it didn't have like thing? zero players on Steam. Yeah, uh, something like Kong that. Two. Oh yeah, it's it, a BR, isn't it? The Culling yeah, Two is a literal scam. Royale. I. How have I never heard of these? Quantum Theory sounds vaguely familiar. I don't know if I. You're probably thinking Based of Quantum it. Break. Yeah. Oh, maybe I am. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, that's Quantum. Because that's what I thought the second I saw that. I was like, <laughs> oh, Quantum Break. It kind of sucks, but I don't know. It's all right, I guess. Because I guess, yeah, because the, the IGN people just get sent out in, in hordes to play everything, I guess, so you just, they'll find games you've never even heard of. <laughs> when you said that, I imagined the little robots <laughs> from Matrix, <laughs> except for IGN reviewers. They're just, <laughs> and they fly through the air, and they find games and latch onto them. You see sixes and sevens like getting put out on everything, it's like, oh no. Yeah, little games are flying around like the Nebuchadnezzar. And they go, oh, all right, look at me. I'm just a game having fun. Oh, my God, it's an IGN reviewer. And they, like, latch on to it. So before the examples, I'll read out the, the blurb for one, which is unbearable. The silver lining of these dark clouds is that they're often so poorly made that they crap out after a certain point if they ever worked at all. So we were spared from any permanent effects that playing a game this terrible might have on our brains. We don't always take the time to write up reviews of games that are this obviously bad, but they are out there. Damn. And you got Rudolph oh the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Step Up, and Self-Defense Training Camp. Self-Defense Training Camp? The video game? My yes. favorite game. That's Rudolph the kind the of... Oh, Reindeer. it's a Connect game. Like, what happened? Yeah, what did he do? Why. I mean, we all know what he did. We know the story and the song, but... What... To deserve such a terrible game... Rudolph's excited. I finally get a video game, and then they. Just it's absolutely... weird. Um, a lot. Not many of the famously bad games popped up on this list. Like Aliens: Clone Marines was there, but it was a four. It was, yeah, it was no, yeah. It was the no least right bad hell. of their bad scores. No right to hell retribution. I'm disappointed. Yeah. Who was that? So um... I don't think they reviewed it. Oh, that's sad. I know. They right? lost. Yeah, so there you go. That, that gets you an idea of how they review things. You never would have known they even have a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. But they do. Writers. They do, yeah. They One probably would argue plot. that. They'd be like, yeah, you think we don't have a scale for it, but, you know, 476 was very much acceptable. And we'd all just be like, what? <laughs> You're weird, bro. This shows the age of my references, because I was now thinking about it. I'm curious. Why do they give Call of Duty Ghosts? Oh, that would be interesting to find out. My guess they probably is, gave it a six. Uh, I would I guess think, minimum, I, minimum eight, yeah. <laughs> I and think if it's I a think, nine, it wouldn't surprise me. I think minimum eight was a good guess because the answer is 8.8. 8. Wow, oh my God. holy That's shit. Insane. Wow. Ghost got an 8.8. 8. That's think, like a stellar point, quality game. Curious to skim through every. Oh, hey, thanks, IGN. Every call, oh, IGN Call of Duty review score. That's super helpful. <laughs> What's the lowest? Oh, let's. Yeah. Lowest. Um. Oh, that. I guess that's the. Is it Vanguard? Uh, so they oh, gave Call someone who didn't like shooters reviewing it. They, <laughs> they gave. Uh, I. Th they gave Call of Duty one a nine point three. Um. I guess we. So Call of Duty two, they gave a nine. Um. Big Red one, they gave an eight. Call of Duty three, they gave an eight point eight. What are these numbers? What? <laughs> um, Modern Warfare was a nine point four. So that'll be the interesting one. How do how do other games the stack first up Modern Warfare that? from yeah Call of Duty four after yeah. Call of Duty three um and then World at War got that's a the 9. same 2. score as Infinite by the way that they gave nine point oh, four so they think that they're as good as each other that's oh interesting. god yeah <laughs> they're on the same level uh, right. in terms of gameplay okay, so and narrative they, so they get Modern Warfare two a nine point five I love Modern Warfare two but that is wrong <laughs> like <laughs> it's, it's like a reflection of that game's that game's got a lot of balancing issues. Uh, yeah, even if people out there Black think it's the best COD, the best COD ain't getting a 10 out of 10. Or they 9 gave out of 10. Black Ops an 8.5, which is kind of interesting, because I think Black Ops at this point has a much better reputation than a lot of other Call of Duty games. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah. And because, for instance, they gave Modern Warfare 3 a 9, so, like, I would... Mm. Like, if, if we had to use those numbers, I would switch those around. Modern Warfare 3 is not a 9. 
Nine, uh, I they gave remember... Modern Warfare 3 higher than Black Ops 1? What the fuck? Yes. Wow. Uh, when Modern Warfare yeah. 3 came out, I remember me and my friend group like, all tackled it straight away. The campaign was short and frustrating writing-wise, and uh, the spawns oh, were yeah. awful on the multiplayer. We we did not have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Of I course, remember just... faintly uh, Modern Warfare 3 back when I played Call of Duty, sort of, and I was like, Modern Warfare 3 is just, eh. Mm -hmm. It's... Eh. It's that big problem with IGN is that, like, their reviews of a game, they're, they're kind of exemplified here, that it, it's so disconnected from, like, what actually turned out to be the case with the multiplayer for these games. <laughs> the reviews are so disconnected from what actually turned out to be the case. Well, I What's think that? they'll play it. I mean, like, yeah, it's well, really fun. It's got a lot of weapons. Well, remember when they gave Evolve, like, a nine, and then <laughs> the game died in a, in a week. <laughs> yeah. Poor Evolve. It tried. They gave Black Ops 2 a 9.3. I like Black Ops 2, but like a 9.3, man. <sighs> Dude, I remember... Yeah. Well, didn't Evolve come out 90s. before something like Dead by Daylight? And Dead by Daylight was this, like, almost indie-developed, like, janky fucking game. And it is now... It's just been... It just kept going. It's still going to this day, like, as a popular game to play. I say popular, I mean it's alive, and it's got a decent fan base. And it's just so strange, because it was just like this weird horror game that came out. And then Evolve was like, it was like created to be a popular multiplayer game, and it just fucking died. Oh yeah, yeah they're both asymmetric yeah. multiplayer, like the four v one. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm connecting them. Is that you have four humans versus one human in a way? Uh, they're not really the yeah. same at all, but you know what I mean. That would be what the EFAP <laughs> video game would be. One player has to play the video we're responding to, or the latest <laughs> Disney show, oh, no. and then everyone else gets to put pick. From the hosts. And Listen, okay, Kenobi to... had good three good lines. <laughs> like, yeah. come on. Three good lines. Two that of them were seven around. words total. Man, well, so that's like, that's something. Advanced Warfare nine point one. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> that's right. worth asking everybody. If you don't know, of course, because I do know. Um, what do you think IGN gave Kenobi? Ooh, oh, like uh, the whole um, show. Mm. I think they gave it an eight. Eight like point seven eight. or eight. Seven eight, yeah. five. Maybe a nine. <laughs> yeah, because um, no. yeah, I think, like yeah, me and Mark know what it is, so. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So, well, it seems like the average is between eight and nine, is it? Yeah. Uh, Sounds like it. Well, I think that's a fair guess. Uh, I suppose we will find out, because it'll come up in the video. But yeah, oh, now okay. that we understand oh, exactly geez. how uh, they rate, you know, it'll be exciting to see how this reflects upon television. As they are reviewing mm. that as well. But as was pointed out, what a bizarre way to like get your content when you need to know who's reviewing it and you need to know what their preferences are because otherwise, like, you really could end up with two Call of Duties being uh, rated completely differently just because the first person hates water and the second person hates fish or something. And you're just like, <laughs> you know, oh no, that's that's changing everything. Um, but yeah, are you all ready to see what IGN have to say about the Obi Wan Kenobi series or season Man. finale review? This is actually about yeah. one episode. Sorry, because I've just seen that I've seen how long the video is. So there's another big problem with IGN. Like four or five minute reviews, you don't have much time to justify anything. Like, yeah, you could just lie. You could just not have done anything and just lied for four and a half minutes. Was it, um, and no one would know. Was it IGN that did the super embarrassing SpongeBob review? Was that yeah, yeah. I, that was yeah, funny as so. fuck. Is it IGN that did um exaggerated swagger of a black teen? <laughs> Yeah, that. Oh, no, no, oh. sorry, that was GameSpot. It was GameSpot. Game, game spot. <laughs> the, the Spider-Man thing? What? Yeah. yeah, yeah I, Morales. I, I, I know because I, I, game. I reviewed Miles Morales for Geeks and Gamers, and I, I, every second comment was, but does he have the exaggerated swagger of Black <laughs> Zeta? Like, <laughs> GameSpot, Spider-Man, I, I didn't know about this. <laughs> you didn't know about this? Oh, yeah, this, was, this was great. Oh, fuck, maybe it was famous as hell. It was so funny. It, I just clicked on the review. It has 41,000 uh, upvotes and 118,000 downvotes. Oh, I thought they... Didn't they take it down? I thought they took it they down. They probably should have. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They, they released right. a big statement on Twitter saying that the reviewer who said that was black, so we're all racist for finding it funny. And it's like, it's still really funny. We're not allowed to... Okay. <laughs> I, I'm so weird like, thing to say like, in a review, man. <laughs> I feel like we, I can't we, wait for all the white reviewers to talk about the exaggerated swagger of the white teens and games. Um, 
We uh, because we showed the SpongeBob one on one of the Fab episodes. I don't think we ever showed the Spider-Man one. Wish we did. It was funny. Why didn't he just say that the way that Miles Morales swings around is much more suited to like his style and his he's much more like um, he swings around the city with a an urban grace. I believe it was specifically about the poses he strikes as he's jumping off of buildings. And then the reviewer immediately afterwards remarks that it gives him goosebumps every time he sees it. I was like, oh, God. Uh, That's how you refer to the blacks, is the urban market. Why didn't he just say that, I don't know, like, the swinging animations were cool? Like, why didn't he, <laughs> why didn't he just say he liked it? I mean, like, you can you can couch the, the criticism of the animation being different from the Peter Parker animation in the original game, because it's like Miles Morales was a spinoff or a expansion for Spider-Man on PS4. But I think if you just said, hey, they didn't just recycle the animations. They actually cool. gave Miles yeah. his yeah. own swing animation. Yeah. So there's some effort here. So you're not paying for nothing for the $40 for this DLC. Just, I mean, they gave his own to... animations and they're in character. They, if you, they... I was about to say, that's, that's all you need to do is say like that he's less experienced. So he's still figuring out like what his style is in terms of web slinging. And so this is what you get. It's kind of like a combination of a little bit haphazard but also very um free flow and, and fun i don't know why you would need to say that <laughs> okay <laughs> that's I mean, funny like would it be fun to just like go with like just two other completely random mutable characteristics to describe like why you know miles <laughs> really swings with the exaggerated swagger ah marvel Sp- Ah, oh, what's his plan? There it is. Miles, Miles Morales <laughs> really swings with oh, the exaggerated swagger. swagger. Of, uh, oh. Also, exaggerated we should... swagger of a five foot nine left handed man. Like that's. <laughs> <laughs> Before we progress, we just we need to make it clear we should probably all be saying swagger. So, oh, by the way, <laughs> I just saw because you know how like YouTubers implemented the whole what is the most replayed portion of the video like yeah. oh, by wow. far. By far. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. It's hard to imagine that that's the reality, but let's let's have a little look see for those who didn't see it. <laughs> it's literally no one's watched any of it except that bit. <laughs> they just kept on from Peter Parker Spider Man. You can understand how he's grown to this point. You got to see it. You got to live through that internal turmoil with him. The child of a black father and Puerto Rican mother, Miles is a wonderful mixture of cultures and languages. The way he leaps off of rooftops and flips backwards to face the camera before falling into a headfirst dive is just full of the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. (laughs) (laughs) I like that he described it it, the way he jumps off of a building. (laughs) Play it it for the next thing he says, though, because it makes it funnier. Oh, shit. Exaggerated swagger of a black teen, especially as the music begins to swell. Especially speaking of, when Miles begins swinging, it fucking jumped all over the place for me. Sorry, hang on. All of the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. It gives me goosebumps every time he does it, especially as the music begins to swell. Speaking of, we've got to talk about the music. When Miles. Oh, like, calm down. It's just cool animation. Just like. <laughs> it gives me goosebumps. He would have, Fringy, he would have, got, away, he would have got away if he said, like. Just if you just said exaggerated swagger of a teen, he would have got away with it. Yeah, probably. It's, it would still be a dumb thing to say. We would have assumed it was like something to do with his character, not his skin color. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, maybe he just has this, you know, he's he has this exaggerated swagger because that's just his personality and that's how he is. And yeah, you know, he, he just sort of presents himself that way. And so that shows even underneath the suit, it's still this kind of person. And no, 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 he's black. Hey, the way he's characterized in really the game like too is frame, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the reverse T pose. <laughs> in the game, though, he's not really like swaggery. He's very mild mannered and like polite. He's well, mild mild mannered. is like kind of a nerd, right? Yeah, like he's like he is in Spider Verse. It's like the same character, basically. They just try to make the hey, let's have this like super sweet boy who like just wants to do the right thing. He doesn't understand how he doesn't understand how scary the world of superheroing is, and then he learns. And I know, think we realize over. then that it's time to give Spider-Man to Snyder, Dark Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, oh no! no. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Zack Snyder Ben Riley movie one. To really? be fair, 
was like, I think that Army of the Dead was made by it, it was how do, how do we make this work? Army of the Dead was full of the exaggerated swagger of what what, what would the parallel be between Zack Snyder and Miles Morales? I don't even know. A director in the 80s who wasn't on enough coke? He needed more coke. That could be it, yeah. He needed more. Yes, yeah, Zack Snyder needs more coke. <laughs> so anyway, this is finally the Obi-Wan Kenobi season finale review from IGN. As you've seen, we've, we've, we've really learned who IGN is at this point. Yeah. We can really get a good grasp on exactly how they're going to be tackling this subject. Uh, and here we go. Put uh, on your hazmat <laughs> suits, boys. Oh, that's scary. Guys, if you don't want this show spoiled, you best get out of here, okay? Run. Yeah. You come Run. to destroy Run. me. So, this is a very <laughs> bad start. <laughs> uh, I, I love the idea of him landing, walking out of the shuttle, and the first thing he says is, Have you come to destroy me? I, uh, the, the, I was saying on uh, Open Bar, this might be the funniest line in all of Star Wars. It's... Uh, I don't know how they didn't catch this. Everyone assumes it's because they had stock lines and they just had to have him say this, but it could also be that when they wrote this or did this, they were like, well, Kenobi has like walked up to him, kinda. He's he's done this to let he's come to him and in a way. So it kind of makes sense. It's just like, no. Mm -hmm. no. You know it doesn't. Stop saying it does. And I just wish we had cut to Kenobi with a face of confusion, but like it's funny, what? like, you know, it's I, I can already picture the dialogue tree defending this line as well. It's like, first of all, going to like, no, it makes sense, because, you know, Obi-Wan did go to the planet, and like, it, and then you'd get like, and then you'd get, uh, finally, you'd eventually just get them to, well, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, eventually they will retreat back to the safety of, it doesn't matter. It's just yeah. one line, get over From it. a certain point of view. Yeah, yeah, you could use that. Oh, yeah. From a certain point of view... Obi-Wan Kenobi came here to destroy me. <laughs> Stop judging me. I feel like he's coming for me. Have you come to destroy me, Obi-Wan? Imagine, imagine the like the rest of the scene was just Obi-Wan saying, You you came here after me. You followed me here. <laughs> like, do you mean have I God. do you mean have I let you here to destroy you? Like are you confused? Are you okay? Maybe I don't need to destroy you. You seem or uh, he, he looks confused and goes, he Yes? Yeah. <laughs> yes? I suppose. Though he didn't. He did spare him. Bafflingly. Yeah. Idiot. Obi-Wan Kenobi has saved its best until last. Stories come to an end, <laughs> and best others are last. Uh, best was the first best one. Best was the first episode, yeah. Yeah. That's just because they'd ruined the least. <laughs> like, they had no <laughs> chance yet. Enriched by a fantastic season finale that was on both action and emotion alike. You and McGregor excel in um, building. It's just wrong. Why is this guy talking like the closer look? I was about he's to. Kinda, <laughs> he, he, he sounds like he's way too close to the mic. He's, he's doing a very generic, like, video essayist voice, but uh. I can, I can smell the twinge of, of closer look, so yeah, I can, oh, I can sense it. Smell the cringe. Cringe of closer look. <laughs> hey, the voice does well, apparently. Apparently there's people out there who really like it, so screw you, all right? Jeez. Yeah, lots of people yeah. like cringe. It's great. Yeah, cringe is great. That's true. Yeah, they like Kenobi. No, Kenobi's not cringe. It's kind of cringe. Mm. <laughs> out the legend of the Jedi Master further, delivering some of his best moments as Kenobi in an episode. Uh, mm. What is the best emotional performance Ewan McGregor has done as Obi-Wan throughout all of his Star Wars content? What would everyone give for that? Is and it... a Revenge of the Sith? I was about to say, and is it most yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I, I like I the scene where Padme dies for him. Padme dies for him? Where, the, where Pad <laughs> I like the scene for him. Where Padme dies. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, it, it, because I mean, I think it's, but but like, I I do think the one where he he says I'm sorry for everything ranks pretty high, strictly in the he's a good actor Act category. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, he's he's trying. But yeah, I don't know about it being the best, but that's okay. You can think that, humble IGN merchant. <laughs> that's the near essential piece of Star Wars viewing. The, no, the opposite. What? complete no, opposite no, of that. No, Stay away. In no not. way is this essential. It's, um, <laughs> they built it to uh, not be essential. It's redundant. It's decential. They wanted it to be so that it can fit in without ruining anything. They did a bad job of that, but that's they did a very bad job. Wait, this, 
this gives you no new, really no new information that you couldn't have gotten from just watching the prequels. I think it gives uh, you new yeah. information yeah. that you couldn't have gotten because it contradicts things that you would have never imagined. <laughs> yeah, true, so, true, yeah, yeah, so it actively makes it worse. But they did not yes, want that to this be. This show actively makes it worse. They, they totally want it to wanted it to be that they would do this in a way that it can sneak in between the trilogies. Like, let me just get it out, get it right in there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um. Our own <laughs> Once again, Obi-Wan Kenobi serves us heavy doses of nostalgia with the new Hope oh, inspired really? freighter chase with oh, Lair on board. How that's, new that's Hope said inspired like it's a medicine, chase. not a drug. This is, this is why they keep jangling keys because it works. This does work. That's, that's, that's like the first compliment he's given it now in his like main section. It's good because I recognize stuff from the other things that are in this. Yeah. And Ooh. what were the visuals when he said nostalgia? It was the storm. It was sorry, storm. The the star destroyer bearing down on the ship, the most ineffective and unimpressive space chase since the Last Jedi, where the rebellion only survives because the Empire forgot that Tie Fighters exist. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say they forget they have short range Tie Fighters. He specifically because said it's, all it. it's, visual. A, it's referencing a New Hope or whatever, and I'm just like, okay, I guess it's. Whenever a Star Destroyer chases a ship, <laughs> it's just like, hey, look, it's a new hope. Reference. Yeah, even though in A New Fine. Hope it was establishing, you know, how strong and dangerous the oh, Empire like was and how they were competent. The Star Destroyer caught the ship. Yeah, the Star Destroyer like, fucking know. won that fight. Not this one, though. Like, that's just a thing that would make sense to happen in the world. No. Like, they never should have gotten this far. Yeah. Star Destroyer should have fucked them up the second they left the planet. Fuck, yeah. I thought you meant that, like, the Empire should never have got this far because all of them are inept. That is also true. Yeah, but then true. again, everyone that's... is inept, so nobody can get anywhere. Yay. Woohoo. ...by a Darth Vader aboard a Star Destroyer. But the princess isn't his target this time around. It's Obi-Wan. Kenobi's decision to evacuate the ship in order to save everyone on board... Sorry, the music is too loud. It is yeah, too loud, it and it's totally... Is. <laughs> like... It's so epic, though. Yeah, it's... it's is this mm, epic? Don't you guys it's like generic. how epic this is? Super generic. Yeah, it feels I like trailer music. placed. Never yeah. been this hyped to watch someone talk about a show. Is <laughs> 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 an effect on many levels. It allows for a suitably tender moment between the Jedi and young Leia, but also serves the larger story suitably well tender. by further reinforcing Here's the logic of Leia calling for Kenobi the next time she finds herself in this exact situation. It, it further reinforces her calling for him when she finds herself in the exact same situation. So she didn't call him for any other trouble, just for when she's in the exact same situation. That's how that works. <laughs> God, you know, it's so weird. Some people even got to the point where they thought those two weren't even that close of friends as a result of what happens in the, A New Hope. Isn't that crazy? Hmm. Yeah, yeah like when she doesn't really react when he dies that much, and the one she refers to him seems to be that she knew him through someone else, more knew of him more than actually knew him. Another moment where you ask George what their relationship was prior to the, the New Hope, and he's like, "What do you mean? Relationship? What, what, what do you mean? They've never met before. I, don't know. I could CGI in maybe a meeting of them. Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I, I could believe like they met once or twice, and like Leia saw him when he was there talking to Bale. I could believe that. Yeah, that in the same way like, that yeah. Nice up, like, oh, I went to a big party. See, I wouldn't he even have gone that far. I'd have been like, nah. The only connection they yeah, had right. was in the Clone Wars, and and he's been he's been hermit mode, looking after Luke. He saw her for about six minutes when she was born. And he was like, hello, <laughs> and she went. Nah. Yeah. That was the the length of their substantive discussions. Ewan McGregor has perfectly re-embodied the role of Obi-Wan throughout this fucking music, dude. Well, perfectly <laughs> re-embodied the role <laughs> of... And... <laughs> Would you Seriously. say that Ewan McGregor effortlessly just felt like Obi-Wan again, or did this seem like um, a really bad performance for the most part? Because There was, there was actually... Happened. I was almost so good faith with Ewan McGregor as an actor that I, mm. I turned off my, um, my bad acting detector for him. But then there was this one line that he delivered so badly in episode five that I was like, what the fuck's going on with you, man? Like, <laughs> it's you're, probably, yeah, quite more. I think if we were to rewatch it, I'd probably pick out a bunch of deliveries that felt really dull uh, for him, yeah. which is crazy because you'd be like, 
what, like the prequels? I'd be like, I don't think he was very dull in the prequels, actually. Uh, at least, mm. I don't remember noticing as bad. Um, especially because a lot of these scenes he's in aren't, like, bureaucratic or expositional. A lot of them are, like, very high stakes and about people sacrificing themselves. He's like, I know you're scared. Like, whoa. Dude. Yeah. They have that weird prequel-y vibe. Like an alien wrote them. Well, I was trying to say that even with his, like, crappy lines in the prequels, that he usually gave deliveries that were more... That's kind of why people like him in the prequels, at least from what I thought. Apparently there's plenty of people who think the other, the opposite, that uh, he gave a bit of life to some of the lines. Like, you know, like another happy landing. He could have just said, that's another happy landing. But he, but he delivers it in a way that's like, oh, he's fun. Look at him go. Yay. Delivering the leadership we've come to expect from the character. <laughs> leadership? Doesn't he only do that once in like episode five? And he's really crap at it. He says like if we were to fight we will we will lose or something. Like he tells them Rousing speech, eh? Yeah, like and you might be like, well it's true. It's like that's not how that works. You don't just <laughs> like you think of think of Theoden, okay? He makes the idea that we're gonna lose a fucking bolstering thing. In in with mm. Kenobi, he's like, alright. Look, guys, we're fucked. Um, yeah, we're fucked. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, Obi-Wan! Yeah. Well, I guess he said, look, guys, we're fucked, but I, I sent a 10-year-old into the vent, and she's going to take care of it. We got so, hope on our yeah. side. Hope is like the sun. I trust That's her. I, I said I trust her. It means it's going to work. Oh, that was terrible. Did anyone too. tell her what to, what to do? What, what, do you, what do you mean? Does she know how this works? I, know, I guess so. That was even worse, because the, the first thing he said about that to Roken was, do as she says. Do as she says. Yeah. It's like, ah, uh, no, man, she's 10. No, no, she is 10, and I, honestly, I just kind of hate her. And, and, and you know what? You, you haven't been great either, Obi-Wan. You've been kind of... Yeah, all things can... considered, I think the Legends greatly exaggerated <laughs> your uh, performance, quite Obi -Wan's frankly. Obi-Wan's like, uh, actually, I rescued her from Inquisitorious Fortitorious, and they'd be like, yeah, and look where we are now. It wasn't that great. Yeah. I was there, and I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, we saw the whole thing, and I don't believe it for a fucking second, dude. In fact, I think you're a mole. Like, <laughs> why else would they have let that happen? Dude, if he had said, that would have been funny, a drunk Obi-Wan after the victorious sort of thing, the Empire don't chase someone in a bar, he's like, I fucking put her in a trench coat next to me, and it worked! <laughs> Like, no so way. Here. He's like, I took a photo. I knew no one would believe me, but we did it. Look, look at this. This is so silly. Oh my god, wow. But also showing a softer side. His relationship with Leia, played charmingly by Vivian Lyra Blair, formed the crux of earlier episodes. But formed the crux of earlier episodes. Does he mean that the, 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 the quality of the earlier ones relied on their relationship? They didn't have one. It was non existent in episode mean, one. Uh... That just seems like purple prose. Why don't you tell the audience what purple prose is? No, it's just, um, overly flowery language. Um, doesn't really convey what you mean clearly. Just kind of excessive. Because yeah, I'm a little bit confused by it. Um, it's the way it right. sounds smart well, while saying let me, nothing. Let me, let me give you a better definition. So no, not purple flowery. prose. I'm confused by what he's saying. Right. Like, I the idea that the show relies well, on their relationship to be- It's like, in episode two, half of it's not even, uh, with them. And it so was, it's like, I, oh yeah, know. by early episodes, I'm not referring to one or two out of six. <laughs> it's like, oh. It, it's fanboy language for saying the first few episodes, it was just them together doing stuff. Which, which it wasn't, though. <laughs> That's kind of my <laughs> point. The, it, sometimes I wonder about these short shows where people are almost convinced that they're longer than they actually are. Like, yeah. they go super fucking fast. This was six episodes, barely anything happened. Um, but mm -hmm. I guess some people have been convinced, like, oh man, do you remember all the way back when they met? That was so awesome. It's like, oh yeah, five minutes ago? Yeah. Yeah. And like, <laughs> as like I mentioned before, like, Chernobyl's only five episodes, and it feels like ten. Because so much guess, is happening. Mm -hmm. I guess, to be fair, it was three foot chases ago, though. Yeah, a lot of chases have happened since then, that's true. I've chased many small girls in that I time. actually, um... Through the woods. I'm sort of passing out here. I'm very tired, and I'm just gonna hop out. Wow. You just- we yeah. just started. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I've bitten off more than I can chew. It's been an hour. Well, yeah. you're lucky because today we have a bunch of people, otherwise I would have been like, that's it, Jay. I am no longer friends. I don't be doing that. Uh, Nobody friends with well, you. Well, you, 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 you are no longer friends.
Well, you say that I actually kind of go as well. I've just had a family <laughs> emergency come up. Oh, oh god sorry. damn it! Oh I'm god, sorry. what's yeah? Important. That's why. I, that's why I was muted for a sec. Uh, yeah, well, I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to stick around. Well, hey, we I want, I, I want to. I want to rip into our gem, but I, this might be important. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. All right, Metal, well, what's happening with you? Mel, you have um, to go too, right? Right? What? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, well, yeah. Well, before you both go, is there anything you guys want to talk about in terms of uh, work you're getting up to, plans you got for the future? Uh, Jay, do you want to go first? <laughs> I was waiting for Jay to say no. Uh... <laughs> I quit. I've Goal. forgotten what I'm doing. I'm doing, like, uh, stuff, you know? You guys know this. I'm, you know, I've been on here before. <laughs> I'm very tired. Jay Axie, everyone. <laughs> Alright. Nice to meet you, Jay. Boy. Okay, bye, Jay. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've got a big video um, in the works. I meant to have it out a bit earlier, but stuff's happened. It should be out uh, by the end of the month, it's going to be something like 50 minutes long, and it's going to be an absolute banger. Uh, but yeah, for now, I'm going to have to log off to make myself more available, uh, in case this is serious. Oh, no, uh, sorry, guys. Um, um, Alrighty. You're, uh, you're welcome to come back if you have a chance, but if not, that's okay. We've, uh, we've enjoyed having a chat with you for as long as we did. Uh, we'll see you the next time we see you, whenever that may be. Mm -hmm. in, uh, enjoy the rest of this Oh, I'm sure we will. This. <laughs> oh, yeah, this will be great. This is good stuff. All right, so uh, nice to meet you, Mark. Yeah, I'll, good to meet um, you too, CJ. I'll see you guys later. Good bye, bye. bye. Adios. Well, seven I guess I can stay. I Never guess mind. I can stay. That's so. great. That's great news. I'm very happy about that. Awesome. <clears throat> so anyway, I guess we'll continue of earlier episodes, but was neglected in the recent music. ones. It's therefore great. It's so loud. loud. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what's more annoying, the like badly matching tone of it, or the fact that it's so loud. I'm like, they're both pretty bad as elements, but you know. Yeah, they do mm. feed into each other. I, I think know, they weird. might be trying to mix it for phones. For phones? Oh. So, well, so that you can still hear the music, even if you're just listening to it on a phone. Whereas, like, because we're on headphones, I'm assuming, right now. So Even on a phone, oh, I, I want to listen to the review, <laughs> not the music. Yeah, but, like, a phone <laughs> speaker versus, like, headphones that are going right into your ear, that the music will sound much further into the background than it, it will for us now. So they might have said, okay, if most people are listening to it this way, then we'll make it so that... They can see the, the artistic choice we made by putting this overly epic Ooh. music behind our crap review. It could be. It could very well. Great to see them get a dedicated moment to say their farewell for now and wrap a bow on a story that Man, is this high praise. That's great. What high praise? They yeah, a, they, they got a moment. <laughs> they got a scene to These say goodbye characters. to each other. The two main <laughs> characters got to say goodbye. Wow. Uh -huh. Can you imagine a show doing that? A TV show? Yeah, that's, that's what we're required to do at this point. It's like the other tick boxes, they said hello to each other, and there was a scene in which they discussed a topic. It's like, man, you're knocking it out of the park, Kenobi. Great job. Yeah, good, good shit. This Genuinely is like a person who doesn't know what film is. Like, basic storytelling, things that are practically, like, just essential, almost. And they're like, wow, they did that thing that you have to do. That's incredible. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if the other reviews were like, what's interesting about the Obi-Wan Kenobi show is that it didn't necessarily require action scenes, and yet they are in here, and they are very exciting. I could say that. You'd be like, nah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Calm down with that praise. Well, for now, and wrap a bow on a story that is genuinely in heart. I'm assuming I can't get copyright strike for this fucking song, I, right? I imagine it's like, like uh, royalty free. Royalty-free so. epic music, oh, amazing. Yeah. What's their understanding of the characters and their connection to one another further than the films? Sometimes I want to oh, no. stop people when they say this sort of thing and say, like, no, describe these two people to me. Really, to, to tell me about them. Just to see what they'd sort of say after all that we've seen of them, quote-unquote. Then, like, tell me about who they are in this show. I think show. that, uh, less so describing their relationship, but I think you could describe traits for Obi-Wan, but you'd, you'd enter problems because you'd establish certain things, and we'd be like, well, what about the scene where he does blah, 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 and then they'd be like, well, he, but that's because he, uh, he found his matter, way back. Important. Okay, he... Well, you're, you're kind of accepting everything that the show wants you to think at face value. 
know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. This is what the show wants you to think, but like whether it's supported by what's in the show, totally different question. Among the many things this series ruined is the reputation of the lightsaber. Uh, baseball bat. Please give it, it, it proper is a name. It is a baseball bat by now, yeah. Standing of the characters and their connection to one another. Can, can you imagine Qui-Gon Jinn with the lightsaber, a Disney lightsaber, just like banging it against the, the, the blast ball. door yeah. in Phantom Menace, <laughs> trying to break it down God like damn a it. baseball bat? Over up in there. Oh. It actually oh, like starts tired. to break the wall apart. Yes. Oh, thank God, Droidic, because I'm getting tired. Well, for now, and wrap a bow on a story that has genuinely enhanced our understanding of the characters and their connection to one another I, further than the film. This is did. I words. disagree. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it is, it's only, it's only created is what you're problem. supposed to say. Further the understanding they have for each other as characters than the films, compared to the films like they, they ever did. And well, it's so sorry. funny to do that when it's like, yeah, there was more fights in this show between these two characters being Vader and Obi-Wan than there was ever in the films. Also, making a comment like mm -hmm. that or something where you're just like, what are you talking... That's just something that didn't happen in the films compared to the... Yeah, exactly. Because what you say is, oh, they've created like a new dynamic to the, or, or they've expanded on the relationship that uh, Obi-Wan had with Leia. It's like, they didn't seem to have one. Yeah. Um. It seemed like they didn't really know each other that well. Hence, Fringy, why. To be fair, expanding and made it up basically the same. <laughs> mm. These days, yeah. Uh, you know, it would be like you know what the films lacked? Tala. The films just didn't have her, and that's why the show's good. We got to know about her. We got to sacrifice herself. Load a bot. He wasn't in the films. <laughs> he was in him, here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Loaderbot finally gets the Loader, story I mean, of heroism Loader, that he Loader deserves. Is probably my favorite character in the show. You only got two episodes. Yeah, two. very sad. Yeah, but he didn't say anything. He did oh, a lot, a lot was said with his actions and his character. Exactly. Oh no, I, his... I was saying he didn't say anything as a positive. That's why <laughs> the other characters. <laughs> he wasn't worse. ruined by dialogue. <laughs> oh, <yeah. That> was... <laughs> The other inescapable bond the show centers around is obviously between Vader and his former master. Wait, oh, yeah, sorry, you I think that might that. pop up. I need to hear that again. Enhance their under the characters and their connection to one another further than the films yeah. ever did. The other inescapable bond the show centers yeah, around is obviously that. between Vader and his former master. The How does it center around it? <laughs> so, the, did he say the other bomb it centers around? Bond. 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 Okay. All right. I mean, bond is an interesting word to use to describe the, their relationship. I just think it's funny that in your review of the Kenobi series, it's been plastered with Vader, like, as a promotional thing. He's like, oh, yes, the other thing that gets brought up in this is Obi-Wan and Kenobi uh, and Vader. You'd be like, <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Hey, that's it. It's not the focus, though. Reva would be the focus. This is the B yeah, she plot. hasn't even been mentioned yet. This gets resolved like halfway through the episode, or even then gets the rest. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. Between Vader and his former master, Vader's obsession leads to another duel between the two, another and the moment Obi-Wan silently equips his lightsaber, signals no, no. we're in for a good time. <laughs> How, what do you mean what silently? What about the time he ran away? <laughs> that was quiet. <laughs> you didn't hear th I didn't hear a thing. Activate the lightsaber, famously silent. I guess they're saying he doesn't say anything. What he does? He's, he's, yeah, he, he does. He says does he? just as much as he always yeah. says. A line. I think what? he says, "I will do what I must." Right? Oh uh, yeah, that yeah. makes no sense. Uh, unless the guy is saying like he didn't say, "I am now turning on my weapon," <laughs> like, <laughs> something like it's an anime wow. move. Here Lightsaber I go. activate <laughs> thunderstorm. <laughs> and then five minutes later, he turns it on. Silently gripped his saber, just like like everyone ever. How do you loudly grab a lightsaber? Well, well, I, think, I think Obi Wan <laughs> Kenobi activates his lightsaber with the exaggerated swagger of a black team. Mm -hmm. That's why this show's so popular. I will do what I must. Yes. Very much not silent, so I don't know what he's saying. But he did the thing. That's the thing. He he's got his fingers pointing hard. at you. I guess, <laughs> is it that he's like, he's silent because he doesn't say anything before he hits the button, even though he says something about three seconds later? I would say that the reviewer like, just described the scene incorrectly. That's all. Is it, is it just me, or is that lightsaber a little longer than I remember? 
Uh, maybe it's the sure. angle. Of maybe Obi Wan's just it. shorter than you remember. No? Longer than longer than the one at the end of Mandalorian season. Also, two. wait, not the <laughs> blade, the uh, the handle. Oh, the that handle. Is... Yeah, that is kind of long. Oh. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that is. Uh, mm. That's a long. Boy. I was gonna say, is it just me or is that? Because I can't remember how. I'd that like to see a comparison does... with the prequel lightsaber. See if it's I that think long. This one is, uh, that this one is long. just is thinner than the regular, like the standard ones look, right? A bit thinner. But is that even that long? That's like a friggin' Zweihander mm. grip. That's thanks big. Uh, Obi Wan, Grievous, because he does the same pose. So that'll be. Oh, but it's a different angle. It's not going to help figure out. No. Longer a short lightsaber. Some people are saying it's thicker. Interesting. Hmm. No, nah, that's about right. I, I genuinely don't know. I also don't really care. I'm just curious if they made them different. Because, uh, of course, yeah, these yeah. are different tech compared to the, like, literally as in they, they make their own light, right? I'm assuming he's using the Disney ones. So I assume there's this slightly different creation behind them. There's got to be room in the handle to have the, the batteries in there. Possibly. More girth? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's, it's pretty long. Yeah. Normally, I mean, then you will die. The fight delivers in all regards and now stands as the mm -hmm. best between the two. Oh. Stop. No, <laughs> stop. Fuck off. Oh. You saw them swinging lightsabers and throwing rocks at each other and somehow being invincible. It's and like, then, the, yeah. oh my god, the best ever. Yeah, fuck off, gonna... episode hey, four. Let Get us the program. find what, uh, what his reasoning would be, because I am curious. Is it just going to be, if he appeals to just what they say at the end of it? I don't know. Um... But you know, I just, I just let's let's see what this this golden reasoning would be because I think most people would already cite that uh, they prefer Mustafar, let alone the a New Hope's fight. This one I find awkward because um, I there's there's so much that I don't understand about this one. First and foremost being that I don't understand how Vader lost really. Yeah. Um, it seems to me that they just decided Obi Wan is now more powerful than he is, and you're like, okay, fine. I don't know. It wasn't That's done in any clever like way. Because of all the power levels that are going on, just fucked. Just fucked, I feel like. And then uh, like, you have an instance of Vader just drops rocks on him and is like, doesn't care if he's alive or dead, just leaves. Like, that's yeah. weird. <laughs> then you have Kenobi not killing Vader, which is also really weird when that was like his whole thing here and what he was supposed to do last time. And when he doesn't do it, it leads to people dying. And Lots now that he hasn't done dying. it again, everyone Vader fucking kills from now on, it should also be weighing on Obi Wan. Uh, this is what I mean. There's so many things about this fight, and then I don't know. Talking about choreography, uh, I wasn't a fan. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was not at all impressed with this fight. But also, hi CJ. Hello guys. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, everything. It's okay. Not an. It, it's not an emergency. Everything's fine. So I can. I can come back. We. Ooh. Um, Jay's not allowed back though. Okay, we'll let you in. Well. Fuck yeah. Jay. <laughs> there you go. That's the spirit. The kicking uh, what did I, has already happened. What did I miss? I saw the chat was popping off. Uh, the uh, they said that this is the best Vader Obi Wan fight in all of Star Wars, um, which is you know it, that can trigger people. All right, it's expected. Mm, it's debatable. Um, I I feel like the Mustafa fight and the New Hope one beats this one out, but that's you know that's just one man's opinion. Um, also, clearly the best Obi Wan Vader fight was in Episode Three of this series. That was top notch. <laughs> oh god, that was oh, so god. good. <laughs> the one they had the dirt pile, yeah. Mm -hmm. The dirt pile. The same fire got lit, extinguished, and then relit. In the you same couldn't spot. extinguish it that second time. That's too much fire. Too hard. That just that reeked of budget constraints to me because they just seemed to me like they they were only able to afford one pyrotechnic rig. So it's like, well, <laughs> we can put fire here, but that's the only po spot that we can have fire. It's like we need fire twice. Well, I guess it's it's going to be there twice then. <laughs> Handling the oh. let's roll it back a little bit. Delivers in all regards and now stands as the best between the two, channeling the tension and grandiose nature of Mustafa without the need for gymnastics or cheesy one-liners. Stop! Damn. Oh my god! <laughs> without the need for gymnastics, yeah, fuck gymnastics. Just walk around. 
Yeah, like, like uh, there was technically gymnastics in Bespin. Uh, when you do people jumping in different different areas, like, is, is that just is that just bad now? Is that what we've decided? What about the throne room fight? And Luke does a sure, backflip. Gymnastics. Oh, I thought you meant when I thought you meant like in Palpatine's office when he spins. Like oh, the, that the was incredible gymnastics. gymnastics. <laughs> no denying that. That's, that's what I mean. Gymnastics amazing, are just not inherently yeah. bad at all. The M uh, Bison attack. But yeah, I don't know, just the dark <laughs> rock planet, and then the awkward cuts, and they just do, like, basic swings. It's just like, yeah, that's just not doing much for me, but okay, if it does does all the things Especially for you. when you can't see it, it's shaky. Yeah, Very they like shaky. having their fights in darkness to let the, the lights of the, the swords give you a bonus artistry point, I think. Uh, well, yeah, because there's probably gonna be, like, a video essay talking about how clever it was that when he's like, I, I killed... Anakin Skywalker, and it's like, look, the light's going red, it's evil. <laughs> yeah, and when he's like, I'm sorry, Anakin, it's all blue, and blue's a good color, but then when he's like, nah, mate, and it goes red, that red's a bad color, so that does, that is artistic. <laughs> Parrot's an oncoming, the green light on, uh, on Vulture's face, a lot more subtle. And also, that's like his color scheme, super is what? One of these, not like the other. Oh, uh, like Vulture's color is green. So oh. All I heard was colors. I thought you were saying cut and was, I was like, how does this I think he in? was saying, <laughs> I think he was saying color scheme and then cut out for scheme. Uh, I want to see uh, a lightsaber cutlass and it's just bent. <laughs> Dude, let's get a, you just see it bend. And get a pirate Jedi. Fuck it. Let's do it. Arr. And also blending it with the classiness of their eventual showdown on the Death Star. It's an exciting battle that shows Obi Wan's strength has returned. Y well, that was know, stated. Why and why did that happen? Yeah, that Please was, that was... tell me why did that happen? Why was it gone? Why was it even gone? I just, he wasn't uh... strong enough to kill this guy by throwing many, many, many bold rock boulders at him. It's so just weird. So insane or... because we go from moving this little thing on the table to. All these rocks and like a, I don't know, Does it kind two of look episodes, like one and a half episodes. The end of his lightsaber yeah, is getting I a know. bit uh, weak there. Uh, yeah, like... the tip is a little. Uh... You look, I, I can see it on the on the YouTube stream. I can't see it on the watch together. Huh. Unless, uh, yeah, I'm, unless I'm slightly out of sync. Oh, it could be that we're on a different frame, but yeah, I just I don't know. Yeah, it looks yeah. funny to me that it's like. It does yeah. Maybe it's representative of how he's losing this battle. You know, the tip's not his as hard. getting smaller. Imagine if lightsabers go floppy when they're losing. That would be really <laughs> oh, funny. Damn it! <laughs> that a, is that a Family Guy fight joke thing? Yeah, isn't it? Um, yeah. it was like, oh, it is. It, yeah. When the old I can't remember his name. The old guy where he was over. Herbert, the, Herbert the pervert. Yeah, Herbert. Yeah. <laughs> um, Herbert was Herbert a better Obi Wan than this Obi Wan was? Probably. Probably. Yeah. But yeah, this this I just like the. It is just accepted without question at all. It's just like, Obi-Wan is so awesome because he gets his power back, and then you're like, why? It's like, I wonder if they could answer that. Because you'd have to draw it back to, um... I guess when Tala told him in episode 5 that he need, he's, he, it'll be okay or whatever she said. Yeah, that's like the know. only implications we get, sort of like a prep talk or pep talk or whatever. Again, it feels like we're missing that, that Qui-Gon scene where he would have told yeah. him all about it. I mean, there was like two scenes in the last episode where we were like, oh, now, now Quagun's gonna show up, right? Like, this makes sense when you want to put it here. It's like, nah. Nah. <laughs> yeah, like, I actually can't believe that they thought that it would... That, that, I, surely that was a conversation they had in the writer's room. When should Quagun show up? And someone ideally <laughs> would have put forth the idea, maybe he should show up to uh, help Obi-Wan, give him the motivation he needs to see his mission through to the and then someone else said, no, that's a no. bad idea. We need, we need the 10-year-old yeah. girl to be the one who inspires him. <laughs> Dude, I wouldn't be on at the end for 10 seconds. I wouldn't be surprised at this point if the first suggestion was an after credit scene. Like, that's no. what we're going to... Oh, yeah, because there's a recognition that at this point, your after credits or post credit scene is where you have a character show up that everybody recognizes and thinks is cool, rather than at a story-appropriate moment. But um, yeah, as is pointed out as well, it's like, man, Obi Wan probably should have like fucking fought the Emperor. Apparently, you could have taken him. Could have picked well, up. Well, he should have killed. He should have killed Darth Vader. Um, Which time? 
Mm. Well, that's, that's that's just no. I I'm so curious, like the people who like the show, how they would rationalize him. If if your point of praise for how this show ties into the um OT is, oh, see, look, he said Darth. See, he's 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 written him off now. If he's written him off, why didn't he kill him? Why yeah. did he let him live? Yeah. That was always the problem that they had in this fight scene that we, we I think we talked about in like previous episodes, like the final fight. You're gonna have to explain how he manages to lose but also doesn't die. And you know, in your head, you're thinking, oh, well, it could just be that when Vader starts to lose the, his his troopers or whatever, come and save him before Obi-Wan can finish him off or something. Or, like, or, no. or the planet splits in two. right in between them. <laughs> yeah, great, to yeah. separate them so that they don't have to make that decision. Yeah, you could do that. Up to your right. Maybe, that is maybe good like a fierce fight and it's like a draw and they barely get away both or something. And so, yeah, I think all fans have to work with is he was too sad. Couldn't do it, he was too sad. Yay, another thing with sadness. Great. Well, you can get anything done with that. I don't think it's substantive in any way, because Obi-Wan at this point should be very fucking aware of what decisions like that end up doing to the world. And, um... Well, I mean, look at what happened the last time you didn't finish the job, you know? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, even those, yeah. the guy whose neck he saw get broken. It's like, if you had finished Anakin off in Mustafar, that guy'd be alive. Be alive. Mm -hmm. What um, if his parents were encouraged to have sex because of the Mustafar fight? Or it could be know. some kind of connection, yeah. maybe. There could be a connection where he only lived because he let Anakin go. Ah, the mercy of the Jedi just makes me so horny. This is what the parents are saying. <laughs> we should have oh. the sex and make a person who grows up very quickly. It'd be a strange storyline, <laughs> but you know Disney might. It would try be it. very odd, but no, honestly, sorry, I'd take anything over Kenobi. <laughs> I don't know. The, the Mustafar fight was pretty hot. I... Oh. <laughs> it was displaying uh, it in yes. an impressive fashion by slinging boulders at Vader <laughs> like he's taking on an Elden Ring boss with a sorcery heavy build. I don't even <laughs> what. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, what? people will love this reference. What? I love Elden Ring. Elden Ring. I love video you love Elden Ring. You love Elden Ring. I love Elden Ring. Elden Ring. People will find I mean, it especially satisfying OP. when knowing that Vader can hold a whole starship as it's trying to thrust away, <laughs> but he can't deal with a boulder. Boulder oh. is bad. Someone just sent me a little list here of IGN TV scores. I'll uh -oh. post it. Uh, oh no. <laughs> So we can look into the mind of madness. Why? You heard it here. Kenobi is better than Chernobyl. No wow. way. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. I like that finale. Game Jesus Christ. Yeah. Game of Thrones Boy season eight is a is six a out of ten. Boba Fett, Bly Manor, and Buffy are tied. <laughs> <laughs> Boba Fett's tied with Buffy. Damn. And <laughs> Oh, and Falcon, the Winter Soldier, Halo, and Moon Knight are also in the. How the category. fuck did Boba Fett and Bly into the same category? Oh, I don't understand. Halo, they Halo seven. They think that Halo and Bly Manor are as good as each other. That's <laughs> insane. What is this Man, category? What does it mean? Nuts. What does it mean? Wait, wait, oh god! Because as you also, scroll over, they gave Smiling Friends a six. What? That's a, no, I mean, it's unreviewed. unreviewed. Oh, unreviewed. Okay. Oh, oh man. Yeah. I love the idea you go, do, they gave Game like of Thrones that. Season 8 a 6, and you go, oh my god, that's ridiculous, yeah. but it's in the same category as Batwoman. You're like, oh. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> now I'm just confused. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, your, your 6 is our, like, 2. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they think Voice Season 2 is, like, what, a 9? I'm like, fuck yeah. 9. Dude, 9. Oh like, god, I didn't realize nine. the Boba Fett finale is a 9. The finale is a 9. <laughs> joke. Fucking hell. The, the one that basically just overwrote Mandalorian season one and two. It's kind of said that none of that mattered because apparently Grogu is not going to become a Jedi after all. Look, they realized they wanted money, okay? And that it works when you have the little cute baby with the cool, badass, totally not nice. idiot bounty hunter. I, I guess so, but what story are you telling at this point? I, I mean, I know they don't know, so, so that was rhetorical. Like, Skinwalker Luke has to get a bunch of students killed. <laughs> You can't have Man. baby Grogu. Not happen. Skinwalker Luke is just <laughs> this is a good Skinwalker one. Skinwalker like Luke it. is what he is now. He is yeah. he is he will forever be Skinwalker Luke, the strange creature parading <laughs> the face and the voice of something that isn't theirs. Hello, I'm we'll Luke. 
And you're like, no, no. May the force be with you. Get up. Always get back up. The force is strong in you. L Luke said something Yoda. inspiring, kind of. I cried. <laughs> now choose between your friend and me right now or get out. Get I don't even remember. Out. Like the I'm only dialogue I remember from Luke is just making fun of it for how badly it doesn't sound like a human. I don't like it. None of it is the kind of where I'm like, oh, that's an interesting thing he said. Like, no. Well, it's not say just anything generic interesting. Luke Skywalker presumed lines. Yeah. Like, they're guessing at what he might say because it's just not him mm -hmm. at all. Oh, gosh. Well. It's funny as well because you, you, someone might be like, well, you agree with our arcade one, right? It's like, well, I wouldn't give it a 10, but yeah. <laughs> like, I guess I'll allow that it's. I guess. <clears throat> yeah. What else you got? The moonlit planet provides a cinematic backdrop. Like, do we call that moonlit, really? It's. Mo I, I mean, it's, it's not, yeah. that's some shitty moonlight. <laughs> it's not even a crescent moon. That's it's like a little, yeah. a little, it's a new twig, moon. Twig moon. It's, it's not, th this is, it's not moonlit. I think it it's is bright. waxing like gibbous. Is, um, I think that's, yeah, because it's waning as, well, it could be waning, it could be the other way around. It looks like the light's coming from somewhere else. No, it, it, it is, like it is waning. From, but it's twilight. Cr uh... Moon phases. Also, people are saying that they're fighting on the moon, like the planet is a moon. Is that is right, or is it? I thought it was a planet. I thought it was a planet. It was a planet. I it it was a planet. planet. So, so if they're fighting on a moon, it means all light on that planet is moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of wax on wall. Yeah. Um, um yeah, there's a moon in the background though, right? So unless there, yeah. are, the moon has a moon. It's another point on this. Schedule? What the fuck is wrong with me? Just, just go ahead, ignore me. It's fine. Budget I've moon. set a seizure. Tick backdrop for the occasion. Once again, proving every lightsaber duel is greatly enhanced by taking place in darkness. No, no you said no. the thing. Well, no. and then they said okay. the thing. Unless, it, unless you do it for everyone. <laughs> I don't understand. And you did like, on this show. Isn't one of the all-time favorite fights the Darth Maul one? That is not in darkness. That's yeah. pretty well lit, mm -hmm. yeah. Also, with how bright those things are, I wouldn't want to fight in the dark. That would get extremely tough to, like, blinding, in fact. Mm -hmm. Having that bright light and their bright light, that, that might be confusing. Overly Actually, bright. Yeah. Now I'm the thinking about all of it. The lightsabers would be much better for that. Even Return Red of the Jedi lights, uh... throne room fight, I wouldn't call that, like, fighting in darkness like this is. Like, yeah. I felt like we could see everything pretty clearly. Um, this one yeah. Is, yeah. is a bit more awkward. It was just a... The room's color was darker, which means yeah. it didn't seem as bright, but everything was there clearly. It, like, because Luke hides in the shadows. So there's clearly yeah. a very distinct differentiation between the lit areas and the dark areas. And I remember thinking when I saw Attack of the Clones for the first time that when Dooku and Anakin fight after he breaks one of the lights, I was like, oh, wow, have we done this before? Where it's like almost pitch, pitch black and they're using their lightsabers as the only source of light, really, in that, in that moment. But, like, it feels like we did that again and again in this show. And it felt like an excuse to avoid looking too deep into how this fight is even going. So red and blue can flood the screen with every swing. Yeah. Natalie Holt's That's reworked important. themes swell in the big moments, providing music fit for the occasion. Even music if a small part of me really mid. wanted Jewel of the Fates to <laughs> yeah, drop sure, right. in. Why would... Why, well... Well, out of, why would it be Jewel of the Fates? Why wouldn't it be Battle because of the Because that's, I remember it. He remembers it in a so fun song. Isn't that reason yeah. enough? Yeah. That's I guess literally just, it. Can we throw in the Jewel Star Wars the theme Fates. too? I, it, I, just, I guess I just find that amusing. It's like, yeah, like I know we all like Jewel of the Fates, but Jewel of the Fates was Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan versus Darth Maul. What I does just, that have to do with what's going on here? Because it's in Star Wars. Put it in the Cantina song. Theme. <laughs> that would have been appropriate because this show's such a fucking joke. Well, maybe I would maybe the that. other one. <laughs> and to be fair, um, the fight between Anakin and Obi Wan in Mustafar is Battle of the Heroes and uh, Duel of the Fates, is it not? It is. They, well, they do Duel of the Fates when Yoda's fighting um, the Emperor. That's when they inject it in. Which I so think like kind of a, you can draw some meaning out cool. of, but I, I, I guess like uh, you could put it here and argue something. I just, at this point, it really does feel like, I just like the song, put it in. I, 
Oh, I, heard it, I heard it in the trailer. I just want to hear it again here. Put in, in Hell's Bells. I like that song. <laughs> just put in random songs. Do <laughs> Can you imagine like, Tetris put theme. the rude dance to, the, to this fight? I actually think some music from a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure fight might actually make this scene better. Huh. Oh, 100%. It would be funnier, but... Guile's theme. That's what we gotta do. <laughs> Guile's <laughs> theme. <laughs> this theme goes with everything. <laughs> All of its glory. The choreography is yet again a fantastic marriage of aggression. No, come on, come on, come on, oh, no, stop a it. A fantastic marriage. I just yeah, that's supposed to get a divorce, maybe. Let's be honest. You would have said the same thing about the throne room fight in TLJ, and it's all fine, quote unquote, if you don't give a shit at all about choreography. But don't claim it's really good, unless, of course, you can give me some references that maybe I had misunderstood this. Maybe I don't understand how good the choreography is. Maybe Shad could tell us it's actually incredible. I just don't well. see it. Because, <laughs> um, you know, it, it looked clunk as fuck. Straint, embracing a dynamic combination of swordplay and force powers. The most effective part of the show- It's not I mean, dynamic it really... at all, though. It, it, it's very clearly- there's, there's like a, it's almost like you hit a point where it switches entirely into like force power. Force and mode. Then you hit yeah, a like it, entirely swords. I don't even think you're, you're trying to pick it apart. I think this is totally fucking right. If, if we had it so that there was this really cool like long shot of Kenobi coming at him, maybe you know like top right, then top left, and a rock from behind is lifting up because Kenobi's moving it himself, and then it fires into the back of Vader while he's trying to block these two saber attacks. He actually does get up a force shield or something, and they're both at that level where there's like a force fight happening at the same time as the saber fight, but they're yeah, all awesome. relatively lower scale. I'll be like, that would be really cool and something we haven't really seen before and something that I can believe these two are capable of. Um, but no, it's not like that. It's very much, this is saber time, this is force time, this is saber yeah. time, this is force time, which is yeah, not what you, I call dynamic. You can't just fire off your force abilities at the beginning of the fight. You got to work up your combo meter and when your mm -hmm. gauge fills, so then yeah, you can exactly. use Exactly. You get your super moves, yeah. You have to press A, B, A, B, A, B, A, like, <laughs> instead of just A, 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 A. That works. Down is not the fight itself, however, but the words spoken between the two old friends once is Vader's John Wick is music in the background open. right now? I was about to actually ask that, yeah. It sounds familiar, but it could be like... I think that's John Wick. Copyright free version or something. For a moment in time, this all-consuming darkness retreats to reveal that a part of Anakin remains. A teary... Isn't the point of the scene that it doesn't? No, the point is that it doesn't remain. That's yeah. the whole point of the scene. Yeah, it's kind of strange that you fuck that up when that's the whole point of the scene I... that you're trying to pray. But that's fine, you work for IGN, who gives a shit? <laughs> he... That's their catchphrase, <laughs> like... <laughs> who gives a shit? Ewan McGregor is especially superb as you really feel the sadness in Obi-Wan, his regret mirroring Anakin's anger. Man, wouldn't it have been great to have explored that in this season yeah. instead of pretending yep. as though you did? God, his what a waste. mirroring Anakin's anger, even though apparently Obi-Wan lets go of his regret and, and I guess Anakin keeps Darth Vader. Also, just don't call him Anakin. The, the whole point is that Anakin's not here anymore. It's, well, it's weird, you fucked up twice. It's, uh, if you were gonna try and argue from Obi-Wan's perspective, and he learns in this moment that Anakin's gone, it's like, that'd be one thing, but it seems like the reviewer thinks this is still at least somewhat Anakin, which is like, no, the point is that it's not. Vader's voice slipping in and out of both Hayden Christensen's and James L. Jones is a fantastic- Vader's voice wait. slipping in out of both Hayden Christensen and James L. Jones's? Like, wait. You've separated them out into three. What's the difference between Vader's voice and James Earl Jones's voice? Uh, Obviously, if we're ignoring the fact that Reese Speecher is a thing. James Earl Jones's voice is supposed to be Hayden Christensen's voice has filtered through the Darth Vader armor. Yeah, that's what I'm so saying. Vader's... Like That's why I'm confused. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I think in this scene, though, you're kind of hearing them both at the same time, but it was the same thing they did with the Clone, Clone Wars voice actor and Rebels. It's just... It, well, yeah, it's a um, cool effect. It's like, yeah, it's kind of... It's Vader and Anakin, because you can kind of hear the voice not going through the vocoder respirator thing. But... Jamba. <laughs> <laughs> Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan. Can Obi. Show in the ongoing battle within him. A fight the dark side is definitely winning, at least for now. No, the whole point is it has, it's just Vader. Why do you keep saying this? Just Stop Vader. It. The scene ends with Obi-Wan saying, my friend is truly dead. What, what are you, why are you saying it? Stop. 
This realisation that Anakin is already considered dead by Vader is seemingly enough resolution for Obi-Wan. Yeah, which is nonsense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why? Considering he leaves. The uh, whole point oh, well, of him I guess Anakin's here. gone and you're Vader. It's like we've pretended that the whole reason he came here wasn't to actually deal with Vader. And then he it's finds out Vader closure. is all there is and decides from that that he'll leave him alone. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, remember how he said he would do what he must? He didn't. He didn't. <laughs> didn't. Didn't. Oh, you're right. <laughs> he didn't do it. He's a fucking liar. I and thought there was from a certain point of view. <laughs> that's where he gets this from a certain point of view thing. He he said my father was dead. The former Jedi, not his new Sith form. Walking away may well give him the satisfaction and closure he needs. <laughs> but you can't why? Have a why would it give him any of those things? It would, it would be the give opposite. him the opposite of those. Yeah. I'm gonna let you keep existing and living and doing horrible things, and also it's kind of my fault, but not really, but I think so. How, well, I feel like it's more his fault than ever now. Feeling better. Yeah, well, now it's definitely because at least, his fault. At least on Mustafar, to blame. he had good reason to have assumed Anakin was dead from what he did, but it turns out he wasn't. It's like, okay, uh, you know, because mm -hmm. I, can, I consider it reasonable that you would expect Anakin to have died from that, but this one, he is very much alive. He's looking at you. He's giving you little lines, too. You should probably deal with this. And everyone's like, I don't wanna. Yeah, I don't his, wanna. I'll leave him, him realizing that his old friend is dead and it's just Vader now, that gives him even less reason to walk away? Yep. Yeah, he should <laughs> kill him. Yeah. That's why That's everyone was confused. It's like, like okay. what? Yeah. I thought the point of this scene was you're executing Vader, and then you, you, you pause, because you're like, wait, is Anakin still in there? And it's like, no, actually, no, not at all. Then he's like, oh, Anakin's definitely not in there. All right, then. Bye. This, yeah. uh... this is... See you later. Ahead, oh, it's just, I pulled up Twitter and this feels funny considering that we're talking about Darth Vader. Retweet if you want a Darth Vader Disney Plus series with Hayden Christensen retweeted by Boogie. Okay. Like, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But like, it's ben, not, uh, he's not really going to be in it though. It's just going to be James Earl no, Jones' voice with an well, AI the and then he might be, be in the costume. Robot. Until they well, crack yeah, I mean, his helmet open again. I would feel as far as saying... James Earl Jones in costume. It was a complete. I mean, we've said this about basically every element in the show, but it was a complete fucking waste bringing back Hayden just for the what, like five minutes of Hayden content across the six episodes. If but that, boy, like, but you can market that shit. You can market that really well. Well, I feel bad I for the guy. Like in all of his promotional yeah. stuff, he's just super excited to be a part of this. It's mm. like, why couldn't you actually let him, you know, really boy. flesh out Anakin, really give it a shot? And if you, like, have you guys ever seen the show Lost? I'm not talking about the ending, I'm just talking about the structure of the episodes, how they usually have a, a present day thing happening, and then there'll be a flashback that takes yeah. place over the whole episode. So I think if they did that, and had most of the story be about Obi-Wan and Anakin throughout the Clone Wars, flashing back, doing either de-aging or whatever, just makeup, like, as you guys were saying, they both look pretty good, and then have that reflect a story where they don't meet in the present day and i think that you could have kept things very focused on their relationship and very focused on character and it would have been interesting and even if it turned out as bad as this i think it still would have at least made sense that they tried oh, something that there are so have... many formats that are so much better like uh, you can get pretty experimental with it imagine all six episodes were a conversation with uh qui-gon about six elements of how obi-wan chose to train anakin and then we'd get flashbacks to how that was relevant to whatever adventures in the clone wars um, or even before then, even when he was like, you know, super young kid and stuff, and and the whole thing, the whole series is just him understanding how Anakin happened. Yeah, would have been incredible. I mean, even if again, even if they failed on the execution, that would have just been a good idea to explore. Whereas I can't think of anything to pull from the story that was told here. It's like, well, now we finally know how. Leia was kidnapped that time, and one of the Inquisitors kind of became good, or at least not evil for a moment. Yay! I guess uh, it's kind of weird that Reva just doesn't get mentioned ever in all of Rebels by anybody, huh? When she played such a significant role. Mm-hmm. She almost killed the Grand Inquisitor, but that was totally a part of his plan, because he knew that rage for revenge would keep him alive. He was trying. Right, yeah. Lad. Help but feel like finishing him off would have saved the galaxy a whole lot of trouble down the line. Oh, mm. oh yeah, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you get shot. those little little glimpses of like. But that, how is that not a problem to that guy? No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Shut up. Because it's fine. This was epic.
I wouldn't be surprised if on set they all looked at you weirdly when you point that out. They're like, we can't have him kill him. That wouldn't make any sense. And you're like, yeah, it's, like, it's yeah. weird how you've written yourself here, isn't it? Looking <laughs> for a farmer. Name is Owen. The finale does a reasonably good job at upping the stakes no. and throwing a dash of jeopardy into the mix, especially when we know that jeopardy. every main character, all the way down from Kenobi to Aunt Beru, is going to survive. Beru. Aunt Beru. <laughs> in, in what property is Aunt Beru a main character? <laughs> Come on, man. Attack of the Clone. She's yeah, like, in loads of it. Is it this one? Like, <laughs> I guess she fights off a Sith Lord, which, I yeah, mean, yeah. come on. It gives but... her a good whap to a the face. Sith I'm... Lord? Even here, like, this whole show, she's probably got, like, four minutes of screen time. I don't know if I'd call that a main character. Shut up. She's, she's awesome, okay? She's my new favorite. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some information was unclear was always going to be Reva, now a hobbling husk of her former self after her humbling at the hands of Vader. She uh, stalks the. <laughs> 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 Just... Oh, yeah, what was that humbling? Like... Oh, well, he, he ran her through with a lightsaber. You know, it didn't Again. kill her because, you know. Again. I was seeing comments about that. People were like, he leaves it in for a good five seconds. That would have melted all of her insides. It's just like, yeah, probably. <laughs> but don't worry oh, about it. It's fine. Lars Homestead like something out a, of a slasher, a slasher film, wound. hunting for Luke to salvage something some sort of revenge film. on Anakin. Wait, wait he wait, said revenge what? on Anakin. The current theory from everybody is that it's revenge on Obi Wan. I like how just... we have so many theories. Oh. Mm. My favorite part about the, I don't know how the popular one would be revenge on Obi Wan when Obi Wan specifically set up circumstances so that she could get revenge against Darth. Vader. I can explain this, okay? Because this is so weird. Like, if I were to try and construct some kind of video on this, I'd have to go look in, in all the different threads of discussions. But the overall point, which will let's call it the theme of what I'm going to be talking about, is nobody fucking knows what the hell is going on with Reaver in the finale. Nobody. Mm. That, Everyone's very well. confused. Which is a great yeah. bit of storytelling. Um, so, <laughs> you'd first assume that she wants revenge on Anakin and therefore she's going to kill his son. That's like the baseline quick assumption mm. everyone has. The problem with that is she has no reason to know that that kid is Anakin's son. Yeah. There's nothing that mm -hmm. would have told her that in any way, shape, or form. So it can't really be that. So what is it then? And it's like, well... A lot of people have been coming out with the theory that because she organized... You know when she said, Obi-Wan get taken inside by two stormtroopers? That was her saying, I agree to your terms. You and I will kill Vader together. I'll put you inside with two stormtroopers. You can easily deal with them, because they're literally useless. And then you and I will take down Vader when he comes. And Obi-Wan leaves, and so she has to fight him on her own. And then she gets stabbed, and so she hates Obi-Wan for that. And so then she wants to kill this kid because she knows Obi-Wan cares about this kid. That is the current theory that I've seen, and I think that's stronger than the revenge on Anakin yeah. one. However, it was still her decision to attack Vader without help. Mm-hmm. Um, you In might. Which case, I guess it's just I don't know irrational. Well, yeah, and then and then we get to the other half of it. It's like, wait, so you're you're getting revenge on Obi Wan for not helping you kill Anakin by killing some kid that has nothing to do with any of this. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, like, if, if we're meant to have this character set up for a redemption story, this is not the way to do it. And so, yeah, uh, there are some people out there like, what are you talking about? It's obviously revenge on Anakin. And then other people are like, no, it's revenge on Obi-Wan. Because she hates him. The, 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 the answer is, it's bad writing. Nobody um, knows what it is. <laughs> like, I, I, don't even, I don't think the writers true. would hesitate to answer at this point. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, uh, well, uh, revenge on Owen. Because he was well, mean. It's, 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 um... It's the same situation as Kylo Ren. She's confused, and that's perceived as complex. But Look, why it's don't, not. She's just... Why don't you just ignore all the mechanics and agree that it's incredible writing because she's just like Anakin, but she chose not to kill the youngling, right? I don't that's even... That's the difference. I don't even... Yeah, right. It must be funny, right? Only... Because they're sitting there like, we did all of the things. We did all the things that the, they did back in the day for Vader, and everyone likes Vader. Why don't they like ours? What's wrong with mine? <laughs> yeah, like, like you, you, oh. you think that you make the same thing, but the moving parts, all of the component pieces, they're just, they're, they're not the same. It's the Simpsons it's beam. Why does mine look like that? <laughs> 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 He's just like, well, there's a couple of things you fucked up. Screaming as he charges at it with an umbrella. 
Um, because yeah, everyone loves to draw the parallels between Reaver and Vader, but it's just like, why do we keep doing that with like every shitty character? It's like, well, if you look at it really broadly, they kind of match this other person you really like. And what's the difference? Mm. Oh, she's a girl. I see. I see it all now. It's like, no, all the guy yeah, characters are shit in this too. Don't worry. Oh yeah, everyone's a loser. I hate everyone. Regardless, like, it's the one. great unifier. Like Disney's Bale, done it. They all got destroyed with one scene, just <laughs> utterly annihilated. It was pretty bad before that, but that was the yeah, one that destroyed it. Yeah. yeah. I, you just wonder why this. I still can't believe you made that fucking message. Yeah, I'm worried you, you know got what? captured. Here's this it, message for you. <laughs> something that's not even in our coverage, but it's so totally true. Why the fuck didn't Obi Wan delete his messages? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming you can do that on that silly He doesn't know how to device. delete the messages on his cell phone. At that point, you just like have to fucking destroy that thing. Yeah, that, oh, yeah exactly. exactly. That's such high-value information. Leaving yeah. the device the intact, fact that even if you do it, delete it, is risky. He gave it to Haja, and Haja just dropped it. <laughs> right. Man. That's, that's, that's explain need to have a scene. how important it is. Because we we have a scene um, with Leia where he says, Leia, how do I change my ringtone? <laughs> I guess this is, how does, um, how, how, like, when giving a positive review to this show, do you reconcile the fact that Obi-Wan utterly failed at his mission? Like, he failed. Um, if Reba could have killed Luke, she, she came very close to doing it. He nearly failed. Yeah. As far as, far as concerned, he did fail because he wasn't there to protect him when he needed to. Like, how do you... How do you walk away from the show like, ah, yes, Obi-Wan, he's really been enriched uh, by this story when he failed at the mission he was given by Yoda? I they don't, don't address understand. that. They treat it as though he never did fail because he beat Vader in a fight and that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, all the while ignoring that while that was happening, Luke was being pursued by, like, this crazy person just trying Dude, to I think kill that's... him for something. Part of the most frustrated element. He's like, I'm done with Vader. I'm going to go home. And then he's like, Ooh, I sense Luke is in trouble. Bew. All right, I'm here. It's like, what? what hang on. <laughs> like, that should have taken way longer. Taken well, a even, while or even really the premise, the premise even from the first, ah, God, dog. Sorry. Uh, the premise yeah. even of the what? first episode, though, was sorry, no, an actual dog. I mean, no. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> Another whoa. Another actual whoa. dog. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, all right. Uh, it's been great, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on again. I'll see you later. <laughs> Right, it's fighting uh, racism. Yeah, I was, just, was saying though that the the original premise of the show was Obi Wan flat out saying, "Okay, I'm going to leave Luke when it just so happened that I had a confrontation with Sith Inquisitors in the town I live in." And yeah, like, it's just like off the bat, it's like, wait, hold on, how does any of this sound like a good idea to any of you? Oh, it's, it, dude, it's absolutely unreal. If if I were Obi Wan, I come back and I don't know about anything that's happened, and and they summarize it to me as. There was an Inquisitor bunch of people in town searching for Jedi, and that's like right next to where we live. She even nearly killed Owen, specifically. Um, then there was a, a, this, she actually eventually found out where we live and came to kill us specifically, knocked us both out, found Luke, and, and, and was like right next to him, almost killed him. And, and we just, you know, it's just like, you just gotta leave Tatooine. There's, there's no other option. And, and uh, they just stay, they chill, and even having Baru argue, like, it's time we fight the Sith, enough running, I'm not leaving my home. I don't believe you. I don't believe anybody would ever say that, unless Sith just suck, which, uh... I guess she, she says the same thing about some stormtroopers a few years later, I suppose. Well, it didn't work out, did it? <laughs> even though it should have, with how everything works now, but... Incredible, uh, utterly do such a great job. They should have moved away from Tatooine for so many reasons, but uh, a Sith visiting the homestead, that's pretty high up there, I'd say. A good reason to leave. Yeah. This plotline serves its purpose in- And you know what is fucking crazy about this is like, <laughs> yeah, well, you know what, maybe they don't have the means to do that. It's like, yeah, it's not like they have a friend who's the fucking king of a whole planet that's really prosperous or anything. That guy couldn't help. Even though that's part of his message, was being like, I will go to Tatooine and help them with the boy. It's like, why are you telling me this in a message that's gonna be heard by every Sith across the universe? Now, just to make sure, can I get confirmation that you lived at uh, these coordinates, right? Because I don't want to go to the wrong farm. Just let me know if the, the, the coordinates I just gave you here are the correct ones. I think that was just um, being thorough. One of the top comments was like, we just needed that extra line. It's like, in case you didn't understand, Obi-Wan, I'm going to see Luke Skywalker, Anakin's son, at 123 Desert Street, where Aunt Peru and Uncle Owen live, okay? I, I also put the address on one of those. That looks like an igloo. 
I also put the, the, the address on one of those rebel walls just in case you forget them so you can get them there. <laughs> Holds up a little picture that has the address. Can you see yeah. that? Okay, okay, good, good. I'll Giving Reva a to you. <laughs> <laughs> Every form of communication he sends it out to the whole universe. Hey, you probably put it in Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Emperor style. <laughs> God. Yep. <laughs> That's a thing what that happened. happened. Let's not forget that. Satisfactory. You gotta play Fortnite for all your Star Wars canon. Oh, yeah. Some form of revenge on Anakin. This plotline serves its purpose in giving Reva a satisfactory, if not predictable, end to her story. Well, it isn't predictable. It's I, I mean, satisfactory and predictable. Okay, so we were. The reason it's predictable recording. is because of the fact that it's so inept. Like, we were like, this is what like, they'll do because they don't know how to do anything else. I, don't, I think he. Did he. Satisfactory, if not predictable. Does, mm -hmm. does he mean if predictable? Because we knew that this was. Um, that she was going to. And, or did he think it's unpredictable that this was going to happen? I think, I think, but, it's I think what he means to say is it's satisfactory despite being predictable. Yeah. But With he used different words. Uh, the predictable sorry, aspect of... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, it's just... I thought he... It, it doesn't matter. It's not being new. <laughs> go ahead. I was saying, though, the, the predictable aspects of it, I think, are if you've seen a lot of Disney Star Wars stuff, because both... Um, Jedi Fallen Order and Battlefront 2 had a right. strong female elite imperial soldier or Sith Lord or whatever it would be that eventually turns to the light side at the end because it's they can't have her just be evil. I mean, it's so, yeah, like, um, I think I even pushed back on the idea that it would happen when we first saw the trailer because I was like, come on, it's not going to be that, like, again, <laughs> or rather just it just seems so common for them to do as a storytelling idea. But um, I think the part that's funnier to me is that if the writers sat you down during the finale and showed her towering over Luke with the lightsaber active, and they're like, will she kill him? What do you guys think? I'd just be like, why would she kill him? Also, okay. we know that she can't do it's that. Not, well, ignoring that for the sake of, you know, <laughs> trying to be as good faith as possible, <laughs> just... It's it's like you know what what reasoning could it be that would stop it from sliding down on him? I'd be like, what reason does she have to do it? I don't understand. Nobody yeah, does. I don't know why she's here. No one knows what's happening. Flip a coin. Who knows what the thing will be? And then having it be like, you want me to celebrate her for getting Luke out of the danger she put him in? I don't know. Yeah. Feels a bit nice. awkward. And almost seeing her torture Leia and killing people <laughs> and being uh, a horrible person for probably. I don't know, ten years or something. So, yeah, I guess. 10 yeah, years. I, 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 I hope she, she's, she stays good. Y yeah. yeah. Go horrible person. She hates. Like she participated in it to get revenge. I don't like. And there was barely any addressing of that. No, she's got a lot of work to do to like earn redemption. A lot stage. of blood on her hands. Oh god. She, well, she if she gets her own show, and it will be terrible. The the good version would just have her racked oh. with guilt and her, the ghosts of her past constantly haunting her, and how she fucked Qui -Gon up. comes in, they get Qui -Gon <laughs> to haunt her. Even with the uh the really bad starting point for the character, you would have to do the story just fully acknowledging the nature of like what she's done and the redemption. Like that's a long way off. Or well, maybe it's a thing you do consistently, and it's not a matter of ah, you're good now, you're redeemed, you've you've crossed the threshold of bad to good. Um, but I mean, it'll be like a full redemption by the end of the season, maybe even halfway through. You have become good. You now have access yeah. to these abilities. Correct me if I'm wrong. Has it not? Uh, was it not established that like she did a lot of really awful things as Inquisitor, like killing yeah, yeah. Innocent people. That's yeah. yeah. That's that's and it is a woman's hand. Dude, she's, like, she's considered the most unruly and like crazy and bloodthirsty Inquisitor yeah. out of the lot. Even the other Inquisitors are like, come the fuck down. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, like... it's insane yeah. to me that they did that. I don't know why the fuck they did that for. In episode one, she throws a throwing knife at the bartender that only gets stopped by, I think, a Jedi. it got stopped by the a Jedi. Jedi yeah. so if he wasn't there, she would have just killed that man. Yep. Uh, and then she was gonna chop the uh, the young Jedi guy in half until the Inquisitor, the Grand Inquisitor, stopped her for some reason. And then she cut off that woman's hand just because she said something that she didn't like. And then she was gonna kill Owen and torture and the Leia. And then torture. Well, that yeah, but that this is just in episode one. She's oh, probably right, been yeah, doing this whole career. Basically like, that oh, one and then, of course, kidnapping. Yeah, getting Leia kidnapped. That was her too. So. Yeah, she's she's done a lot of bad things in like one episode, and she's probably been doing this yeah. for years. 
but she didn't kill one kid, so it's fine. And that's the thing, if you tried to fix her up back up as a good guy, I don't know how you address all of that. How do you contextualize that in a way this like we can understand? Because I, I don't think you can understand what she's done because it's so irrational. You it can't even doesn't... do the argument the of like... The show certainly doesn't even think about it. Like, you can't even do the I was just following orders thing. She went above and beyond her orders. Also, she as did. we've learned, not a legal defense necessarily, so... Um, she was this is the thing, I'm more than happy for a character to try and argue that, and then they have to go on a journey of understanding how that was not right, and that doesn't excuse fuck all, but, like, you can't she even do that with her. That. You can't even use that. that makes sense. How is she gonna come back with Wade? How can she... She's got a long way to go. She oh, killed she Wade! She did. She blew him up. Well, as long as it'd be fair, we do forgive Anakin and Return of the Jedi. I... We, we, we've been over this. He needs we to be punished hardcore for what he's done. He dies. And he does, he yeah, he dies. <laughs> what, what you appreciate is he came through. Um, and by the way, it, you understand exactly why he came through. Here, you have no fucking clue what's going on. He's yeah, just it, like, I decided I don't want to be evil anymore when the script told me but, I wasn't allowed to be. He also it's, killed his master and the the emperor of the empire. That's, a, that's, that's a pretty. He, that's you know that's significant. Reva didn't do what she was going to do. Whereas, like, Darth Vader, or I guess you say Anakin, like, killed the Emperor. He ended the, like, the Sith, essentially. Like, yeah, he, he's he, he, he destroyed the organization he, he helped build at the cost of his own life, as well as his evil master. That's a, that's a yeah, lot. Yeah, like, he, he, he did something. Reva chose not to do something she didn't need to do in the first place, <laughs> for reasons that are very confusing. She didn't she's need to, and didn't want to. Like, I don't know why she would have wanted yeah. to do that. I... <laughs> Nobody I does. People are fucking people who are fans of the show argue over why she wanted to do this. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the sign of how complex she is because it can be debated whether or not she like. What <laughs> yes, she of believes. course. If there's no clear answer, that means it's deep and it's multifaceted. Deep. Yeah, we reference also, Kylo Ren all the time, but that's also that is. any. Any and all criticism you direct at the show's writing, Stormtrooper bonked his head, it's silly. You simultaneously <laughs> praise it for being deep and intelligent while also dismissing all criticisms with, this is a stupid IP. An interesting way to defend something that you purportedly like, but... And I imagine we're going to see that more and more for everything as time goes on. Like with Marvel, eventually they'll be like, eventually they will use the stupid crap in Multiverse of Madness to be like, well, you guys like this, and there's stupid dumb. stuff in it. You should be like, Jesus yeah, Christ. And again, the MCU's always like been stupid. It seems like, um, for whatever reason, Star Wars' reputation is starting to get almost rehabilitated in a sense with people, whereas like Marvel's is starting to crumble a bit. Like, there's a lot more sentiment of these are just shit movies that like look really bad and have like pretty poor production values. Yeah, and Star Wars the same formula. Star Wars split the fan base and fell apart in like 2018 ish. But then yeah. it's clawing its way back up through the these show. very, very shit TV yeah. shows that everyone is giving a pass. Um, Meanwhile, while a lot of people are noticing, like, Marvel, I, I saw it, it was on, on Twitter, so it's like, Thor Love and Thunder is the best Marvel movie since Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> it's yeah. just every time a new movie comes out, it's purportedly the best one. Yeah, and yeah. then, give it a couple of months, and everybody turns on it. It's so predictable. Everybody turns on it. Remember how much praise there was for Moon Knight? Now the consensus is that was actually like a wasted opportunity. Doctor Strange. Man, that first really episode, we were so like, um, oh man, yeah. this might be something good. So we just had, uh, no, Bo Book of Boba Fett was hated. So did you miss where we just went over IGN's review yeah, where they said yeah. the Book of Boba Fett finale was a 9 out of 10? <laughs> the general public? enjoyed Boba Fett. I even remember them saying like, oh no, the guy did a spin before shooting? How absurd. Didn't Obi-Wan do a spin in the OT when he was fighting Vader? Argument destroyed. As if there's not like <laughs> piles of fucking context for how cringe Bo Book of Boba Fett was. And this is, this is what I mean. It's it's the, the general sort of watches out there of TV shows, they're just like, Book of Boba Fett? I was fine. I like me some Star Wars where they shoot guns and have the Darksaber Mando episode. Angry Joe gave the Mando episodes like 10 out of 10, didn't he? Uh, he Mando yeah. season 2, I think. What was it? No, One the Mando episode episodes of Book of Boba Fett is what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he but said also, like... didn't he give Mando like season 2? 
didn't he give like most episodes? Yeah, yeah, yeah but I'm talking about Book of Boba Fett. So we, right. when he when he like he, I think he was on board with like yeah one two and three were pretty bad, but four where we see Mando, or was it was that four or was that five? It was five, five and six. That's yeah, I think he gave the 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 solely Mando episode like a ten out of ten, and then the Mando lit one. Fuck, I'm even forget. See, yeah, my brain was happily forgetting Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> Someone ruined it. <laughs> Rex post a list that someone gave him. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So just post it in here so you can have it. Point being, Book of Boba Fett got past a lot of people's smell tests, just like Kenobi yeah. is. Kenobi is getting praised pretty hardcore. The only things that turn people yeah, against Book of Boba Fett were like poor production values that like the Vespas. Bite. Yeah, it wasn't really the writing. <laughs> it doesn't. I don't know. But don't worry, the, the communities you're probably more inter invested in watching, be it like the East Fap spheres or the spheres around it, um, they all thought it was shit. But let's be honest, I know that there's a lot of people who have chats here, but like, we're niche when it comes to the wide market well, yeah. of uh, TV yeah. enjoyers. Um, the, the finale for this show is at like an 8.5 on IMDb. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It is, but nah. What and that's what makes do? it special. But in truth, you can't help but let out a small sigh every time we cut back to Tatooine, as we'd much rather stick with the much more exciting Vader and Kenobi encounter. This okay. Um, I guess um, so. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, I this was just awkward the whole and thing, weird. But yeah, okay. I mean, <laughs> it's funny that he brought this up because we kind of did touch on it, but just it is a bizarrely structured episode in that. Vader and Kenobi, their final battle before their final battle. It's it's all been built up. They've got all this stuff, this baggage. And it's like, we're done with that. Now Reva. And you're like, oh, yeah. you probably should have done Reva before that, honestly. Yeah, no one gives a fuck about the... Reva. Yeah. She can't even have an impact on the plot line because we know how it all pans out. Like she can't she's literally restricted to doing nothing. We all like if someone uh -huh. How do you answer that question? It's like, well, will she kill Luke? You're like, you are you are curious. It's like, why would you ask me that? I know that I've got to figure out in my head how she would spare him. And you'd usually figure out why that would happen based on their motivation to kill. They brought her so close to killing him, and then they're like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh. she, she's swinging the sword, the director's like, wait, 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 wait. You can't actually oh. kill him. This is film called A New Hope. I just saw she it. She has to slip <laughs> or something. I just saw it. I finished fight <laughs> during production. Did you guys know that Luke Skywalker is in that one? Shows up and pushes her over. <laughs> hey, stop it. It's possible now. I mean, thanks to TLJ, oh, yeah. we know they could do it. Yeah, where was Qui-Gon during all this shit? He could have shocked Darth Vader or something. <laughs> that would be funny as fuck if he actually... I wouldn't... You know what? Quote this for the next ten years. Force Ghost lightsaber fight. When are they going to do it? Disney would totally do that. Oh, and, absolutely. Yeah, she swipes at Luke, and Qui-Gon draws his saber, and he's like, no. And then they play Duel of Fates, and they both fight, and we would all cry. It's probably how they'll try to tie in, like, Darth Revan from Knights of the Old Republic. Be like, oh, we saw the episode of Darth Vader where Vader fights against Force Ghost Revan. Because those are two people we like. And then so, the directors asked if they could do that. Why? Why wouldn't Obi Wan? Why wouldn't anyone else? And then they're like, "Well, um, because it was it everyone. was only in the super special Sith temple." Gosh, I wouldn't be surprised. If this is what I mean. It's so predictable at this point in terms of the bad writing. You'd be like, "Well, in that moment, Qui Gon felt such an emotional sort of experience, and he's a very he's a very wise, very trained Force ghost. Only he is capable of doing something like that." <laughs> You're like, okay, all right, yeah, fine, fine, fine. Qui-Gon Palpatine Force Ghost fight. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Have we ever even met? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, aren't you Who the you? senator guy? And he's like, yeah, haven't you been- I'm Palpatine. Like, what? come on. You've, you've watched what? this. <laughs> you've, you've been watching the whole films, haven't you? You're crazy. Oh, I'm just a humble Naboo senator. <laughs> this serves as a- metaphor for the whole show really, which has felt caught between telling an Obi-Wan story and one about the Inquisition. Both have been done to decent effect. What, what have we learned about the Inquisition? The Sith Inquisition. That they're goofy and they're shit. 
goofy Wait, I know less about them now than I did. Possibly. You know less about I, them now. No, I honestly <laughs> did. Like, I'm dead serious about that. I feel, I feel like I understood what the Inquisitors were supposed to be after watching Rebels and playing Jedi Fallen Order, which are the wow. two properties. But, I mean, they, they kind of contradict a lot of that stuff because they, at least in Jedi Fallen Order, they were saying that the Inquisitors were supposed to be younglings who were basically indoctrinated in as like torture machines essentially to basically be tortured into becoming the inquisitors and here it's like the younglings are there at the beginning so i was like oh, okay so these are probably the inquisitors from the show and then clearly they forgot about that by the time they're showing the flashback to reva getting stabbed because she didn't turn into a quiz an inquisitor that day I, I don't know. I guess I don't get it anymore. Is what I'm saying. I can't explain it because I don't know. Again, to the director, writer team, you should be like, "Wait, how is she an inquisitor? She got stabbed in, in by a lightsaber." And they just look at you confused, like, "Why would that kill someone?" I'm like, well, it's oh. like, okay, then then Vader must have taken her and made her an inquisitor. It's like, yeah, then why did she say she played dead? You, yeah, you I, I have, have no idea what. They're just planning to take you anyways. I've told her this so many times. I'm trying to picture it. She crawls out of the body pile she she sneaks quote unquote away I, I don't know does she need to sneak away does, i don't know and then she turns up to like vader's office bleeding to death like hey i want to be an inquisitor now and then he's just like okay I, I don't know how does it work what happened yeah like how did that actually happen was it it's kind of a it's kind of important was it that her rage as a child kept her alive and that impressed the Sith to the point where they were like, you should work for us. It's not like you'll harbor complete resentment towards us. And then they have a little little talk outside of where she is, outside of her earshot, and they're like, you know, she does hate us and she will try and kill us one day, but maybe we can use her rage to find Obi-Wan. She doesn't like him either. I guess you don't need, you don't need to work out the story if you have a theme. A revenge is a good reason to stay alive or whatever the hell <laughs> yeah, it was I, the Inquisitor said. That's the theme, so bizarre. three characters in the show do it, and it's fine. Huh. It's so that hard to understand sad. what the hell they were going for. Some people say, like, this, this is obviously a movie script that's been stretched out, and I'm just like, I don't know what this was. It was crazy. The key to survival is being angry, Leia. Not sad. Not sad, because that you'll fucking die you. from that. I don't, not that no one you know would have died from sadness, of course. <laughs> but, but seriously, be angry. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there are two great individual series oh, tussling. music is back. No. Yes! <laughs> oh, I love That's my favorite character. Do you hear that, the way that kicks in? It's like, wait, what? Effect. But you can't help Good, but wonder so if there bored. are two great individual series tussling yeah, within Obi-Wan and the music. Obi. Like, yeah, it's supposed the, to be this epic, like, yo, the music is just starting, but in a video, it just that just means it just suddenly happens because someone's talking over it and it doesn't work. It doesn't translate to a visual that it might be, you know, paired with. Mm -hmm. It's just, oh, this is epic music. Fuck it, just put it in the back and, and, and slide that bar down so it's only like 20% volume or whatever, or 50% or something like that. Does it have to match? No, fuck it. ...together to create one often unfocused one. Although not seamlessly woven throughout this episode, it does very little to take away from an otherwise thrilling spectacle. Stop <laughs> talking. Hey, <laughs> you can't Stop. deny that it is a spectacle, Rags. It's just not the kind that, that he's saying it is. It is a spectacle, that is true. We were all gawking mm. at this thing in utter shock. Gawk. Yeah. Gawk. Shocking, gawking. Shocking Gawk. and gawking. It's kind of unreal how, like, you know, him returning in full makeup is not something that it really gets talked about, the Emperor, because it's just like, there's so much other shit to talk about. Somehow, I am Ian returned. I'm back for this fucking show. <laughs> the hey, Vader, I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> I still stand uh, by I how like funny that. it is. The Vader's like, we will find him. And then Vader's like, dude, you okay? Like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the black floor and the, the black chair and the, the black ceiling <laughs> and, and the black wall. All the red highlights really bring like the room the, together. <laughs> yes, the, I like the black um, armchair there and the table, could, which is I black. I could introduce you to the, to the guy who did my room. If you, if you want. If you remember. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you want, just, just float the idea, you know, just in love case it. you think. Because when the Emperor <laughs> visits him... With the Emperor visits him here, he's just like, yeah, we got a drink. And he opens his black fridge, and there's like loads of black <laughs> bottles and a black cup. And he's like, you know... Why do you, why are you so... <laughs> you know, living in the shadow? The, 
you know, the co the color wheel is filled with many <laughs> wonderful <laughs> shades. So uh, my friend just just Perfect. out of Some curiosity, are those windows know. open? Is there glass there? Is that <laughs> or they just, just open? painted black? Is this is this a balcony that you're sitting on because it's not enclosed? I need to go to the toilet. It's not crown. it's not just black, is it? In a black room, <laughs> like. Please, do I need like, a torch? I like, even I, all, I wear all black. This black room. <laughs> the exaggerated swagger of this black room. <laughs> I'll, you know what this this uh, this room of yours needs? A good coating of CGI. Because he was calling him to ask if they're still watching, you know, whatever TV show tonight, and then Vader was just like, fucking Obi-Wan, dude. And he keeps randomly bringing it up when the Emperor's going over more <laughs> random topics, and he's like, this is clearly on your mind. Like, embarrasses me. I get right. that you're frustrated about this. Would you like to talk about it? Like, what, what is what is it that really bothers you? talk about it? Me? I can introduce you to my therapist. He's really, <laughs> he's really thoughtful and considerate. He's like, no. He helps me through a lot. I lost he, a lot of good people over I, I lost... You know Actually, what? no, I, I hate I, everyone. I, I, Darth, Darth Plagueis, that really weighed on me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Darth Maul, sometimes, I'm okay sometimes with. Sometimes I regret that. He was kind yeah. of a cool Maybe dude. Maybe I could have been nice to him while he was still alive. Of course, I was still going to kill him, but, you know. <laughs> Perhaps I treated him unfairly. <laughs> Perhaps I treated him too harsh. You um, don't know what you've got till it's gone, Vader. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> he just gives some good life advice. Just random I mean, like, life calls. advice quotes. I do like as well that... I just uh, now envision the sitcom, it's just Darth Vader and the Emperor. He's like, are you upset <laughs> that, that you lost your little fight? And he's like, I didn't, I didn't lose. I, he ran off, so really, you at, know, I at, I think I won. You know? It's okay. Well, when we were training, we, we just decided to won, and this time I decided I won. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I saw by the, the way, I you know that thing, thing he told you about wanting to win too much? That's a lie, by the way. <laughs> it's bullshit. I, I wanted to win a lot, and I did. Just so we're clear. It's a really good we're motivator. Kidding. And you know what? He dies later, so... Like, As I've seen it in the Force. <laughs> it's been foretold. He gives enough pep talks to Vader. He comes back into the room, and there's just a like a live, laugh, love. Yeah. Thing on the wall. <laughs> it would have been like, way better if he had turned up as soon as he lost the fight and just pats him on the back like, aww. We'll get him next time. Like uh, slash stab burn or something like that. But it's in the cursive. I, this is what I now want to see the show where it's the daily lives of the Emperor and Darth Vader. <laughs> just calls him you know, So like, How You Doing? Emp and Darth. And the, and the Emperor Don't like to. wants him to buy a, like a chair that can roll out into like a bed so that you can stay over sometimes. But he buys it and it's just like white. And Vader's like, really? Yeah. Well, that, like, <laughs> Really not my style, man. <laughs> Whatever, it's a bed. Can we put a black blanket over it? He's like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> what is it we do in black? <laughs> like, when they have all of these um very bright colored, you know, shelves, and he just keeps walking towards the one, like, dark one in the, in the whole store. So, like, I thought we talked about this. I thought we were going to add some... Some color into that room beyond just black and red. They, um, they go to yeah, a couple's therapy, and the like. They think it's a brand new therapist to try it out, and the person's like, "So the color black." And Vader's like, "You told him, really?" <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I, "I think it's important that we talk about it." You said you wouldn't tell him. I know. I, I said that, but 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 I, I did. Lied. I'm a Sith. I, I'm, lied. I lied. I we lied. Lie. It's true. I'm a Sith. What do you fucking expect? Hope he gets over I'm it. just saying, I would rather watch this a lot more than the show that we got. Way funnier, and you could probably keep it way more in character. We could get some real insight into, you know, these characters. What a shame. Mm -hmm. We finally got a strong burst of the Imperial theme, and a repeat of that. Strong <laughs> burst oh, of the good. Imperial they played the theme. music. They played, they played, they the, played the, the music. music. I, I heard the noise, and I clapped. I, I clapped when I heard it. I heard jangle, jangle and I was very happy. Ten oh, out of ten. Finally. Oh, jingle, jingle, what I was saying, this is, this is the kind of person that they jangle the keys for, and it works. It definitely works, yeah. Totally, yeah. I mean, it gets them a fucking nine out of ten, as we saw in that little table. Uh, one line we've been waiting for. Hello there. Oh my oh, god. god. <laughs> the one line we've been waiting for. <laughs> yep. We were... Oh, remember when we were memeing that so hard when it was about to happen? We're like, oh we shit, oh. Yep. Oh, we can meme too, kids. 
I didn't feel oh, like I can't do. ever say hello there again. I mean, it's it's like the fastest way to kill memes is when they're self-aware and they yeah, yeah. Like, did you not learn Bad. anything from it's Morbin time? The, oh. did you, hey, you did leave you... Morbin time alone. Morbin did, time did is you awesome. Not, did you not like the what are those line in Black Panther? Did you, did you oh, not appreciate Oh yeah, that? that was great. It's always so great. I'm the him... juggernaut bitch in X3. Doesn't mean already <laughs> like <laughs> old shit anyways. <laughs> I want Spider-Man. Bitch. Oh god, what a great movie. Don't you know who I am? <gass> oh, Obi Wan Kenobi elegantly verdict. ties a bow on the stories it began oh, while enhancing no, the ones that are yet to come. No, truly no. stop. You're ruining it. You ruined so much. <laughs> You're peeing all oh, over it. Yeah. You. Chuck up ones that are come. A truly enthralling showdown between Vader and Kenobi, we all hoped mm. it would be. Topping not only nah. every fight from the series, but maybe oh, an all every of Star Wars. Topping series. every fight from the series. Wait, yes. Yes. The this series, the series being this show? show? Yeah, okay. Then he says in all of Star Wars, though. So <laughs> Oh, God, he, he does? Uh, Let's roll him back. Yeah. Holy shit. I'm not ready. Kenobi to say it. is what we all hoped it would be. Topping not only every fight from the series, but maybe in all of Star Wars. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Throw that little maybe in there in case people flame you too hard on the internet. Yeah, like, I said well, yeah maybe. maybe maybe's non-committal, isn't it? It's like I didn't say it was. I, I just know oh, some days I, I need, think it's this one's. <laughs> I need Yoda's commentary on Obi Wan doing this to just be like, what? How did really? And then and then Obi Wan's yeah, like, like, well, hey man, you know if you, there is no try, right? I, I, I just yeah, I nailed it. Yoda I know what a fucking dumbass you are. <laughs> he's, he's just like, I know this. I say that there's no real limits, but I mean there are. <laughs> like, Very I can't, stupid. I can't just me. grab a planet, Obi Wan. So I'm just saying, this is uh, hmm. All right. Incredibly. In its final, you are. <laughs> episode, Obi-Wan Kenobi delivers on everything we hoped the show would be. No, mm. not we. Uh, <laughs> oh, you do. It's yeah. sad that this is what you want. It's That's sad thing, that buddy. this is what you want. Well, yeah, I mean, he's made it clear that, like, what he was looking for was the Imperial March to happen, for him to say hello there at hello some there. point, for him to do his stance, his cool lightsaber moves, for him to use the Force at some point. But, uh, to, uh, and then he said that they apparently enhanced all the relationships from the OT, which is just like... Ugh. Man, you hurt me. <laughs> Why must you wound I hate my Leia soul? Now. I I didn't hate Leia before this show. An exciting new. Oh, so just said, what's Yoda's reaction going to be when he finds out Obi Wan could have killed Vader for the second time and failed again? It's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, he's telling the story. He's like, oh, it was so amazing, exciting, and I fucking thrashed him. But then I had this moment where I was like, oh no, is Anakin still in there? And Yoda's like, like put his head on his hands, like, listening to the story really intently. He's like, what happened? He's like, yeah, you know. He said, like, no, I killed Anakin. He's like, oh my god, so what'd you do then? And he's like, well, you know, I said goodbye, Vader. Walked off. Or Darth, rather. Off. And then he's like, okay, Is this where uh, you stabbed him? <laughs> or got his head, or? Like, you know, like, the reason drop a rock on him? It's because, like, I got flung, like, all the way to the ground, you know? Like, you were there the first time. You were right there. You had his lightsaber, well, it, too. It would be so absurd to Yoda that he'd be like, you you left? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, you sure you didn't just lose and run away? And he's like, no, I left him. And he's like, <laughs> I don't believe I, you. I do not. He's like, you would have killed him. So why are you lying to me? And he's like, no, I, I didn't want to. And he's like, what do you mean you didn't want to? Like, what, what does that even... What? <laughs> No, I want him a to pussy you are. Oh, pussy you are. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter of Star Wars that doesn't betray what came before or after it. Oh, I, I mean... Does. Stop. The other rest of you? I'm surprised you didn't just have a huge praise section for this moment. <laughs> and what do you even say? Qui-Gon Jinn. He's a character from the prequels. He was the master for Obi-Wan. He turns up and he says, Let's go. Let's go. When Obi-Wan should be saying, Dude. You could have just left well enough alone and let him do a stupid fucking pod race, but no. But no, and <laughs> no. look what happened. Train the oh, boy! Man. Train the boy! You're doing funnies, but like, imagine that's a second act little in the I'm show with Qui-Gon being in the whole thing. Talk about. That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah. Like, imagine it's at your first, fault. Qui-Gon's trying to pull him out of his, like, crazy depression -y stuff, but then Obi-Wan just starts to think about it more and more, and he's just like, Why did you pick this kid? I told like, you not to. I told you the boy is too old. 
I even said it like I do. And he could be, like, so fucking angry with him that it, like, he starts to fade out. Because it's just like that, you know, the part of the connection is like a, an he equilibrium. He disappears into the bush. Like not, not even, no, not like, I, I mean, like, legitimately, it could create drama that if you're angry and unfocused, you can't immune with force ghosts as easily or something like that. Because, fuck me, this is not fair. It's not fair. You have him turn up and just say hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why'd you and do this to me? <laughs> hello, let's go. Only breathing new life into the stories and characters we've come to love. Does <laughs> it though? Oh, I mean, he's he's wow, summed, he summed up he summed up why it, it was uh, successful. It's characters you've come I to love that have nothing to do with Disney. Mm -hmm. I said eight. Didn't I? Well, yeah. uh, I think the average was something like eight point five, so the cast got it pretty much. God, amazing! Nine. And this, by the way, explains oh. the title of this stream. <laughs> Hmm. Amazing. Said it's amazing. There you go. Yeah. Oh, man. For more Obi Wan Kenobi, check out our review of episode 5 no, or I'm the good, latest mate. to de delve deeper into the show. <laughs> delve deeper? <laughs> we go a little further fucking... sometimes. Like, oh. See, this is what they talk about when they say your review is longer than the thing, therefore invalid. These are the valid reviews. Yes, six minutes. You say nothing. You've come away having learned nothing at all. Great. You wish you could know what they mean by several statements, but you never do. Don't get to no. I get those comments every once in a while on, on my videos where it's like, why couldn't you have just said you thought it was bad? With the fucking hours and hours. I guess people just aren't interested in, like, the discussion. I guess they just don't care. They just want to clap at the visuals and that's that. No, I mean, I guess they don't care about the conversation about why people like stuff, because they probably do like storytelling, it's just, you're not interested in talking about it, which is odd. Yeah. They have some version of storytelling in their heads that's just bizarre and weird. Well, no, what I mean is that their passion for, like, having these discussions doesn't really exist. They just, like, the, the, the notion of having a conversation with more detail than I liked it or I didn't like it is odd to some people i don't get it <laughs> this, this image <laughs> my friend's dead guess i'm gonna go go look at him he ain't had a kid kill him damn it it's gonna re-speech his sounds while he's like <laughs> yeah. good meme good meme so at the end of the at the end of the thing with reva too she's like i don't know what i'm gonna do now and then obi-wan's like you're free now we both are. And that made me laugh out loud, because I'm like, how are you free? You gotta stay on Tatooine, buddy. You're, you're, and... still, you're still living in a cave, waiting for I Luke I swear to, to God, if you but... leave this planet again, we will hurt you. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> stay here. <laughs> Meanwhile, so Reva, yeah, man. I mean, everyone's made jokes about it. Reva will turn up again. She'll be back. Oh, yeah, Who absolutely. knows what fucking series she'll be in, if not her own. Probably good. I'll probably have her travel forward in time and team up with Ahsoka and the Mandalorian to have an Avengers movie against Thrawn or some yeah, shit. She'll probably travel forward in time. Mm. No, that's no, a... I'm actually not kidding. It's probably yeah. gonna happen. <laughs> that's a good, that's probably, you, well, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, Ahsoka is only alive because they introduced time travel at the end of Rebels. So it's like, <laughs> it, it is uh, gonna oh, happen. Okay. <laughs> like... See, this is why I think Rebels is not defended anywhere near as much as the Clone Wars series. The stuff Thrawn like that, and... Anyway. Yeah. Thrawn, who's the uh, like the main villain in what were the best Star Wars books, like the Timothy Zahn trilogy from like the early '90s, he's on Rebels as well. And him and Ezra, who's like the main Jedi guy, travel like through some wormhole or some shit. And I'm I'm going to assume it's to the era where Mando and Boba Fett and all those shows are oh, taking God. place, so they can have a big crossover event. What if I told you I don't want? I would agree with you. <laughs> what if I told you, try <laughs> imagining that it is what you want. And maybe you'll like it. That's a good maybe idea. Maybe you will like it. All right. Prizes yeah. and infinite Star Wars. Is... Now, there's a bit of a dilemma in that somehow a six-minute video took us to two and a half hours. Well, um, that never yeah. happened before. Well, a lot of it, like an hour or so of that was us fucking around, to be fair. No, it wasn't. <laughs> we did an IGN reviewing of... Uh, their own review scores, which helped us understand, understand what they meant by amazing. What that was their, research. What were their games for amazing again? Uh, um, 
Oh, Resident Evil 2, Smash Bros. Ultimate, and Batman Arkham Knight. Those are on on point with Kenobi, apparently. <laughs> also, Forza Horizon 4. Any any Forza fans in chat who are upset to know that it's, it's is it, Kenobi is level? Is it Forza or Forza? Kenobi. It's Forza, I think, isn't it? Forza. Forza? Forza? As far I as I know, it's Forza, Forza yeah. It, you pronounce I've it like I've only a heard it Forza. Forza. It's the Italian word for strength. Because pizza has two Zs, and Forza has one Z, right? Is, do, do well, you need... sure, I guess I'm just trying to pronounce it like... So, apparently it is Forza. That, like, Forza. That's how it's pronounced. Forza. Yeah. Hey, the Forza. Yeah. Horizon. I mean, Forza I, I think Horizon. it's perfectly reasonable for someone to say Forza, but then be like, wait, Forza? What? Forza. Um, what? Those goofy it languages. Uh, it almost sounds the... like Kant in German. I, I thought Forza yeah. Horizon 2 was cool. Um, yeah, I like the Horizon games. They're fun. Yeah. Horizon. Really Horizon. Fun. I remember I said Horizon. <laughs> That's good. Uh, 3 is set in Australia. I'm like, yeah, I'll play that one. And I just never did. After... <laughs> like, wow. I don't know. And 3 then I think has the... a really cool Hot Wheels DLC. <laughs> and 4 was set in the Brit Britannia. And then Ooh. I think 5 was in Mexico. They have a lot of fun settings for the... It's kind of crazy how, like, Forza, they've made so many forts. Like, didn't Gran Turismo, Gran Turismo Seven like came out like ten years after Six, right? And people aren't happy with it, are they? Yeah, the microtransaction yeah. situation is yeah. not good. Seems like Forza at this point has kind of taken over in terms of being like more reliably out and enjoyable. No, well, then I again, think I we'll probably. Here. <laughs> we'll probably see this year because the new motorsports coming out and that more directly competes with Gran Turismo, whereas Horizon's more like Need for Speed. It's like a casual yeah. racer. Makes sense. Um, I remember. Go ahead. Oh, no, it, it doesn't matter. It's yeah, all good. <clears throat> uh, so the, the the dilemma is more so that this was never going to be able to be a a, a long EFAP episode because of um, I got oh. loads of things coming up as well as I need all the time I can get to finish. Uh, Kenobi Mini 6, um, as well as I, I think it's fair to say, Fringy 2. Um, so, yeah. what I think, the, the, the obviously, the plan A was going to be that as long as we finished in time, we could do another video. What I'm suggesting now is that uh, we probably should go to Super Chats now, so we can get them done. Um, yeah. Just, okay. just tie it up sort of thing. Um, you know, it's still going to take us like two hours at least, so, you know, we'll be around. Don't worry about it, chat. Don't go nuts on me. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm assuming you guys are going to want to see that many tomorrow rather than um, extending it past then. Because this exactly. has been... Go ahead. I was just... Because people are saying short man bad. It's like, the trade-off is, ideally, you get your, e your EFAP mini sooner. <clears throat> Which will this be is, this two hours, I think. Great. So It'll be long. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot. You get an, you've, had, you've been eating good lately, EFAP chat. You've had a whole bonus set of good old minis to, to tide you over, but... We're still gonna be here, and we're still gonna. What we're gonna do is see what you've been saying about and booby and other assorted things. So I will say, because it's like a, a a nice little sort of break between sections. Um, if anybody here, I mainly am directing this at CJ, Mark, and Metal. If you'd like to, wow, exit. Well, listen, I'm giving you the option. You should be happy. I'm not even giving it to Bringing in Rags. I'm saying no to them. They're not allowed. They literally have chains. Can you believe it? Hey, I believe I believe it. Uncomfy. Chains on a leash. Something I like don't that have happened. chains. I don't have chains. When... That jingle, jingle, jingle. I don't yeah, mind I, hanging I, out. I want oh, sorry, more. Ahead, I know I should. No, no, you, you first. You first. I, I was gonna say I don't mind hanging. No, out, no, Mark, you I, go ahead. You go I, first. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. Rags, thank you. Um, you bet. I, all right. I, I just need to feed feed my dogs because I'm a I'm a dog lover. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, oh, I, I like all, all dogs of, of of all of all types, even Shiba Inus. You know, oh. they're they're really cool. It's weird how yeah. you're really <laughs> singling them out. That's like saying yeah. I love people of all colors. I mean, especially yeah, the yeah. black ones. They're yeah. uh, <laughs> especially them. I, I love them too. Yeah, That's in addition of, to all like, the others. Yeah, I guess I might step in that too. Talking about X-ray girl at some point, I'd be like, yeah, I'm not racist at all, guys. I'm married to an Asian woman. You know, uh, no, <laughs> that's what they all say. <laughs> yeah. What about you, CJ? <laughs> Uh, I, I think I'm going to use the opportunity to take off because I do have a lot of work I have to do tonight to try and get this video out. Well, yeah, it sounds exciting. The next grand, week. grand return of yes. reviews. Yep, I've been working towards this for the past, like, 
month and a half and I just kind of I want to get it done and uh yeah so the more I do tonight the less I have to do later you're gonna, on you're gonna do any so, coverage for yeah. Kenobi Kenobi oh fuck that no <laughs> I just I'm so I'm so apathetic about so many like pop culture things that get released because they're all so like it's not even they're not even entertainingly bad they're just kind of like meh I'm going to go ahead and disagree with you on that element, but I understand, so don't you Fair worry, enough, yeah. Some of this yeah. stuff has been pretty funny, like the trench coat part. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that <laughs> was, that was hilarious. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is you're sitting through, like, six hours of meh for about five minutes of cringe. <laughs> Real good cringe, so for me, though. It's not have, you seen our, cringe. have you seen our watches of these? It I is haven't a, been watching it is a them, ride though. the whole way through. We do, uh, we do be doing a lot of laughing. <laughs> you said Doobie Doo. I did indeed. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, well, it's you not used to do You used to put a... that on Mountain Dew bottles. Doobie Doobie Doo, but do with D-E-W. Do the Doo, yeah. Doobie -doobie -doo. I, can't, I can't think of Mountain Dew without thinking about um, movie bobs like Mountain Dew marinated oh. chicken. <laughs> that's, I always think of Homer with the crab juice. I need <laughs> Gordon Ramsay's <laughs> review of that. I need it. Uh, can you just make a face? He wouldn't even say anything. This would have been better if it's fucking raw. Disgust. Your donkey. Does he have like a cameo? Because like if he has a I, cameo page, you could just pay him to watch his, it. I imagine his <laughs> cameo page would be incredibly extensive. Yeah. It's crowd crowdsourced. He is one of the highest the paid. Movie. But with like, it though, and you know with cameo, can you ask them to just give their genuine thoughts on a thing? I no idea. Or do they have to just read a script, and then it depends if they approve. Because that would be interesting as fuck to get his opinion on, like, you know, M Mountain Dew marinated chicken. <laughs> See what he says. I guess it's not the purpose behind it, but I suppose you're not risking anything because they could just be like, yeah, no, and they just refund you. So I don't know, might be worth a shot. All I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Um, I was gonna say I don't, I don't, I'm not exactly looking to repeat a goodbye, but that is the nature of your uh, your fun times with us today. So I guess I'll say it again. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We've had. Lots of fun. Star Wars is in a great position. <laughs> and I look forward to whatever it is you're cooking up. What would a Star Wars episode be without your, you know, friendly neighborhood Ryan Johnson impersonator? Yeah. <laughs> and he'll be back right. one day to do that trilogy. You just wait. Uh, all right. Thanks for having me on again. Take care, lads. Enjoy Absolutely. the rest of your day. Bye. 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 See ya. Ciao. X-Ray Girl and I actually just recently caught up on Better Call Saul and I rewatched Breaking Bad to like I guess to kind of catch myself up on that so I got all the references and the episodes of that that Ryan Johnson directed are really really good it's just like man like it's really just the material that the person's given and the like structure that they're around because it's like just the, the guy's not script. bad it's yeah, the, yeah every, like the, every the time problem was saying to this guy Lou, anything goes do whatever you want write this script just needs Nothing's somebody to filter there. him, because uh, there may be ideas he has in relation to the script that are good, but he needs to know when they shit on something, so he doesn't remember, or doesn't know. You gotta be like, no, Ryan, not that one. He's like, no. Fine, I guess. Um, yeah, Mel, are you gonna, are you gonna stay? Of course. Uh, Sorry. Right. I'll feed the puppies, but I'll be back if that's cool. Very well. Alrighty. Set. See you guys. Let us begin. Mm, yeah, all um, right. This one says, I grieve in Stero. The Stero sounds strange. Does that sound familiar to anybody? I grieve here? in Stero. The nope. Stero sounds strange. Chat, uh, is there some meme we're unaware of here? What does this mean? I grieve in Stero. The Stero sounds strange. Yeah, I got nothing. I have no clue. People saying stereo, but it's spelled stereo twice, so I doubt it's a mistake. It could be. Yeah. Maybe if they thought that's how stereo. I don't know. Oh, I've seen Little Dark Age be said more than once. I don't know what yeah, that just is. Yeah, Google it. That seems to be. Well, I think that's a song, but that's a grief in, in stereo mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. and not stereo, so I don't know. Well, all right. Fair enough. Oh, hi, Mark. Damn, he's not here, but he will be once again. Say hello. Oh, the guy who said it said, I'm autistic. I spelled it wrong. That's, that's all good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, hey, Fringy, are your fingers webbed or are you just happy to see me? My 
aren't webbed, or, or I guess, oh, right, because we talked about how the actual, oh, sorry, yeah, because the webbing in our fingers is apparently from our frog ancestors. Okay. Did, did you know? I'm you know how more just, confused just, now. The you know how like in your hand there's kind of like the it, the connecting part between your fingers, like when you open up the palm of your hand, and you got yeah. like the little webbing there. Not yeah, like I'm, the web I'm more talking web. about the frog part. <laughs> your ancestors were frogs. Okay. You know you go back far enough. No, I don't know. Otherwise, I wouldn't be confused, Ringy. One of your great, 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 great to the power of like a million grandparent frog. Were they um? Were they actually like frog in terms of how they were classified? Yeah, amphibian. Sure, no, we amphibian. didn't share a common ancestor. We actually came from them. I'm pretty sure uh, amphibians were the first uh, land animals. So all I think all land animals come from uh, amphibians. I'm pretty sure life crashed on Earth from a comet. Through, Fringy. They, 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 I think it was deer and giraffe that came out of the comet, and then everything came. Frog comet. How Frog do you know? Your, if you will. Raise the comet. About, hold on. What? Because what was? Uh, uh, the, the first first land animal. What was that? Because I remember I looked it up for a gag that I. It's probably. I think it was giraffes. I think I don't think you're correct about that. No. Oh, that would have been my first guess. Mammoths. They came from the swamps or whatever, right? Swamp mammoths? Yeah, yeah, swamp mammoths. Sorry, I didn't mean to say mammoths. They used to be like gri big greenish mm -hmm. amphibian-like proto-mammoths. Then they just got woollier and they kept going north and And then and the north. giraffes came from the swamp mammoths, I think. I think so, yeah. They got thinner and decided they wanted to get those trees up there, so they got long necks mm -hmm. and changed colors and got some... Hoof action going Super on. Super interesting. It's all, um, it really for is. Another evolutionary biology is everything with his autism episode. You better believe we're derailing this. So I want to figure out <laughs> what the first land animal was. Guinness World Records says that it was some type of millipede, but that's not what I remember. I remember it was like a, it was like a fish frog thing that had little fin arms that helped it get onto land occasionally and then go back in. What? But what was it called? I had like a really, and and I'm also seeing, yeah, it's look, it's this guy here, he's like kind of like a crocodile fish thing. Is that what uh, land animal like means? Like first animal that can get onto land, or does it mean animal that is well, strictly I'm trying living to... on land? Well, I think the problem is that it gets blurry because a lot of the first land animals would have spent a hell of a lot of time in water. Um. Because that was the nature of it. They'd come onto land for a little bit and then go into the water, and then over the course of like millions of years, um, it was anthropods first. Crabs, uh, okay. Arthropods. I'm just trying. Let me see. Anthropods would be like a furry thing. <laughs> That's a fun that noise. <laughs> well, so I'm jumping the gun because someone said our ancestors were amphibious, but they weren't amphibians like modern amphibians. Yeah, I figured. I guess when I say that they're a frog, they're not like exactly the same as a frog right now, but that they're a frog like, you know? Hmm. Damn, I'm just not finding what it was. In any case, I remember reading that on Wikipedia once about the web things. Clearly lied to. A good old I don't know if I was lied to. I think um, because I remember I read that hiccups or something was um was was some sort of uh the reason why a lot of animals still have hiccups is it was some inherited trait from the way that um earlier uh animals breathe uh like would breathe. It was just something that got left over. Very well. It's like, I don't know if that's true or not. It just, but it's it sounds interesting. I'm just sad it's not actual frogs now. Um, Kenobi oh. is terrible, yeah. but why is TFM being? I assume the fandom menace. Uh, not you guys. So bad at criticizing it. Nerdrotic's complaints on Twitter are horrid. Well, to be fair, he's. I've been on a couple of streams with him about this. He's he's lined up with a lot of the things that we've been saying as well about the. Inconsistencies and stuff. I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure which of the things he said on Twitter. I try to um, avoid Twitter 
especially lately. You know, it's not a fun place. Never was, never will be. But um, yeah, I've seen, I've even seen some of his videos. He's um, he's been tearing it to shreds in all the the, the consistent arguments I've, I've been seeing, which is neat. Uh, thank you for um, watching these shows, so we don't have to. You bet. <laughs> No problem. You want to say something there, Fringy? Uh, yeah, because someone said Fringy's bad at biology. I didn't study it at school. I did physics, and I remember nothing about it. <laughs> I was bad at chemistry, though. <laughs> biology, Fringy's bad at biology. Even, oh, yeah? Well, I, I didn't even study it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I can't be bad at it. I didn't even learn anything about it. <laughs> I, I, can't I, if someone said I was it, bad at I biology, I'd be like, yeah. I would never bad, it, to if they said you're bad at biology. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm bad what does at it make biology. Me bad at biology because I am biological and I exist. Because for so. decades I've been going along just fine and things are looking pretty good. So I, I think I'm pretty good at biology. Do you just, do you just routinely like collapse to the ground because your body just stops working? Uh, I wish my body was better at biology. <laughs> uh. Uh, should I save my Stranger Things Season 4 Super Chats for the Stranger Things EFAP, or can I ask them now? Yes. I, well, uh, so first of all, yeah, we could, we, we, <laughs> to be fair, there's, yeah. Yeah, there's people here who are going to want to see it, but I don't know if there's going to be an EFAP for it, because like, I'd be on board with that. Fringy might be when uh, he sees more of it. Metal and, and rags, for example. I, I I have no idea if I they would find that tempting. I know nothing about Stranger Things. I have never I, seen I, an I episode. Never seen that. an episode. That's to be discussed as a potential. But to be honest with you, okay. the Moon Knight the Moon Knight fans are gonna get real upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk about Stranger Things. I feel really things. awful. This, Moon Knight fans. There are subreddit posts. There's so much to talk about Moon Knight. I know. Yeah, there, there are like subreddit it's... posts about how I was like, why do they do it? This someone, this is like the same people every once in a while who were like, man, I was really looking forward to them talking about that. And it's just like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it just we 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 just. Don't care anymore. <laughs> this is it. Oh, that window. It's just, it's pretty much closed because now I would need to possibly watch it two more times to get everything I need to really I mean, do a proper do breakdown. Really do well, first of all, I don't know if I have the time to do it. Secondly, if I, like, do I really have the passion to do that? It's, it's a tough one. And then thirdly, it's like, you guys should probably watch it again at that point because it's been so long, right? Like, the references might be a lot thinner. And I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to make you guys do that as opposed to. You know, watching. I would rather make you guys watch Stranger Things season four and talk about it. That would be more entertaining, yeah. I think. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd rather watch Stranger Things season so, four, best I've seen so far. So it's like uh, it's unfortunate, but this sort of thing happens. Um, there's a lot of things that we were going to cover at some point, but they never did because that's just just the nature of being human, you know. Mm -mm -mm. Um, oh, when you take your word do for the it. art on the same layer as the sketch. <laughs> Ripper Don't worry, continue. Uh, oh. hi, Rags. Hello. And, oh, weird sentence structure. And I got my J plushie on Thursday, and everybody at work thinks he's adorable. I also have my J plushie. What? With my Mine's one. still on the way. Where is it? Well, I'm, it gives it an order of, like, morally superior people, I think. So, you'll oh, get yours God damn it. at some I'm getting point. mine, like, 2024. Mm-hmm. Trend Finally, I made a live EFAP. Love all your content and hard work, guys. Random question. Do any of you play TTRPGs? My friends and I have made one called Plains of Oradun. Or Oradun? Oradun? Uh, long live the long man. Hi, Rags. And Kick J. Hello. Uh, I'm not currently any games, but I enjoy playing them when I get the chance. TTRPGs. I... What does that stand for? Tabletop. Tabletop role-playing game. Ah, yeah. no. Like D&D, really Pathfinder, Starfinder, Call of Cthulhu. Been a long time since I've played one. I barely. I used. To, I played two back in the day that didn't get a great impression from, but they were fun. They just didn't go well. Um, and end. I don't think I've ever played one to completion, and it, it's never been my fault. I have been a good player. Okay, don't believe the propaganda from the newspapers. Um, but yeah, you know they 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 seem fun. As for um, the 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 nice things you said about our, our work, though, that's that's kind of you. Yeah. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed. Darkseid users literally being too angry to die is a potentially cool idea that immediately gets ruined by taking it too far with Darth Maul. Um, I agree. Seems to me that the death George Lucas gave him was pretty permanent. 
You would think that being bisected and falling into a bottomless pit would uh, yeah, would seal the deal, but, well, I guess not. Not quite. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I think I even said, like, I think it has potential as an idea, but not when it goes that far. Um, ATM machine, SVD Dragonov, FPS per second. Do people really say that? When I first heard that uh, here, I lolled out loud, shake my head. What? Some people. <laughs> said what, sorry? Basically, when they say an abbreviation, but they uh, end it with the word from the, yeah. People do SVD Dragonov a lot, yeah. ATM machine has come up a couple of times. I've heard. ATM machine, yeah, that happens a lot. The ATM FPS machine. per second, well, I don't hear I mean, very often, but I can believe it. I don't. I've never heard FPS per second. Well, I, I don't think I've heard that once. DC Maybe, comics. But... DC Comics. DC, comics, comics. DC Comics seems like one of the most common ones that are almost just accepted. Mm. Well, now it's just DC. Nobody calls it. They 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 wisened up <laughs> since <laughs> some <laughs> decided to change their name. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Hot take: Kenobi is in fact not amazing. Whoa! Whoa! Get out of What's here! What's like um? It's like the Los Angeles Angels. The the angels angels. Oh yeah, God, yeah, that took me a while. To... <laughs> I thought you were talking about Kenobi. That's why I was like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> Kenobi loves Los Angeles Angel. Uh, Rags Mola, how you deal dealt in the past with coworkers making fun of you? I'm introvert guy who likes to be alone most of the time. I noticed that caused my coworkers to dislike me. Dislike um, you? Hmm. I've never. Uh, how how do I first off? What do you mean, hey Rags? How do you deal with your coworkers disliking? You? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Um, but um, no, I, I actually I, I got along with pretty much pretty much everyone always. I I, I was uh, I never really made any enemies or had people who just didn't like being around me or didn't like my face or anything like that. I've so, sort of went for, I liked my coworkers. It was my manager. The one of there was four managers. One of them was fucking Satan, um, and I hated him, but. The one worker, and I talked about this before, that I didn't like, but still got along with just fine, was one that like had just been hired, and he refused to do anything other than buy the book, every single thing he was told to do, and if ever he saw another worker not doing things by the book, he would like uh, threaten to report them. I remember him being ah. one of the most frustrating pieces of shit that I've ever worked with. That's fun. <laughs> but it's the kind of thing where he would do it, and you'd be like, yeah, no problem. I'll definitely do that from now on. Thank you so much. And he'd be like, yeah, okay, good. You know, like he wouldn't even pick up that you're incredibly frustrated. <laughs> um, but yeah, how to deal with coworkers that are making fun of you? I just, I don't really think I've been in that situation enough to give proper advice. But you know, try and you don't want to show them that um, it's really getting to you. That will probably be step yeah, one. Yeah, don't do that. That's mm -hmm. that's no good. Don't do that. Also, it depends on what they're making you fun of, making fun of you for, is yeah. probably going to be a big part of it. Because if they're making fun of you for something that's pointless or is actually a good thing that you have and they're making fun of it then you should ignore it it's almost like its own vindication um because you could be made of things maybe, maybe you have some sort of personality flaw or there's something wrong with you that they are making fun of that you should work to change but they could also be making fun of you for something that shouldn't be made fun of and might actually be a good quality you possess in which case i'd say don't do anything fuck them not everyone is compatible with everybody else and if they don't get that then uh, i don't know what to say and yeah um, just i don't you know if they if they don't like you partially because you're introverted it's like oh well, that's not very nice you should be able to mm -hmm. respect the fact that you're just not as talkative as others or whatever but yeah uh it's just kind of hard to say to give you advice and hopefully um it's not too much of a problem for you um whatever happened to the pizza man cynic snacks uh, he hasn't uploaded in a while. I haven't spoken to him recently. I hope he's all right, all right obviously. Um, could be yeah. that he's um, found other interests to pursue. Uh, but I, I really don't know. Do you not know? Hope he's all right. Oh, my God. Hello. 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 Um, someone had said hi, Mark. Make sure oh, that. hello. Yeah. Uh, please go to X Clips. Uh, YouTube channel and just read some of the video titles. That plus some of the comments is just beyond depressing. X clips. Felt e say e c 
AS. I think that's Eckhart's ladder, right? Oh, yeah, he's a super <laughs> Star Wars consumer simp. Holy man. fuck, the first one. This scene proves Revenge of the Sith's genius. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is why Obi-Wan finally gave up on Anakin. Kenobi just fixed my biggest problem. We've never seen Kenobi this powerful. We really need to talk about this. I can't believe how dumb this was. Maybe it's talking about the trench coat thing. There. I don't know. Um, well... That's great. I hope he's enjoying Kenobi. He was the one who did the the Naboo Starfighter is the perfect ship for Mando. Oh. Yeah. Oh. He's not a bright that... lad. It really wasn't, but that's total okay. Star, <laughs> total Star Wars simping. Um, who would win in the 20 kilometer emu race, Rags or Fringy? Uh, probably uh, Rags probably the, Wait, win, emu yeah. race? I'm confused. What, does yeah. that, right. what does part does that mean? Say? Does that mean that like, uh, both of you ride an, an emu? emu or... Riding on an emu or well, training an emu or think, running along the Rags, running of the emus? It's one of Australia's think, um, greatest festivals. Rags would have the edge if he was riding because he he's he's, he's a little doggo, so he wouldn't weigh as much. Mm. As, like doctor. So, but but then again, emus are quite strong. So, I very wonder Australian. if perhaps you could concoct some kind of potion to make your emu supercharged. Maybe that'll be Whoa, nice. Whoa, we get the juiced up? I don't know if that's in the spirit of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I think so. Juice up your emu before the race. Right before the race starts, you're just you just got this potion bottle and you're making you chuck this. It like grows awesome. to the like Godzilla size with these bulky muscles and rags. Like this seems unfair. And you're like, no. Same. Nope. There's a rule that says you can't turn your emu into a gigantic uh, Godzilla monster. Is, there are no rules. Oh. Ain't no rule that says a dog can't play basketball. True. What if the stormtrooper on top of the gate didn't shoot and instead begged Kenobi to release the innocent hostage because he cared about Frack? Oh, that would be uh, interesting, wouldn't it? That would uh, be interesting, yeah. Kobe, re <laughs> Kobe. I was sorry, I was thinking about basketball. Kenobi, Kenobi. realizes that he's. Um, like, kind of turning into an evil asshole. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh god, what have I become? Well, imagine that he does that, the Storm Trooper legit goes, no, 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 please, please, please. Stop. I, I, I'll no, put please, down he the didn't gun, do please. anything. Please, please, do what you want to us, but let him go. And it's just confusing because you're so pure-hearted. And <laughs> Well, the audience would be fucking like, wait, what? what's happening? And then Kenobi just shoots oh, yeah, the Storm right. Trooper and we're like, oh, okay. Oh no. That was weird. And then they carry on yeah, as if mean... nothing happened. That was kind of weird. What was the guy's name again? Frack? Frack, yeah. Yeah, he's like, no, why is he had a family? One of them even well, said, like, like, hey, Freck. Yeah, but it, he, he, he shoots did. the stormtrooper, that he kicks the back <laughs> of the leg of Freck to get him on his knees and then just executes him in front of Leia. He's like, he was he was loyal to the Empire. He takes out Let's a go. knife and just slits his throat <laughs> or something like oh, that. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, like, if we were operating in a world where Obi-Wan pretending that he doesn't know Leia or have any connection to her was an important bit of intelligence to keep from the Empire, that might have been what he'd have to do. We Yeah, we did talk about how um, it would have been. I think... Uh, there was that. There was just like errant idea for a story where Obi Wan could make a friend that's a mercenary of some kind and help him with the the local war of yeah, Tatooine yeah. and stuff. But then at the end of the story, have to kill him because he finds out he's a Jedi. That would be a really powerful payoff. But no, we did we did whatever the hell that was. Yeah. Uh, there are rumors that three four three is thinking of adding microtransactions to yeah. the MCC. I guess Infinite oh, failed yeah. so yeah. hard they need to screw up so, other yeah. games to make up. That's man, the imagine. only thing. That, that's all know. you can read into it, isn't it? Like, man, you just that was really was a mistake, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I was studio. really liking Halo Infinite at first too. Everybody was liking yeah. it at first. It's a TFA yeah, of games. A little bit, yeah. Everybody came away with a, a much better impression of that game um, at first, but then just after time, it's like, damn, this is efficient. Mm -hmm, well, yeah. it, it kind of ties back to what we were talking about with the IGN reviews. It it's sort of it, almost futile to do a day one review of a multiplayer game because yeah, you're, you're not going to know what the community is like, what the meta is like, how the balance is changing. Exactly, like, that doesn't materialize until the game is out for a while. Sorry, Halo fans. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that TV uh, show that came out, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, don't remind me. I avoided that like the plague. And I think there was a... 
roadmap yeah. for Halo Infinite that was like we're getting campaign DLC in like 2024 yeah. and Forge yeah. mode, which looks admittedly really, really good, isn't going to be out until like 2023 or something. That doesn't surprise me. Well, by the time all the pieces of that game are out, we'd be like, when's the new Halo game? Yeah, like, well, well, that's I mean, it. <laughs> it's, it's all out. It's, it's pretty funny how both Halo Infinite and Battlefield 2042 leaned hardcore into being live service games, and they're both in a state of like, totally fucked. Yeah. Hello, long man. What happened? Oh, we, 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 we don't know. What happened? Nah, that's it. So finally saw Bly Manor, and wow, I see why you all love it so much, and found Midnight Mass as a bit of a disappointment. So Kenobi is over, and I hated it. Well, that lines up with us on In, pretty much all of that, yeah. Yep. <laughs> the, the first five episodes of Midnight Mass are so close to perfect, though, that oh, it's, bangers, it's kind of, it's I'll hard really to call it a good. bad show, because it's like, well, the first five episodes are like the best TV you'll ever see. Six episodes, okay, and the second episode sucks. Like, and kind of ruins what came before it, sadly. I, um, yeah, uh, it, it didn't waver at all for my fascination with Mike Flanagan's work. He'll be like, give me more. But Yeah. yeah, yeah um, I think he has, he has a new one coming out. Again. Yeah. I think October he's got a new one coming out. Yeah, House yeah, of, of the House of Usher. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward there's to There's also um, Midnight Something Else. I remember someone talking about how there's a show about... I think he may be producing. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into it. But yeah. Excited for more of his work. Um, and Kenobi is indeed over. And how fucking quick was that? It was uh, like three weeks... Maybe four? I can't remember now. What is the timeline for Kenobi? It was, uh, I think it was four weeks. Four weeks. Like, yeah, there's two know, episodes two, the first three, week. Months. So, five, yeah, so that's, I guess, five? Five, five weeks? weeks and episodes yeah. came out, but, like, four weeks, I guess, if you, like, in the interim, like, in the meantime. Yeah, because three episodes came out in five days. Really strange delivery. Oh, yeah, because it released on Friday, and then, and then it was Wednesday. Yeah, I don't know why they did it. Like, um... You know, it no gives your show more ability to stay relevant and give more life to everything. I think, did we speculate, like, they wanted to release it so that Vader was at least teased by the time with the first content? Yeah, I think so. And I yeah. think that makes a lot in terms of money-making. Mm -hmm. If Vader's plan was to have Reva get him Kenobi, wouldn't his whole plan have failed if she hadn't planned for Kenobi to escape with the tracker instead of just capturing him? It doesn't, none of it makes any sense. It's all really weird. <laughs> you're, you're not gonna get the defense from us. Dude, yeah. her betraying him loses him Kenobi on the second time around, too. He would have had Kenobi had she actually been evil instead of, if, if he'd replaced her with stupid hat man, um, they might have gotten Kenobi. Also, considering how it ends, how is Kenobi's plan not, hey, Reva, you're staying with me on Tatooine, I'm going to train you, and together, when he's ready, we're going to train Luke together. Like, if you, you want to play the Reva's good now, near him. He's letting I, her make her own decisions, Mark. Well, yeah. then, I mean, you got to think like you're fighting a war, a girl, though. And you, <laughs> no. You can do whatever she wants. Nothing to answer for. And she, uh, in the eyes of a lot of Star Wars fans, I bet she's definitely redeemed fully, thoroughly. And see, this is the problem with them deciding that most of the Jedi apparently survived Order 66, because there's apparently <laughs> a ton of, there's enough that they need a whole underground railroad. Dude, they're just going to keep inventing loads more that survived, that's all. There'll be a whole other tier of, like, Jedi Temple underneath the ground that was filled <laughs> with Jedi that all escaped. Eventually, they accidentally invent so many Survivor Jedi that it is a number that's greater than the amount of Jedi that were around in the first <laughs> place. Funny, yeah. <laughs> the um, only ones who died are the ones who got death scenes in Revenge of the Sith. And yep. even then, with Disney. Even then. That's <laughs> true. Also, imagine the Empire propaganda that comes from a surveillance video from the post showing a Jedi taking an innocent person hostage. If And they should have... Well, the the droid would have been destroyed before he did it, but if there's a camera in that area, it would be great for creating. And that would be another interesting story to be able to tell. Mm -hmm. To show how they spin stuff like that. Well, yeah. it, you'll have the you'll have uh Freck will be like, Yeah, he yeah, he took me hostage and he killed all the He killed the everybody men, yeah. and it was like, Wow, what a dick. And Freck would just be like, Everything they said is it's true. Uh true. Jedi the Emperor was right. They're awful, horrible people, and he kidnapped that 
the the daughter of that senator. Like, jeez, when will the yeah, madness well, end? What did you do to him, Frack? He's like, I gave him a ride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't recognize him. He's just people posing on the side of the road. No one would say anything bad about that. I'm just such a nice guy and all. Then he went berserk. Taking advantage of our kindness. Oh, Duma Media said EFAP 6 out of 10 too long. Racism. No. Wow. Don't be so mean to long folk. They, uh... Hey, Duma. Have trouble. I don't know if he's still here. That was that was a while ago. But... <laughs> yeah. uh, hello, EFAP. I am about to start coding my own game, but I'm having a hard time picking a setting. Was wondering if you could help me pick. Options will be in the next Super Chat. Okay. okay. So, okay. medieval fantasy, because I feel Bethesda needs to be smacked off their pedestal. Cyberpunk, simply because Cyberpunk 2077 pissed me off. Spacefaring, because Mass Effect 3 was a letdown. A manhunt-style game, simply because Rockstar is a bunch of cowards that won't make one. And lastly, a vigilante game. There are plenty of superhero games, but none non-powered hero games. And then there's another question, but we'll start there, so... You asking our preference on those, I guess? I, uh, wait, I, maybe asking as an indie game developer, what's the best one to take I, on, or, or what's needed the most? Or is it a hypothetical? I think... Uh, I guess, uh, I guess it's an interesting question because you figure that it sounds like you would want to do all of those. The fact that you've listed them, like that, any one of those would be interesting to you. Well, what Did what kind of game were you trying to make? Because it's an if RPG, you, right? An RPG. Um, if you want to make an RPG, uh, I mean, I suppose an, R an RPG detective. Story is that what detective was that one of the uh, uh well, one of them was fantasy, right? So just pretty high standard medieval high fantasy that was one of them. I don't think he specified uh, RPG anyway. Oh, didn't he? Okay, I, I must because well, you can I have think... sorry, go ahead, Rex. Um, depending on what kind of setting you're in, you'd I, yeah, it would be really good if we knew what kind of a game you wanted to make whether it was a platformer side scroller shooter. whether it was rpg a turn bait huh that shooter it's like a call of oh duty. a shooter oh a shooter okay yeah i totally a shooter like call of duty one, then yeah, you could do whatever you wanted really oh yeah uh i think fantasy might be difficult to make a shooter in uh um man, yeah that'd be that'd be harder especially did you just say you started coding like you've just started we said, well, I'm about to start coding the game. I don't know if you start. Oh, just okay, jump, yeah. right. So, yeah, I figured you'd have, yeah. Um, I, I was kind of thinking, though, from a complexity standpoint, you're the cyberpunk and the, the manhunt one, or, or I guess the vigilante game would be the most complicated visually to, to actually like model and design and have performing well, because you're going to have to make cities essentially with people, assumedly. Well, I, I assume he's not making some big AAA thing that he's a small developer yeah i guess i guess if it's like a crpg then it doesn't really I'm matter thinking, what the setting is i think in a shooter is almost like a side scroller like a, a metal slug kind of contra thing mm -hmm. some because you have something that's actually able to be sort of sort of done by what i assume to be a small studio either one person or you know just a few uh in which case i mean science fiction you know the, you know, the sci-fi yeah. and the you know that that gives you a lot is the cyberpunk that gives you a lot of options you can have your own aesthetic style to things you don't have to go fancy it could be um like a 16-bit sort of style game where you you know go for it like a like a, a platformer where you shoot guns and maybe upgrade your gun and it would give you an excuse to have some powers that you might be able to use to just give some variety because if you're if it's a shooter that you're looking for yeah i just don't really see how a I, I prefer uh, fantasy is my preference generally, but I don't know. How, I don't know how you'd really make a shooter out of that. Well, well kinda... and Vermintide is kind of a fantasy first-person shooter in a way. I mean, um, it, there's a lot of melee. I was going to say but, uh... that um, you may not be limited by uh, tech if you know you don't adhere to reality. Uh, think of Van Helsing's awesome gun, right? <laughs> yeah, you can have it when you're you're auto your crossbows. Or like uh, League of Legends, expensive does gun in history. League of Legends has that kind of like we could pretty much throw any character into this and yeah, we'll make it make magic. sense because you could um, be throwing fireballs and yeah, yeah. if you want to do that sort of thing yeah you, I guess you, you so this you is the have thing a lot of options fireballs I feel like all of these lightning. can work uh, yeah 
And so then it's just like, if you're asking just what I would prefer, it's like, I kind of like the idea of a vigilante game, as in yeah. you have to deal with the law and what your personal brand of ethics are when solving crime. That could be cool. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And because he described it as there are plenty of superhero games, but no non-powered hero games. It's like, oh, so you'd probably be dealing with tech then, I assume. Um, yeah, like, you know, I'd be, I'd be interested in that one. Pro if I was presented all of these and I knew nothing else about any of them, I'd probably give that one a shot first. It's kind of arbitrary, like I, because I, any of them could be the good ones and the bad ones, but uh, just that alone makes me be like, hmm. If someone said Batman, it's like, I assume it's not going to quite... Because Batman often gets considered to be a superhero with how amazing his tech is. I assume he's going for a more... even lower Punisher. down than, like... Yeah, like, like, a guy... I could, I could, I'm just picturing for some reason, like, a noir-level uh, thing where it's... the guy, yeah. maybe with a gun. To know. Yeah, but, um, like a yeah. death death wish the game, but like you actually have some choice as to how lethal you can get, and that actually changes your outcome and how society views you and stuff. Yeah, there, there's some potential there, for sure. Oh yeah, Rorschach would be kind of what I'm thinking of rather than Batman, yeah. Yeah. I love a Rorschach. Um no. Yeah, hopefully that's helpful because the, the second then question was last thing I'd like to ask is do you have any tips for writing a non time sensitive story? Like a lot of games, mainly open world, tend to do this. Thank you all oh, for the like great content. Oh, like you don't have a main... Yeah, also well, because... Off. Finish the super chat, sorry. The, thank you all for the great content. Also, hi, Mark. Oh, hi. Um, uh, sc well, scope limiting would be the, the thing that I would say. It's just uh, try, try not to have the, the threat be world-ending, because those tend to be time-sensitive. Whereas if it's just this person needs uh, the, your hero needs to take out the villain like uh, track There's... him down and kill him eventually and that's the goal it's not like kill him before the villain does a thing there's plenty of video games that have goals that don't have anything to do with a story if they even have a story really uh everything from heroes of hammer watch to rim world to you know whatever it is these are games where you try to make your character stronger, unlock new abilities, manage events as they pop up. A lot of Civ builders and city builders are like this. You know, colony management, Sims. Well, There's sure, not but like, like he a wants story. to make a video game with characters, though, by the sounds of it. So he's, well, you, I guess he's trying to figure out what kind of plot would he need to write so that you don't have the kind of Ludo narrative, like, apparently this is really important that I do this, but, like, I want to go... Maybe the angles to I, almost make it serialized, sort of, where you don't have say, an over, yeah, you don't have an overarching kind of story. Like, you, there's no looming threat in the distance. There's no big goal that the whole that the player is working towards. Maybe it's a lot of this will help. Maybe this will help you actually make it. But a lot of smaller things that pop up, um, like this little event happens. How do your characters deal with it? All right, that's done. Awesome. Now this little thing has happened. How do you deal with it? Okay, awesome. And maybe there'll be yeah. some you know, ramifications of those things, and that could be sort of your progression is, you know, your your collective list of accomplishments for these events. But uh, maybe that's the way to go. I think it would be the more that you can break up each uh, section into its own isolated um, story beats, maybe may like that you have chapters that are dedicated to, I guess, solving specific mysteries in a very free form way. Uh, that way, you can always have everything that the character is doing in like this setting um, be somewhat related to that core mission without having to worry about a big overarching plot. To do. But that's that's just a thought. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jay Longbone just made me aware of this. I don't know if she was listening to the EFAB, and that's why she's aware of why this is relevant. But I believe we just we talked about this. Uh, Rags, would you like to read this? Oh boy, I'd love to. All right. When, when, uh, when oh. Vader, essentially, he says, I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. The light on his face is blue. It's yeah. like Anakin is accepting <laughs> Obi-Wan's apology and telling him that it's not his fault. And mm. then it becomes red again when Vader returns. Brilliant creative choice there. So Jesus easy. It is so easy. <laughs> so you can just make easy. shit up. This is the media analysis equivalent of that girl smiled at me. She's my girlfriend now. Yep. <laughs> the 
when we all saw it, because I don't even think we comment on it, the minis, we all knew. Like, that's just going to be what people say, because that's just, it's super intelligent. The, the super creative, good jobs. Like, oh, it's really obvious, but okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Hope it just, hopefully it distracted from the writing, I guess. It did. Um, why do Star Wars fans hate everything? Maybe if they didn't try so hard to get me invested and then stop pissing on everything I enjoyed, I wouldn't have <laughs> to hate it. But hey, I ain't no scholar. Meh. Yeah, that was that was the other video we were, we were gonna cover, but we may cover in future, who knows. Um, but, uh, yeah, it is kind of amusing, because I still try to get super, I don't know, meta-pilled on this to be like, is it just whatever is currently releasing people will say are the worst fans? Probably. Like my Marvel fans, they're just the, they, because like the meme with Star Wars is like, just, nobody hates Star Wars like Star Wars fans, which I always found funny because like, that makes the most sense. I don't know why that's a shock to you. Yeah. Yeah, because the, it's, they're the ones who care about Star Wars. So when you're making it shitty, they're the ones who get pissed off about that. The people who don't care about Star Wars don't care. Exactly. It's like, oh man, I was really expecting fucking like that group of people who knit regularly to hate Star Wars the most, but uh, there, there we are. It's the people who watch Star Wars that did. Don't get it. Uh, you know what they say, can't spell ignorance without IGN. Yeah, that's the yeah, quote. Yep. Uh, been hearing a lot about Roe v. Wade on Twitter. Don't know who this Roe fellow is, but I'm glad people are showing our boy Wade the love and attention he deserves. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Wade Brigade. Also, hi, Rex. Yeah, it'll be the showdown Wade of the century. Pay per view fight, Roe v. Wade. The rematch oh, of the century. Can't wait to see how it turns out. Yeah. Yeah, because I haven't looked into any of it, of course, but I was very happy as well because Wade is one of the best characters I think Disney have come up with. Um, it really is. When Reva killed Wade, I was. Ah. Oh, oh. What a tragedy, oh, too, really... because she's kind of like Anakin, and Anakin no. accidentally killed a bunch of people. In the same. It's so. It's so creative. Did you know there was a red light near her when she did the evil thing, too? It was no. a lightsaber, so... That's how you know it's evil! That's, that's, I would call that really good art. That's just really good art. That's Genius. What that is. I mean, the good news is the actor of the Wade series, or sorry, the actor who played Wade... Is the Wade series! <laughs> Make it happen! <laughs> Make it happen! <laughs> Do it! You already know uh, more when... than we did, and that's great. That's great that he's gonna I was gonna say he's coming back on the Reva series, and he's gonna be a Force ghost. You'll inspire her. You'll be like, he, he'll forgive her for her actions. He'll be like, you did what you did in favor of an, an honor, honorable goal that was to get revenge on people who did you wrong. Um, Woohoo! Been a while since I've been able to catch the greatest massive of all time live again. Oh, and hi, Rags. Hello. Your advice about first date at the zoo is the greatest success in history. Oh. Well, it... I mean, well, I mean, it, it is good advice, but I, mean, I don't know about that much. But uh, yeah, take that bitch to the zoo. Mm hmm. Hey, it is a good call. I just love zoos. Um, hey, guys, I know you're pretty upset about Wade, but he just slapped the fuck out of Roe. Time to celebrate. Lol. <laughs> now on to the wings quote of the day. I'm, I'm just glad people are appreciating Wade. That's all. That's all I have to uh, say. So any, that. yeah. The more Wade love, the better, as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. Big fan of Wade. Mo Wade, mm -hmm. Mo better. So this, okay, I got confused. I didn't know if it was about Star Wars or about Wigs of Redemption because of the quote, because it said like George, but I think it's about Wigs of Redemption. So you got, Sai, George, you got a fucking anime pic as your profile. I don't give a fuck about what you got to say. That motherfucker can go back to his blockchain or whatever the fuck. He's probably got a fedora <laughs> on being like, while you were partying, I was studying the blade. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Wigs said all that, that? that sounds great. Oh, it's a good quote. I like it. I have more letters. Hi, Rags. Hello. I have more letters. Hi, Rags. Um, watching Bly right now. I really like it, but I think Hill House has better written characters, IMO. Can't wait to see how it wraps up, though. Hmm. So, Tough. um, I think there would be a conversation to be had, if not for how they handled the mum. Yeah. I think that really brings down Hill House. And I think that they were trapped toward the end because they changed a bit and they didn't manage to find a way to make it uh, quite as much sensical as possible. If you want to know what I mean by that, there is a whole breakdown of us going through the entire show and oh my God, uh, talking about it. Remember that? Remember that thing that happened? That video took fucking ages to make, but I'm very happy with it. 
And uh, we we are like the meanest on the internet when it comes to the finale for Hill House. Even though yep. we celebrate Hill House being fantastic. Yep. Great show. And finale, though. Oof. Yep. Mm. Hill House is extremely good. Definitely worth a watch. Absolutely. Finale is pretty rough, though. Did you guys ever see Flanagan's um, EG Dick? prequel? What EG prequel? prequel? Uh, that Ouija, like Ouija boards. Oh, so there, I, wait, there was wait, like wait, a... wait, 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 stop. Spirit board. Yeah, the spirit board. But the, the movie that they made was called Ouija. It was like a Platinum Dunes, like Michael Bay's oh, horror movie. Okay. And it was oh, the, okay. orig the original one's really shitty. But Michael Flanagan did a prequel to it that's actually amazing. And it was I like, can imagine oh, that. Yeah, I, how did you? I, <laughs> like, I'd be interested in seeing that. Yeah, I was going to say, I probably will. There's a couple of films from him I still haven't checked out. I've seen Hush. I wasn't too impressed with that, but. The, okay. the mirror the mirror from oculus appears somewhere in every one of his things too neat um, we saw the movie he did about the the bed lady what um what's oh yeah called? gerald's game and yeah, the, mirror game. Was, the mirror was the bed frame oh. in gerald's game lots to like in gerald's game lots to dislike too. yeah yeah <laughs> all these stuff in there as well um but yeah i mean it's really cool I, I i didn't think he would be the one to handle it but adapting luigi into a film sure like a, a luigi <laughs> I'd like to see his Wall of Ouija movie, and that'd be yeah. Do it, Chris Pratt as voice. <laughs> the cinematic no. universe. <laughs> the Super Mario Wall cinematic universe. The Pratt verse. The Pratt verse. Uh, as a lifelong Kingdom Hearts fan, playing since 2003, Kingdom Hearts 3 is a three to four out of ten. Oof. Oh, I think that's probably like contentious, isn't it? <laughs> well, we'll see. Chat, how do you feel about that? Is that person totally fucking wrong? Is that a bad take, or is that based? Let's find out. It, yeah, is that based or bad? That could be our new mini series, based or bad. Based or bad. You go with based or bait, because uh, as Jay put out a tweet about it not too long ago, it's whenever someone has a bad take these days, people are just like that's bait, instead of just their bad opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, gotta say, guys, I got my J plush, and that little rhino is like real cute. Oh, and J is pretty neat too, also, I guess. Perfectly kickable. Irax. Hello. Uh, I miss sure. Jay's plush. I, I have most of the other plushes, though. Uh, makeshift kind of screwed me on my regs. I ordered uh, <gasps> two regs and two maulers for X Ray Girl and I, and only one reg showed up. I emailed them, and they're like, "Yeah, we're not making them anymore, but here's your money back." I'm like, "Aw." Oh, that well, sucks. hopefully, there's a second round someday. Yeah. Mm. I think X-Ray Girl is getting Maybe even soon it would be out. Who knows when it'll happen? Who knows? Uh, FNT is doing there soon, so there, there will be a plush of my wife out there for everybody if, there if, you go. if you're in the market for one. Um, also, I saw more bass than cringe, so... <laughs> okay. There you go. I hear Kingdom Hearts has, like, a cool combat system. I, I, think, guess, that I think it's the Final story Fantasy. That... Final Fantasy XV, I heard, was kind of a, a riff on what they were doing in Kingdom Hearts, but I've never played the Kingdom Hearts game, so I can't speak too specifically. I only ever hear bad things about uh, Kingdom, uh, not Kingdom, Final Fantasy XV. is a bit of a weird one. I, uh, the combat in it's pretty good. It's got a weird structure, and the story just sprints to the finish line and kind of doesn't make sense towards the end. But uh, uh, there, there's some things to like about it. Like uh, I, I think it's worth playing for the most part. Now, if you hate Final Fantasy like games, you years probably... though, wasn't it? That game was in development hey. from like 2006. I, th I think it's probably like a cyberpunk situation though, where it's like, yeah, they were kicking around the idea for like seven years, but they were yeah, probably only right. actually developing it for like I'm guessing the PS3, oh four generation, because yeah, they were originally it was originally a PS3 game called Final right. Fantasy 13 Versus, and then they moved it to PS4, and it was out in 2016, so three years, I guess. Uh, the fans hate for Star Wars is really born out of our love. We love it, but simply hate what it's become. A cold robot monster, not unlike Vader. Uh, hmm. yeah, but they would rather just say, you do it for the clicks. Even the people who, like, don't even have channels. It's like, you do it for the clicks. <laughs> you don't even know what art is. Do you even know what blue and red mean as colors? I don't think so. You idiot. Devil's Third is a Wii U game. Never heard of it. Uh, the numbers, Mason, what do they mean? Everyone hmm. remembers that. An old timer. Yeah. Except for Mason, he can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he remembers the numbers, he can't remember where the station is, I suppose. Uh, I like Black Ops, this is a cool game. Did not I like Black Ops I loved it. I loved that and World of War. They're my best memories for COD. 
You don't like Black Ops. I uh, oh no no I, I don't like Black Ops three and four. Oh, yeah, um, I don't like three uh, or four either. <laughs> I like one one, and two. one one I think is good is great. Two I think the campaign of that one is kind of cool, but it's also like batshit insane. And um, um, Cold War yeah. is actually all right. Like uh, Raven's the one who made that. They're the guys who made like Quake Four and Singularity. It, it's like four hours long because it's a Call of Duty campaign, but it's all right. Mm -hmm. No, I, I like I like Black Ops Two. That that might be like one of my more controversial. I like that game a lot. It, it I... legitimately had more endings than Mass Effect Three in terms of like branching decisions. <laughs> yeah, Black Ops Two. Yeah, it did have yeah. a lot going on. The um, my Call of Duty hot takes definitely that I like the campaign for Infinite Warfare because that's the one that everyone that's seems to hate. Take, yeah. I don't. I don't think it's a. Good I, I, I hear good things about Infinite oh, Warfare's well, campaign. See, here's the thing: it's not a good military shooter at all because it's it's not a military shooter. It's a Battlestar Galactica game. Like I right. have consistently <laughs> heard good things about Halo or sorry, uh, Call of Duty Infinite's campaign. Infinite Warfare's yeah, it's, campaign. I, I mean, Infinite yeah. Warfare. Infinite Warfare, if you can get it on like a humble bundle or something for cheap, I, I'd recommend playing through the campaign. Or like, I mean, it's Call of Duty. You could probably get through half of it and then still return it on Steam. <laughs> wow. Fair right. point. <laughs> hot take. World at War is the best card of all time. That's not a hot take yeah. at this stage. I think I'll that's a... Uh, I mean, there's probably a little bit of spice in there. It's not like super hot, um, but it's you not, know. It's not... Well, yeah, because when we talk about the most cold take, it's Call of Duty 4. Yeah. But I would say that when we talk about, especially nowadays, I think World of War's reputation is pretty glowing. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, because it, it's, it's got a real, lot of scenarios that are unique to that game because they haven't really yeah. done Pacific Front and any of the others. The only thing I didn't like about World of War is I, th I found that it was a lot of monster closet encounters where... It was less about actually defeating the enemy and more about progressing far enough that they stop spawning infinitely. And it's like, um, it's like all Call of Duties. I, they're That's, not all like that, but but World of War is the one where I found it very noticeable. It was absolutely, like, uh, it's the most egregious. Like the on that. The, tr the trenches that you have to go through with the the guys oh, on the flamethrowers and stuff. Spam. Or, grenade yeah. spam is there is there is no card that compares to the grenade spam of World of War. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. It was incredibly. That was the challenge. I think I think I've talked about this before, but my, me and my friends would like compete to see if who we can get the most grenade tags on screen at once in the campaign. <laughs> I think I I think I had eight. I can't remember what the highest I ever got was, but it was fucking insane. I wouldn't mind doing that again as a challenging stream thing. Hmm. Yeah. As long as everyone's willing to watch me die like a thousand times. Because <laughs> uh, the way it would often work in COD is like. You can't just win out by hiding forever until, like, all of your AI allies beat the rest. You need to progress so it changes the enemy spawns, right? Yeah. And so, mm. because they'll keep respawning until you pass a threshold, and it's like, you have to, it's like a puzzle game. You have to find where the way that you can move forward is without dying with the limited health you have. Basically, you're just trying to give yourself suppressing fire by killing people. Yeah, it's like kill, when you, kill. if you kill enough of them within 10 seconds, then you have about a 10 second have grace period move, before yeah. they respawn. <laughs> You gotta run. It's, you know, it's really like adrenaline rush sort of gameplay, but most of the time you're just gonna be fucking angry. <laughs> yep. Yeah, going slowly and methodically taking out enemies and stuff. Just, you There's can't do it checkpoint fast. checkpoint was an hour stuff. back, and you're like, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I remember trying to play it on Veteran after I got on a kick of going through the Halo games on Legendary, and those, yeah. <laughs> it's not an equivalent experience. So like, Halo's encounters yeah. are very limited, and you can, you can, pl you can strategize, and you can see your progress as the enemies die, whereas in veteran World of War, <laughs> good luck. Uh, Mom Warfare 3 was hilariously broken, but it's still my favorite card memory. Oh, my favorite card memory because I exploited the crap out of it. Specialist package was broken to hell and back. Specialist package was absolutely broken. What was that? Um, Specialist was the. So there was three. There was the standard kill streaks. I think it was. Yeah, it was assault. Support and specialist. Assault was the regular kill streaks, AC one thirty stuff like that. Support was uh, easier to obtain, but they were more yeah, they were support like UAV and stuff. Uh, specialist was that you could basically get perks that would give you 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 would unlock perks as kill streaks to stack on top of your arm. Oh yeah. Oh. Am I mixing them up? I'm pretty sure that's what specialist was. Yeah, specialist was like you could get perks that you would stack on top of your arm, on top of what you already have. So like it it just makes it. You're giving yourself permanent buffs, um, 
It's wait, it's they don't reset when you here. die. It's for the whole game, oh, they, the whole round. Uh, well, 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 permanent in terms of like it's ongoing, right? Your kill streak will end. Um, like your if you use a UAV, it ends. If you use a attack chopper, it ends. But like this, just lasts until you die and respawn. So it just makes you better. Like it makes you harder to kill. Um, and I so mean, like that's... that makes. What you're you describing is almost a trade-off, though, right? Because, like, the AC-130 will last longer if you die straight away, but the perks would only last as long as you live. That's true, but but it would be that, um, because the perks keep stacking, you can reach a point where you are, you become insanely powerful, mm -hmm. to where it's very hard for people to kill you, and it just means you can keep going and going. Mm -hmm. Well, fair enough. Uh... Kingdom Hearts 3 was so bad that there are multiple several long hour videos going into full detail on how bad it is, the longest being over six hours. God damn. Well, yeah, I think I've seen one of them before, but I've just, I know nothing about Kingdom Hearts, so I've never retained information about it. I think I've played one and two, but I remember nothing about them. <laughs> it's been so long. From what fun. I gathered, Tetsuo Nomura basically couldn't decide if he wanted to put his OCs into Final Fantasy or Disney. So he did both. Oh, it's not. <laughs> hmm. You could just lie for four and a half minutes and no one would even know. Cough, donkey, cough. Ooh. Damn. Ooh. Well, at least it I wouldn't only be know funny. that's true about. Is it Octopath Traveler was the one that he did that on that? Controversy, kind of, but he got away with it mostly because he's funny. Funny, funny, funny. Right, sure. It'll be fine if you're funny. Very funny. Hilarious. Peter Darker, I mean Parker. Oh, and they got a little smirk face. Rude. Oh, Uncle Ben had his chance. Zack Snyder, Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> you Uncle know ben he'd do it. You know. Lord Long. Take a shit all over Uncle Ben. Of Mewbshlington Abbey. Is there any good chance for a Kong fap of Peter Ooh. Jackson's Long Kong when there's less going mm. on? It'd be a movie fap for the ages. Yes. Mm. Hello, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Ah, oh, hello. Um, yeah, I think so. I think there's going to be time in the future in which we will watch a Kong of Long. I imagine. When there's less going on, yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably when there's less going on, I'd imagine. But yeah, at some point. Sounds exciting. We'll get right on it at some point. Disney will make S-tier content for the next decade, but you'll have to run like Lego Jar Jar for a year. Do you do it? <laughs> yeah, fine. Whatever. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll, you know what? I'll bite that bullet for a year. I'll let everyone I mean, know that that was the I deal. how often do I run anyway, right? I don't yeah, I'm not run running that often. often these days. Yeah. It's and like you know jumping. What? When was the last time you jumped? It's probably been months <laughs> since you've like actually jumped. <laughs> it's probably you... been fucking months. Since you've jumped, I just like the idea. Rags yeah. goes to for the Mark, gym. For Mark, it's probably been longer. I, I was gonna say, for me, it's legit been five years. <laughs> like I, I don't have a lot of vertical takeoff on my prosthetic legs, so. Oh, but I, then again, I, I, like, oh, I was saying it because you're white. <laughs> oh no, okay. Damn. I thought it was because I was a cripple, but oh yeah. no, damn, don't be so it's racist. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm Italian. I'm off white, if anything. Hmm. Oh yeah, you're Schrodinger's white person, the Italian. Yeah. <laughs> It would be funny though if you agree to all this, but you kind of forget it, and then you go to the gym one day and you start running, and then you just do the fucking thing. You're like, oh shit, I forgot. <laughs> you you have that four seconds of you starting, and you stop, and you look around, everyone's looking at you weird, and so you just keep walking instead. <laughs> I'm just trying to like, what would the scenario be? Where you have to run, like you need to deliver something or catch someone. You just have, you're like, I gotta do it. I just gotta. Here I go. <laughs> <laughs> but if you deliver something, you're going to have to carry it while doing that run, so... Well, let's say it's information. You just need to say something to somebody. you got to get to them first. It's a really Rags crowded area. Of jumping. I don't hate jumping. I'm just saying that you never do it, but it's in every video game. It's just, that's all I'm saying. Nothing, but you never jump. It's you funny. Jump. Health bars are in a lot of video games, and we don't really have them. Yeah, you do. Not really. Yeah, you <laughs> you do. Not really. Of course, you have. To, yeah, you got health bars. No, you they're don't. just much harder to interpret. You're in talking real about life. blood bar or something. That might be blood similar. Bar. <laughs> that sounds like a place that vampires go after work. Hell yeah! Mm. Oh, the dude, it would be fun to come up with all the different cocktail names for that. You did you ever see Daybreakers? I did. Yeah. I would. I wouldn't mind re uh, rewatching that sometime. All I've retained from that film is. I don't know if it's a twist or not. Maybe I shouldn't say it, but just the mechanics. Is that a vampire movie with Ethan Hawke? It is. And Sam Neill. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Sam Neill, yeah. 
long time ago though. I don't remember anything about it either. Uh, I don't remember liking it. I can't remember how I felt about it. I think it was pretty neutral. I was like, all right, that was a movie. That that's the world where the like the vampires have taken over and there's like farm produced blood stuff. Or, or am I thinking of something else? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's a shortage okay. of human blood in the vampire society. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. also Blade Trinity though. That happens in. I don't know if you. Ooh, we gotta see the Blade movies. I've never seen them actually. Oh, dude, we'll happily I, do that, especially if they're released really on Blade. Love, I love the first two Those Blade movies. Hilarious. Everyone likes the first two. Nobody likes the third one. Yeah. Uh, I think X-Ray Girl does, but she likes Ryan Reynolds. It's, so it's, it's going to be better than whatever Disney end up putting out. What? Yes, that is probably true, because at least it's rated R, I think. I think 3 is rated R, wasn't it? I think it? so, yeah. I think yeah. so. Um, hey Daddy Morley, since you only watch good movies, if certain people recommend it, ask those people to watch Pig so that they'll tell you how good it is. I've seen a couple of recommendations for Pig. A Nicolas Cage? I'm definitely going to do a Metal Forge on Pig at some point. The movie sounds hilarious. Yeah, there you go. And if... I don't think it's... That's not what I've heard. I don't think I've heard it's hilarious. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, I, 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 I said drama. it sounds hilarious. I haven't... I have no idea what actually happens. <laughs> I think it's, a, it's a bit of a serious film, but... Um, I mean, well, either way, let me know, and... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look-see. Thanks for pointing it out no. now. I can't stand anything that sounds like Reese Beecher. I know, mm -hmm. right? Uh, um, Vader's voice didn't annoy me at all in episode 3, and then 4, he's not, um, he's not in 4 very much. But it was 5 that he really, I started to notice in here and then made the points, and then, um, by the time he hit 6, I was actually getting really tired of listening to him. Like, I don't like this fake Vader. This, this is, put him, it's Microsoft Vader. Microsoft Vader. Nice. Oh, and it's a cute little Microsoft, emoji of a Shiba Inu with a heart. Uh, which That's would be cute. Which would be easier, convincing Brown Table and High Top that Spider that Spider can be Spider Man without tragedy, or getting a straight answer out of Twin Perfect about his opinion on anything? Um, getting a straight answer out of Twin Perfect. I think we'd get the straight answer to Twin Perfect first. Yeah. I. Hmm. I think you yeah. could eventually retch it out of him because he would have nowhere else he, to hide. Yeah, he would He would eventually give an answer that he might not even agree with himself just so that he can stop the embarrassment and the shame of not answering a question. Because he can only take it so far before a human is like, I have to leave because I can't handle this anymore. Okay. But, so yeah, he would eventually say something really stupid probably. While I don't know you'd ever convince Brown Table and High Top that you can do Spider-Man without tragedy. It's too important to their identities, I think. Yeah, they would say, like, that's not Spider-Man, that's some other creature. You yeah, know, whereas okay. Twin Perfect, he doesn't consider not answering questions a part of his identity. It just sort of happens to <laughs> be just, that way. Just sort of happens when you put two things he said together that contradict. That's well, all. I guess it would just be that I don't know how attached he really is to, like, defending anything. Any particular... <laughs> well, because <laughs> the impression you got from that discussion is that he's not that... I guess, I guess like, just not as interested in, like... The discussions about. He's not interrogated him. himself very much. He's just. Yeah, we're, exactly. Stuff. And so, in that sense, I don't think he cares as much about like what position he'll defend or anything like that. Whereas, mm -hmm. yeah, in the case of these guys with Spider Man, it's so important to their identities. And you know what? He will give an answer, and you just put Smug Ross on the end, and you'll feel he's covered. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Smug yeah, Ross. That's true. You guys watching The Boys? No. no. Oh, um, no, I forgot that's I even running. I just saw a I actually, random tweet about it, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's happening. I think it was and Open Bar's gone. chat. I asked for everyone's reviews of it so far, and it was, like, the most mixed thing I've ever seen. There was great and terrible everywhere, so oh, I have boy. no idea boy. what we're dealing with. Terrible series. I did see... You guys don't care about spoilers for the boys, right? No, I've I don't seen the first... Shit. Three episodes, then. But honestly, if it gets spoiled, I don't really care. I could not. I don't think I could care less. Well, so I won't tell you the result of it then. But um, quote unquote spoil. I just saw someone posting it, and everyone's really excited that um, Homelander has a boss fight with uh, Soldier Boy, Butcher, and Huey all at once. Okay, Huey. Yeah, they all have superpowers now. Um, so I, did. I thought the whole point. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, right? <laughs> The uh, the boys taking Compound B though that was that was in the books for I was actually kind of surprised they're when all... the first season started that they weren't doing that I was like oh they're like 
fighting them without powers. Is well, and I'm neat. sure that the season is going to address the obvious thought of, like, isn't that the whole point is we, we don't want to be like them? And I'm sure they'll have something for it, but it really does immediately come across as very unintuitive. It's like, wait, but I thought... So, you know, there's a way to execute that. I don't know... I don't know how good season three is, uh, but I've heard lots of different things about it. We may check it out at some point in the distant future if it gets loads of recommendations or if it's considered perfectly bad, but I just, I really don't have the time. I wanted to, kind of, but I just don't have the time. Sorry. I mean, especially, like, hanging out with things like the Geeks and Gamers people and stuff, I'm sort of the least sensitive to things being woke. Like, it's sort of something that doesn't bother me as long as the story's good. Like, I think I would cite everything, everything, everywhere, everything all at once in Arcane as examples of things that people could say, oh yeah, there's aspects of that that I won't watch because it's woke. I'm like, you're missing good stuff. But The Boys Season 3, Episode 3 was the most heavy-handed, like, over-the-top messaging stuff, the well, a written episode of a show that I was actually, like, blown away by it. To the point that I'm not sure if they're trolling or actually serious about any of it. It's, hmm. I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird. And the first two episodes were okay. Like, they, they weren't horrible, but they, I wouldn't say they were great either. But the third one, I was like, ooh, it was a different writer on this one for sure. I'm already spotting some serious cringe if the people in chat to be believed about the events of this season. So that's, you know, that's all fine. Uh, <laughs> though I will say, uh, is it more, is it worse than episode seven of season two in terms of the blood? Yes, yeah, you, no, yes. It, like it was, uh, I, I think it's more heavy handed than any episode of any show I've ever seen. Like I was sort of shocked. And it, it actually kind of opens with, uh, like I think a four minute long sort of, Ode to Cuties, where like wow. Starlight's like a ten year old girl dancing hypersexual to a Britney Spears song, and they're really milking it too. I'm like, guys, yeah, like, okay, come on, yeah, Don't we get it. Her mom's it. horrible, but <laughs> they, I I don't know, they leaned into it pretty hard. So, um, well, it's yeah. awesome. Any expectations for the RE4 remake? Also, High Rex. I hope Hi. it's good. I, I don't have any expectations. I hope it's good, but I have no clue what they're actually going to do with it. Yeah. So I haven't looked into it enough to have anything. I don't think it's going to be good or bad on anything. I just, I'll be like, I'll play it. I think, I think I'm it's going to be similar to the RE2 remake. Yeah, that's, that's, play, it's the RE2 that team. Style. Okay, yeah, I liked RE2 remake. The, the RE2 team made is making four, and the guys who made the three remake made eight. Like, Village. Oh. Okay. Um, and people, people well, didn't like shit. Um, people yeah, didn't and three like... wasn't that good either. I hear that the people yeah, didn't I've like the I just hope they remember what made Resident Evil Four kind of what it was, which is that it was hyper gameplay focused, mm -hmm. and it wasn't like if it was coincidentally atmospheric and stuff like that. That was cool and neat, but it was so focused on actually playing the game, and it was very mm -hmm. mechanics heavy. That I don't. I. I that's what it. It really needs to be. If you're going to remake that game, then you need to have a game that's all about kicking and aiming, you know, actually taking advantage of body part shots and shooting things out of the air, taking advantage of iframes, just doing all this really cool stuff that Resident Evil 4 had that makes it so fun and replayable and keeps it an awesome classic to this day and it's aged so well. Yeah. Uh I wish they'd stop using lightsabers as lighting. I think that would be fine if it wasn't every fight. Because it's getting a bit yeah, like, it almost fine. seems like it's a thing they're relying on to be, you know, interesting as a fight instead of anything else. Because um, I, I don't mind the idea, I just, it's going to be execution again. As always. This is Dragon Ball Evolution bad fighting to me. I've not seen it, I just know it's terrible reputation. Mm. This show isn't canon to me. Not a surprise. Um, I hate that Obi-Wan lit his lightsaber first. Jedi should always light theirs last when they have no choice but to fight. I agree that he did that in Revenge of the well, so, too. Here's the thing, he was there to kill him, but then he wasn't, so... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. When like, he realized I... that he truly couldn't be saved and that Anakin was gone, <laughs> he decided not to, to spare kill him. him. <laughs> yeah. Totally he was like, well, my, my, beef, my beef was with Anakin. If this is Darth Vader now, we have no problem. Yeah, we're oh, all chill. Yeah, you go ahead. 
I hated the... Oh, wait. This fight reminds me of the lightsaber fights I had as a kid. I think we probably did a better job, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I trust that. Better special effects, too. Mm -hmm. Rag saying episode 4 is the best. Duel laugh my ass off clunky as fuck. Ooh. Rag um, said episode 4 is best duel. I think... Well, well in reference was... to Vader and Anakin? I don't know if you said that or not. I can't remember. I can't remember if he was. I I said the most impressive fight is the Mustafar one. The most me, but it's just two different animals entirely. Mm -hmm. Them meeting on the Death Star well, is almost not even a fight. Well, it's it's about which one's doing more for character versus which one's doing more for I guess action. Because my favorite, yeah. my favorite is Vader and Luke on uh, on the Death Star. That's my favorite, not because of yeah. the court. I I mean I think the court. Yeah, that's my favorite that's payoff in it, but, but my favorite fight is probably the Bespin one. Bespin's really great. That's probably like they yeah, it's hmm. it's because they go to a lot of locations and they keep this the the the, the well, atmosphere is so strong in there. That's true. I think it's just that when I think of like probably my favorite moment in Star Wars, it is like the the ending of the fight in yeah. like uh in Return of the Jedi, that when the mm -hmm. music kicks in and, it's, and like, oh it's so it's oh it's wonderful. It's wonderful. The music's perfect because it just captures the yeah. It's like epic but also tragic sort of thing. Exactly. Um yeah, so you have it was to split like the it video up, we right? covered today. It was epic and tragic. Yeah. <laughs> of all the Obi-Wan beta fights, of which there are now four, Many. I guess. Yeah. Um so you'd rank them in what does it mean for everything that's happening between them in this fight and then also I guess choreography and then you can go further than that, but if we stuck with those two Choreography, like the one in the in the quarry, was absolute garbage. The one, oh, yeah. the one in the finale was like I'd just say bad without further inspection. Um, yeah, it's better than the quarry, I think. I'm happy to agree that the A New Hope one is clunky. It's uh, it's awkward. Um, we all know why, but like at the same time, I don't know that it like is overtly terrible as a result of that choreography wise. And then the best, yeah. like, easily the best, is obviously the Mustafar choreography beats out the other three. Um, I don't think anybody's disagreeing with that. Absolutely. But then, which one ha is, like, meaningful in terms of who these two people are? The quarry one fails again, like, completely. Embarrassment. The, yeah. finale, the finale is, like, weird. There's loads of weird choices that get made, and then things that don't quite make sense in terms of power levels. Yeah, Obi-Wan at the end, if it's... Um, at least it's very easy that we all agree. Obviously, the two Kenobi fights are just the worst of the two, easily. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get to, sorry. basically, is, like, Mustafar's meaning. There's a lot in that. It can be excessive, but there's a lot in there. And then, of course, A New Hopes is very straightforward in terms of understanding the mechanics of that, too. And uh, and so, we, going through all of that, of course, Rags would rank the A New Hope fight above the two fights in the Kenobi show. I assume we all do. Um, the question yep. is just, like, how do you rank them against each other when it's the Mustafar one versus the, the New Hope one? And I think fans will fight over that for a while. So, that's fine. I don't even have a strong take. I mean, I, 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 I enjoy talking about it. I just know that the Kenobi ones were fucking awful. They oh, were yeah. the big poo, <laughs> yes. I, I meant between the two good ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, well, they're just so different. It depends on what you're looking for, I, I suppose, do really and like, what you're actually rating. I do really like the fight, because I, I will put rags here a bit. I, I do like the fight between Obi-Wan and, and Darth Vader on the Death Star. It's, it's, a, I, it's, a, it's a good sequence. Not and it's, well, it, it's and got the choreography that's... isn't, like, awful. I think that's no, it, something it, that a lot of people it, say it's really bad, but it's not. It's, it's okay. one of the fights that looks the most like an actual sword fight. Like, you do spend most of your time in a sword fight guarding and waiting for the other person to strike so that you can counter. So, I, I, I mean, mean I, I, I wouldn't even say I it's bad choreography. It's just more about I, the scene that the fight. can't speak much to that. I can't I, I just think choreography that... much. I just think it's okay. And then when you think about what's going... Like, it's not unpleasant to watch. And so when you have the character stuff, you know, supporting it... I mean, when you consider there's... There's damn near what? How many years between seventy seven and twenty twenty two? Almost. Well, um, exactly. Uh, what? It's, you, know, it's, like... you you have access to a lot more tools than they had when they were making that. Yeah, that um, was so focused on more in their prime as well. Like um, 
yeah, it's it's um you had no excuse. You had every reason to be able to succeed. All the technology, a huge budget, a massive corporation behind you, legions of fans that you know you have to please. And with it, when a new hope, you know, that was 1977. You only had so much to work with. I hear a lot of parts of making that movie was a just absolute disaster mess. And you were doing something that was unbeknownst to you going to revolutionize science fiction forever. Yeah. Um, that, that, well, that yeah, you had no idea kind of where in project. this case, in this case, you know, like, God damn, there's no excuse. There is no excuse. There is and no excuse. There is no payoff to compare uh, in the Kenobi show compared to, like, even Obi-Wan looking at Luke and then smiling at Vader. Yeah. Like, that shit. Oh, that's great. In terms of telling Alec you what he's into. Alec so much. I know it's been talked about to death, but like the look, how did my father die and the look that he gives and just how well that now fits in in terms of yeah. everything that's been added. So great. How did he die? Well, I didn't kill him. It wasn't me. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't me. I would never do that. I'd never you told me Vader killed him. The, the, the meme of like, that's what he said. That's literally what he said to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sort of a product of his own actions, I suppose. Like he led himself down a path in which he led himself to be killing himself. It's really metaphorical, Luke. You see, you're being a bitch, Luke. Luke. All I really did was cut off three of his limbs and left him to burn alive. I didn't kill him. Gosh, you're so mean. (laughs) I thought he died painfully and slowly, but I was. How many dogs? I thought about stabbing him through the chest, but we all know that doesn't work. No, it's it's practically giving them life by doing that. Um, how many dark scenes were there in the show? A lot, yeah. I guess. A couple of them, yeah. There's a few. I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Oh, Obi Wan's Schwartz was much bigger than Vader's in the end. There, okay. Vader got his Schwartz burned off on Mustafar, and he's still kind of upset about that. You could in Star Wars, you could probably get like super bionic cocks. Yeah, probably. Oh um, yeah, Luke, Luke can feel his hand at the end of Empire. They poke him, a pin. Yeah, yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, he it could be through. like it could look perfect and be just the right size, and you could get like extra little stuff inside of you, so you could just like fucking come like a racehorse. And so anyway, you know, it's uh, in that universe. It exists. Next the, chat, what's no, the, I was, I was <laughs> actually looking to make a point, which was that uh, okay. you go, you gotta wonder about Vader. Um, being that the first fight he properly has with Obi-Wan, he gets minced. Second fight, he's dominating, but for some reason has, like, war flashbacks yeah. and just doesn't do anything. Third fight, he gets minced again. And those, the two fights he lost, they were, like, full-on actual fights, while the, the, the weird one in the quarry, I don't even know what Vader thinks about that. Fight number four, he wins, but he didn't, like, I wonder if he now thinks, like, the show, he's just like, was that really a win? He kind of just gave up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, now he's the master, see? He's been training. It's like, you ran off this time. It's for real. Well, just episode two of that fucking Emperor shit where he's like, I got him. I killed him. And the Emperor's like, oh, yeah, I, I saw it. He kind of um, kind of just uh, stopped fighting you, didn't he? He's like, no, no, I won the fight. Yeah. Destroyed him. <laughs> he's like, Easy. Okay. Yeah, sure. Showed him. You got that, him, that, you? Ma- that Vader mask is looking pretty new. You get yourself a new yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> a new one after I destroyed your other one. Just celebrate. Boy, like, I, I, he was like, no, nah, I got it polished. Does he have That's spares? All. Do you think he has spares? Probably. He, uh, of course he has spares. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe he doesn't, because it probably doesn't get destroyed that much. Well, he I guess yeah, he no, must have a backup, backup like, suit. Just in case. It's very important well, yeah, for him to have it, but is it like, like a super Obama special only suit? Wore, well, it's, it's just Obama only wore two colored suits, but like he would have had of multiple. Color. Calm down. <laughs> like he only he only ever wore I think it was um uh blue and black suits but like he would have a lot of different suits you know so it's probably the same for uh for Darth Vader. Obama at his wardrobe with his Vader suit in there and he's like, <laughs> like a back and forth one just day. in case. I guess Cheney runs this <laughs> one. that one for the drone strike. He puts that on before he orders. It. Ray Mr. was Bobby always put that on. Ray was always the chosen one. I'm assuming we're saying this in a very joking way, because fuck off. Wasn't Starkiller the Chosen One in the Force Unleashed lore? Or at least he was- What does it even mean anymore? The Chosen One always screws everything up. Um, (laughs) The Chosen One is whoever the writers want to fluff up. Whoever the writers um, have chosen. 
when when Yoda says no, there is another. I think the Force Unleashed tried to argue that he was possibly talking about um, Nah, come Star on, Killer as well. And it's Star like... Starkiller's Starkiller's dead before Yoda says that though. Yeah. Or like, I mean, it, well, assuming that clone Starkiller isn't. I, don't know. I was about to say, have you seen? Have you played Force, Force Unleashed too? Because yeah, yeah, he ain't uh, dead. I, I reviewed them both, but I mean, he he is. It's a clone, so, or, or I mean, hey, possibly. I guess you're saying clones on people. <laughs> It's wow. probably only a matter. You, you bring it up. It's probably only a matter of time until um they do a Star Killer thing. Which well, means I, Sam I, was I think still involved in Star Wars. Sorry, well, I, th I think I think it wouldn't rule it out. Is what I'd say. I I could see them they just now made a show. the ideas. Uh, I don't think they would do yes. it directly. Oh no no no! They, they, they can't do it directly with the timeline they want to do. I get, well, then again, who gives a shit, right? But like, yeah, I think they'll take the character and give him like his own show. <laughs> Uh, if she probably will. Star Killer is like the Shadow the Hedgehog of Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Unleashed. Hey. I played that. What uh, platform? Because I played it on Wii. I played it on Nintendo Wii. Oh, did I game, played then. the first Force Unleashed on Wii as well? I can't remember. I know I played it on this at one point, but I can't remember if it was my first one. But I I played it on PSP, and it was actually quite good. Oh boy. The PSP one is good. Yeah, the PSP and Wii version is, and PS2 is the same game, game. Obviously, yeah. the the Wii controls are are obviously unique to the Wii. Mm. But yeah. um, the Xbox 360 and PS3 and uh, later ported to PC version is the the one where you have the as you can free aim your force throws when you pick up objects. And yeah, I, I reviewed it on PC. In fact, I think Mahler commenting on that is the first time you and I ever interacted. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, it was. Uh, well, I really liked Force Unleashed when I played it. I'm sure yeah, I'd like I it if I played it, it now. Cool. It was a um, fun game. Yeah. I remember at the yeah. time, I thought the graphics were like insane. <laughs> if, if you mod it to 4K60, it looks crazy even now. Like uh, old school LucasArts games, they generally were pretty Thanks, high standard. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Star Wars thirteen thirteen looked really cool. Thanks, it still guys. looks it looks better than most of the games we're seeing trailers <laughs> Thanks, for. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we got to. Was, uh, no, admittedly, apparently it was um George Lucas's idea to change that into a game about um Boba, Boba Fett, Fett, which yeah. I think is unnecessary. I'm happy to just follow. Oh man, I, mean, I never want to see someone I recognize ever again. <laughs> what a way to sum up everything Disney has done to Star Wars? Unnecessary. Which is well, yeah, yeah it's just the mood I'm in. I never want to see anything I recognize ever again in my life. <laughs> <laughs> right, bye, Rex. <laughs> bye. <laughs> I go find some strangers for a day. Um, so, so I said, Mola's accent is weird. Where's he from? I assume he's American, but I can't place it. Yeah, he lives <laughs> down the street from me. I don't know why oh, the nice. base assumption would be American, but all right. That is but an nice. odd base assumption. Everyone here is like, a different country. Like, bringing us to get it. I don't. What? I don't get it. Nah, uh, I don't. The only way I would get it with Frigg is if you've never heard Australian people talk before. I, I, I'd just be like, oh, yeah. you just don't know about it. But even then... I, I just think Frigg has sort of a distinct sort of way of, of speaking. It's definitely not the standard common accent here, but like, it's not American. Let's make it move on. At all. Moments like this, I just stare Where, at Where's metal monitor. from? Uh, Germany, uh, I think? Yeah. <laughs> We don't know that for sure. I don't know. Good. I mean, there's, I, where's he from? I don't know. Muller is as Welsh as Jimmy Carr is Irish. I mean, I'm pretty Welsh. I just don't, the, the accent isn't as obvious. Jimmy Carr. Poor Jimmy. Uh, Luke is not Luke Skywalker. Well, like, I, I think it has become official. We'll just call him Skinwalker Luke from now on, which is different from Jake Skywalker. <laughs> Luke I don't know why, but I... I imagine um the uh you know like in the the Rick and Morty decoys episode with the uh the one who's harvesting skin. That's mm -hmm. what I think of whenever you say skinwalker. <laughs> you know, sometimes there you know, further along down the line, there be monsters <laughs> with skinwalker <laughs> Luke. And he, yeah, he'll I gotta be back say, too. They will milk the it, fuck it's out of nice Skinwalker. It's dystopian, Luke. isn't it? Yep. It's so dystopian. Uh, Batwoman theme is more appropriate for this show. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I like the theme that got composed for uh, the main theme. Yeah, like the remix. That. The remix was kind of, kind of. It was like the oh, a good version of that. 
I like oh? the uh the theme that they made for Obi Wan that um that John Williams made. Like his thing, it didn't, thing it didn't do much for me. I thought it was fine. I I like well I yeah I don't think it's like incredible, but I like it. Um, I'd have to I hear like it again. The, I, just I like can't. the remix, uh, not the remixes, but like the um the ways that it was occasionally incorporated into the score. Rearrangements. <laughs> yeah. But like, uh, uh, I think it reminds me a lot of the Spider Man Insomniac Spider Man score. Like the, the it does, yeah, yeah, it does. Actually, I'm now that you say it, it's like that's it. They, I can't remember which part made me think that, that was the case, but it does sound kind of like that. Sort of the main theme. Yeah. Fringy sounds like a posh English guy that spent twenty years in deep rural Scotland, and now his accent <laughs> is mixed. <laughs> oh, it's... that's how you get. I Australian. don't know what to say. I just. I hear all the Australianisms from him, so I, I don't even come close to associating it, but... I've definitely got the Australianisms in there, for sure. They're, um... Trisms. Yeah. I could, uh... I could definitely go more, um... Uh... I'm actually forgetting the word. I guess loose, for sure. But I want... Loose. I want to be a little bit more precise with my words. Not go crazy. Oh, yeah. Giving Bly a seven, same rating as Halo and Boba Fett. That's the biggest of all crimes. <laughs> it's it's mm. horrifying, yeah. It's insane, it, isn't it? It's less the seven than the ones that also got a seven. <laughs> yeah, it's what, what is the most outrageous thing how the, there? How the fuck did they get seven? Like Halo getting a seven or Boba Fett getting a seven? What's more outrageous? I think Halo upsets me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I think. Oh, which one upsets me more? I think it ups Halo upsets me more, but I can believe that it got a higher score more because I think it's trying say, yeah, to do something. It also I... gets the benefit of being an adaptation where Boba Fett is not. Yeah, that that's my thing. I think I would probably be more bothered by what is done in Halo, but uh, because uh, them saying, hey, this is its own timeline, it's not canon, is enough for me to be like, oh, okay, well, at least, at least I can not care about nonsense it. nonsense timeline, yeah. <laughs> I don't have to worry that every other Halo game is going to have to factor in your fucking show with the blonde chick that's the Covenant spy that bangs Master Chief and then he dies and Cortana possesses his body. Like, what? What is any Seriously, of that? Seriously, if you had told us like, a year ago, if you told us that was a summary of the show, you'd just be like, you can't be serious, please. My favorite lying. part, You're though, about... Because they have the symbolism of, like, ah, see, his helmet cracked, he's not a human anymore. It's like, yes, this non-human saved all the lives of all these people here and stopped the Covenant from finding Halo. It's like, yeah. it's kind of, your symbolism's pretty stupid when the point that you're making, that humanity's got something that's intrinsically really cool, is, like, defeated by a, a, an artificial intelligence construct saving the day. Hmm. Remember they made that weird clone person and killed them to make Cortana? Yes. And then oh, they just never to, talked about uh, that ever again? Well, the Flash clones were in Halo lore. In like, that's Halo. what they, yeah. yeah, they basically they would abduct children and replace them with a Flash clone that would usually die like a few weeks or a few months later of some mm -hmm. illnesses. And, and that's how they were some special person they like well, the, started to the characterize nature, uh, and everything. The yeah, they just they did what makes her quite special is that she was like the first AI to be basically molded from like a cloned like brain, like a human yeah. brain proper. But like a scan, not like not yeah. the the brain itself. She's not like Matoko Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell, where it's like a physical brain in there. No, no, of course <laughs> not. And I will say, as much as it isn't really brought up again, it is you. It, it's banked upon mechanically being. It is. The reveal. It doesn't end. work though. I'm pretty I'm just, sure. I'm just saying they I, thought it did. They thought it did, but they think a lot of things yeah. work in that show that don't work. Uh, can't wait for the Star Wars multiverse when the Annie from the universe where Qui-Gon trained him has to fight a Padme that has the Force and fell to the dark side when her Annie died. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I will say, as the show oh, was going on and the couple of times they referenced Padme, I was, I was sitting there like, did they, I wonder if they got Natalie Port because like, she's doing IP stuff now with like Thor. Maybe they got her. Also, I'm not I was wondering. Like, you know, if I did like, yeah, a what if Star Wars event where Padme became a Jedi, it's just like, I don't know. Fuck it. It's probably be better than whatever, the yeah. show. If it were well written. <laughs> I, think, I think we said it literally at the same time. Just fuck it. Why not? Just do whatever. <laughs> I don't even care. I don't even care. Fuck it. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I mean, again, if they if they do have that crossover thing that uses the world between worlds time travel shit, then a multiverse was probably not too far behind. 
IGN said Bly isn't scary. That's what everyone says. <laughs> does it have to be scary? It is scary. No, of course it does. By any normal definition, it's scary. totally scary. Yeah. Existential yeah. If, dread. If you want to appeal well, I mean, to like, yeah, yeah but I wasn't okay. scared, it's like, that's totally fine. Well, I think that uh, you're you're right, Frankie. The existential dread thing. I I don't know that I found that scary. I did find it very interesting, though. Yeah, and sure. Like I mean, like I and so I I think I can appreciate if someone's like, yeah, I was not scared by Bly Manor um, because that's that's sort of like the do you find it funny or find it entertaining thing? Like what scares yeah. you? It could it's be subjective. a little subjective. So, but for the sake like, of I, um, Bringy being here, I I won't explain it for Soma, but the yeah. Soma has the exact same thing. Uh, the mm. scariest thing to me, po possibly in Bly Manor, is the fate of um, uh, I forget what's Fiola's sister's name. Uh, yeah, I used to oh, know it. It's, it's been a while since I've seen Bly now. Um, mm. oh, the sister she strangled. I forget. Yeah, uh, I forget her name. It's um, well, Call her Andrew. Regardless, <laughs> she's. The, one of the earliest ghosts that's lost all Pedita, that's it. She's lost yeah. all reference to like what she was entirely, barring of course Viola just being the main one. And um, yeah, she's just this, this faceless moaning creature in the attic that has nothing to exist for. It doesn't know what's happening with anything. Like, I don't know, there's something impossibly terrifying about being trapped in such a way that you're just tormented without even knowing why. Nor yeah, can you understand the nature of it. Your identity, your, your own memories and identity of yourself, you know? It's like, it just withers away. Yeah, and that's the fate of all ghosts. And, and oh man, I think that crystallizes when uh, the other characters start to understand that's their fate. Yeah. Um, uh, there's lots to dig out of Bly that is terrifying in terms of... Because the Hill House ghosts, you know... They, uh, this isn't me. This is the show. They argue at the end. It's not so bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's true. That's the show's perspective, not ours. It's like, hmm, all right. Man, yeah, because I was thinking about how, like, yeah, you can argue that for how the dad does the thing. I was like, well, no, it's the fucking stupid groundskeeper family. They're like, we need to die in the house. We live forever or whatever. It's like, oh, God. I feel yeah. like we're tangling our point here. <laughs> Bly, though, that was very straightforward. Almost beautifully done. Actually, I'd just say it is. Watch them both again. Uh, Although, the I guess to, to tie the two of them together, I hear the rumor to play Ezra, like the adult version of him, is Rahul Cooley, who is a uh, sheriff in Midnight Mass and the cook. I in love Bly his Manor. acting. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Yeah. Gets me every time with his performances. I wanted a much better fate for him as a sheriff, but I didn't get it. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would have been nice. Hey, it would have been nice pouring, if there was something satisfying that about it. Gasoline uh, over there. Anything. Oh, hey. Hi, vampires. Oh, fuck. I hate it. I hate it so <laughs> much. It hurts. Mm. Such a stupid ending. Um, today's animal of the day is the arowana. Hmm. What could you just call me? I, I think it's still arowana. illegal in my state. Wow. Illegal? To hunt them or? No, because it, it sounds like marijuana. Legal in my whole country now. They look pretty unique. Arowana. Although we can't buy Arowana. handguns anymore, so. No. Oh, it's oh. Straight off. Is <laughs> a fish boy. Arowana. I like kale. They are expensive. E. Look at that little fishy. The dragonfish. Neat. Dragon top dish. Of it, top of it is shockingly level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Straight line. It is. Clearly the best way to enjoy a fight is not to be able to see it at all. Thanks, Game of Thrones, for setting that precedent. Yay. <laughs> Fucking season eight. Um, please read the Pokedex entries for Drampa. Oh, hang on. Rampa, D R A M P A. That's the wound. Yeah, I can't wait to hear what it okay. does to children in the woods or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Pokemon DB. I guess that should do the trick. Pokedex entries. Okay. I mean, it doesn't look too bad. It looks kind of friendly. It doesn't look so bad. It looks kind of friendly, like like a little little dragon thing, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what does it do? Uh, 
Oh, I see. Pokédex entries. A, a specific <laughs> one or just in general? The they, worst they didn't ones, specify. probably. Kind of looks like Falcor. Okay. Uh, Look at that it, fella. It has a compassionate personality. Oh, that's good. But if it's enraged, oh, I don't know where this is going. It completely destroys its surroundings with its intense breath. Oh. Ew. Oh. Uh, I thought it was going to start off with, it has a great personality that it uses to lure orphans and children into the wood <laughs> at night and then steals their souls. Uh, let's see. If a child childhood has made friends with this bullied, drum <laughs> will fight the bully's house and burn it to the ground. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, it's always, it's always about <laughs> children. They always overreact, it's... these Pokemon. <laughs> Like the other one is much more nicer. It's like it appears in towns and places with the children. Drumpa will protect kids when they're in danger, so their moms don't have to worry. See, that sounds way friendly. It'll be like it will protect children at any any cost. cost. <laughs> oh. I want to see the Pokemon adaptation where it's like humanity dealing with all of these creatures that just exist in their world, trying to keep some semblance of a civilization cobbled together. Dude, it's like some of the Avengers where it's like they have the power to destroy the world, but they choose to be happy, fluffy, and wobbly with it around. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I hope this Oh, that's that way. good. <laughs> Anything we can do for you? It's sir? a friendly Pokemon until, up until it's angered. When that happens, it stirs up a gale and flattens everything around. <laughs> Damn. Shit's dangerous, yo. Uh, I think the writer said, just play with the idea of killing Luke, George's character. <laughs> I mean, they certainly tried to bait that it would happen, which is just, as we've said, is, is a bit weird, but, you know. Um, even Veda didn't know Luke was his son. Palpatine told him in episode 5, so how did Reva know something Veda didn't? She didn't know. I don't. I, I don't think. Know. I don't think she knew. I don't know what the fuck her motivation was, but I don't think it was that. A lot of people think it is, but that's not what the show says. I don't, I don't think. Uh, Obi Wan better call Soul prequel where each season shows old Ben for a small bit, and then most of the show is Clone Wars. <laughs> Black and white is old Ben. I mean, I think they're saying that as a serious recommendation. And to be honest with you, sure, do it. Yeah, would be better. Yeah. IMO. I think the gr the biggest flop Disney did with Star Wars was Finn. Could have had an interesting plot where a stormtrooper defected possibly had a possible force connection, but no no wave? Him. I think a lot of people agree at this point. Oh, sorry. No, I don't but know the what... Term, the term so, biggest for that, though. It, well, so it says, but no wave him being nothing more than a pointless rebel. Um, I, I mean, I think a lot of people agree at this point that, like, one of the most wasted opportunities was Finn. Yeah. What, what a waste of a great premise for a character. I think, I will say, he's been outclassed now because back then it was new characters. Now we've we've been wasting all of uh, these true. classic characters. <laughs> well, yeah, Boba Fett was a total waste. Obi-Wan is oh, probably yeah. the... Obi-Wan might be the biggest waste uh, so far, oh. I'm not sure. And like I said, they're even doing things like making me really dislike Leia when they did they didn't have to. They and I think their their intention was to make make everyone love her more. It's like, oh man, look at how look at how brilliant she was from young age, except for when she jumps off a friggin' building for no reason. Uh, but like they don't think about that part. That was just her yeah. being a kid. She's, but look at how she thinks her way around her cousins. Uh, uh -huh. Why do they know she's adopted? How about that? Um, sorry I'm a bit late with this, but the fireflies in Arcane being called Fire Lights is stupid. It is. I don't care how many different names we have for them. Those names are always made up of the attribute part and creature part. Firefly, fire bug, glow, fly, lightning bug, etc. These make sense, but Fire Light doesn't. That's like calling a ladybug a lady woman or a dragonfly a dragon wyvern. It's stupid and confusing. Hi, Rag. Hi. I'm not sure that's our a format for naming everything. There's got to be examples where fire lights would be similar to how something's named conventionally for us. But even if it wasn't, that wouldn't mean a fictional universe can't do it that way. Also, a firelight is the light of a fire, not necessarily yeah. just combining fire and light. Like it's it's a, I guess it implies to. I I always assumed that was one uh, treated as a thing. Um, it's the the light of a fire. It's like um. The, well, I think this is worse, right? You know, like, they had the red light for go and the green light for stop in Doctor Strange's world? It's like, mm. what are you saying? That's impossible? It's like, no, it's possible. I just don't see at all how that could have happened. Meanwhile, with firelight, it's like, yeah, I can see how that could happen. 
Yeah, absolutely. We call ourselves the fire lights where, you know, we light fires. Well, we sorry, wait, light. he's talking about light the bugs. A... Oh, the fireflies? So, I don't know if you remember, but there is a team of people called the firelights, but I'm assuming they took yeah. their name from the creatures that are called firelights in Arcane that are those little flying... Because those things are actual creatures, but then there's also mechanical ones that uh, Jinx has. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're saying, why would these creatures be called firelights they should, when that's not how naming conventions work in our world? Oh, it's not our world. I mean, this, this, I mean that's, that's uh, as far as I feel like I have to go with that. It's just like, yeah, they just used a different convention to name them. I think if you have a, a firefly-like creature that people would reasonably call it a firelight because they kind of glow like a flame and they produce a little light. I, it's really, it's not a not at all a stretch to me at all. It seems totally normal and reasonable. Seems Especially because they're, they're, not, they're not nuisances the way flies are, so maybe they also have flies in Arcane. A fly would be ascribed to something more annoying than the firelights. So they, they all seem pretty happy when they were around. Uh, hello from all of New Zealand. Did you know we have the longest named town in the world? I dare you to try and say it. You'll need Google and YouTube won't let me post it. Really? I thought the whales had the longest one. Hmm. Um, I'll be right back. Uno momento. See if I can consult some of my Canadian First Nations friends. See if they got anything in the tank for us. Apparently hmm. it is the North Island of New Zealand has a place named... Okay. <laughs> Tomato Waka Tangi Hanger Coat. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Sounds like you're trying to sing a corn song. Yeah, uh, it's a long name. Uh, good stuff. Uh, you could call that me trying. <laughs> in some cultures. Mm. Mola took that one personally. Yeah, we've been dethroned. I didn't know this was a thing. That's bullshit. Whale still has the best flag. <laughs> Get ragged. Not only is it absurd that Obi-Wan didn't know Anakin was still alive, but what's worse is that Reva tells him this as if she somehow knew he didn't know, when really she'd have no reason to assume he wasn't already aware. <laughs> yeah. That's that's actually a good point. I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> oh, I hate to do this, but I'm actually going to defend the show. I'm so sorry ahead of time, everybody. Oh, no. <gasps> she says that, um... She says, like, th th that he wants you or whatever, and then Obi-Wan reacts, and then she says, oh. you, didn't, you didn't know. Like, oh, she see. feels him in the Force not knowing, so she thought he did know. Ah. Don't worry, it's still shit. It's still <laughs> all awful. Wow. Marla is a disnoid. I'm sorry. Me, me, me. Best Redemption, Kenobi, Star Wars Battlefront 2, or Star Wars Fallen Order, and why? I'm not uh, familiar with any of the ones other than well, Kenobi, and it was terrible. It's not even a redemption, well, so. Fallen Order is the only one of those I, I enjoyed. Well, I, I don't think it's an amazing <laughs> game, but I, I thought it was okay. Respawn There's your answer, everyone. everyone. Cool. I didn't. Even I know really didn't the... like Battlefront Two. Has some of the worst shooting mechanics I've ever played in any FPS in, in my whole life. It was what about the story? Yeah, the it's, that... even, it's even worse. The story oh. is actually worse than any aspect of the gameplay. What about? But isn't it exciting that EA or Dice have said that they are now they don't have time for anything else like Mirror's Edge? They're uh, full time on Battlefield. Oh, I just... <laughs> by the way, Binder can I, I... stop. No one wants to play it anymore. Someone just mentioned I, I... in chat. Uh, wait, why didn't she feel him on the desert planet when she was like right around the corner? Uh, shut yeah, up. just shut up, okay? You're, <laughs> You're making this show That's look not bad. How the Force works. That's a good point. Stop that. <laughs> with Stop with those good points. Evil. Uh, does the Empire not do physicals when you start working for them? Wouldn't they see Reva's lightsaber wound and go, um, are you a young <laughs> There's no way this works. It just doesn't work. Yeah, it's, it's uh, so fucked. They know who she is, and she knows they know who she is, and then that creates a problem for how she becomes an Inquisitor. There's ways around it, but apparently they, she thought they didn't know, which is insane. I don't know, maybe she has a, a fennec iron stomach. Even then, what? though, they'd be like, oh, that's an iron stomach. Did you get stabbed in the chest with a lightsaber or something? Like, hey, no. You can make up any story at that uh, point. No. Why would I need, wait, why would I need to get, like, bionic replacements if I got stabbed with a lightsaber? That's nothing. I just walk <laughs> around, I'll be fine. Why do I waste or, or all that just money? Like, she'd be like, yeah, I would have died if it were a lightsaber. It was clearly a blaster. And they're like, 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll check that out with our record. Remember it, it, when Rogue One brought up the idea that lightsaber technology was behind the Death Star weapon? It puts a hole straight through Alderaan, but it's just fine. It's just a big canyon in the middle. <laughs> but yep. the planet just carries on being okay. <laughs> and eventually it just it just gets better. <laughs> so it's... That's it, like they're they're reckoning their own shit constantly. I don't they don't, I don't care. get how anyone don't defends. Fuck. Because each one of these writers doesn't talk to the other writers, and no, they're they, all they, they do they not. terrible. Well, I like this is the first one of the Disney Disney Plus TV shows, even even the Marvel ones, where I'm I, I'm almost convinced that there was at least one writer on staff who was intentionally coming up with bad ideas, pitching <laughs> them, seeing if they would do it. And then turn into his buddy and be like, you fucking believe they put the trench coat thing in the show, dude. Yo, you owe me <laughs> five. Yeah. Like, oh, no. <laughs> they're just like, well, no, the, the fun part's not even started yet. Let's go to Twitter and see the people defending it. Yeah. How long <laughs> until we can start calling them wrongers? Um, you know what, Rex? You go right ahead. You yeah, go right ready. Season 2 pitch. Uh, Reva kills Obi-Wan, then Weekend at Bernie's his corpse the rest of the show, setting her up as the master puppeteer in A New Hope. Uh, yeah, why not? That's gonna be my answer to all these. Fuck it, why not? Palpatine Don't get worse, right? Evolved. It can only be just as bad. Um, it's actually... If they, tr if they make it as silly as possible, people will stop taking it seriously. Which... Makes all the and then they'll be like, oh wait, wait, we gotta draw the line somewhere, and maybe they revert back to just more people head cannoning only certain parts of it, which might be the best you could do at this point. Is just trying to convince people slowly that so much of the series just didn't actually happen. It was just a crazy fever dream that you need to forget. Uh -huh. um, the Lady Reva mutilated. Wait, what? The Lady Reva mutilated was pointing out an inconsistency. The Empire doesn't have jurisdiction right. here because the Huts control the Outer Rim. Quickly, cut off your hand before the audience thinks about it. I'm uh, sure yeah, that uh, won't cause any problems <laughs> for the Inquisitors, just maiming I'm pretty sure I'm um, pretty sure I brought that up in, in the f first one. I said that... Uh, I think you did. The, yeah. they, 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 it would, it, I almost said it as, like, it'll be interesting to address it because... I like that idea. I like the idea that there's space that's more so controlled by different factions and the Empire have to respect that. Uh, but we don't get that at all. And then we even we have a character one, outwardly yeah. suggesting that that's the case and she just gets attacked. It's like, okay, never mind. Yeah. Whatever. Remember when they baited us in Boba Fett that the Huts would be involved and it was literally just to delay the timeline? That was it. Mm. And give him a fucking rancor. It really was just one big delay because they needed to fill time. And it still wasn't enough. They had to poach Mando episodes. What happened? He's, what happened? Jeez. Yeah, uh, Robert Rodriguez yeah. tackling Boba Ooh. Fett. And I remember and everyone horrible. saying, oh, it's going to be great. They're going to give him full control. And it's like, yeah. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. He's so talented. Yeah. Recently found r saltier than crate on Reddit, a subreddit dedicated to hating people who criticize Star Wars. Go on there and look up EFAP for a laugh. To be fair, they're devoted to hating people who like uh, who criticize the sequel trilogy. They <laughs> are, they're, they're created as a parody site for the rev not the reverse, but saltier than crate spelled with a C for crate is what a bunch of people created in response to the Last Jedi, and it's basically a subreddit to basically so be like. So with a crate spelt with a C as opposed to the other kind of crate spelt with a C. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. You... Are you referring to the? You mean spelt the... with an E? Are you guys okay? Do you want me to let me finish Wars? before you hey. assume nonsense? Yeah, no. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm literally go, go reading the words. I could help you. Just give me a sec. So. Salty than crate spelt with a C is the subreddit that was created for people who hated the Last Jedi, and they oh, talked all I about see. it. Okay. Obviously, the meme being "Crate's the salt." Um, but it evolved into a subreddit that mainly covers memes about the sequel trilogy and then Disney Star Wars. A lot of Disney Star Wars fans didn't like that subreddit. In fact, they hated it, and so they created "Saltier than crate" with "crate" spelt with a K, and then. 
that became a parody almost of like, look how stupid the people who hate the sequels are. And they would collect images and videos and titles. And uh, now you've got those two subreddits to choose from if you hate or love the sequel trilogy. Have fun. Um, we end up on Salty Than Crate spelt with a K a lot because we don't like Star Wars from Disney a lot of the time, as you may okay. have noticed. Um, so the way to remember it is like K for Kathleen, uh, Kathleen Kennedy. Is, there, um, a. is that is that not like really ironic, though, that you would have like, a, presumably the idea would be, ah, the people who are featured are saltier than Crate, but it's like, it's a Reddit dedicated to shitting on Not people. us, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's even, the moderators on the, the Mola subreddit have gotten to the point now where they're just like, don't just be like, look at this subreddit, I hate them. Like, just try and just, just, just post away about, you know, content and stuff, just because they... That's what they're well, that is that is definitely like a weird sort of internet subculture thing, isn't it? That it's a subreddit that's about shitting on an, another subreddit that's about <laughs> <laughs> a specific subset of Star Wars films. It's some. It's kind of like, for lack of a better term, it's kind of culture war stuff. You need to be seen as though there's a pushback. That that alone is important. Right. It needs to be known that there are sequel fans out there saying that the people who are just being loud are wrong, and that most people love the Disney Star Wars that sort of stuff. And the funny thing is, I'd be like, yeah, you're right, most people do love it, unfortunately. Mm hmm Depressing, isn't it? But, like, that doesn't change that it's really poorly written. Yeah. Where we're at, um... But the OT was poorly written, too, Muller. Ah, yeah. Bonk. Ah, that's Those true. And at that point, yeah, at that point checkmate. again, what exactly is it that you guys like about Star Wars? <laughs> you, do, you do end up wondering. You do end up wondering. Everyone keeps telling me everything you Everybody like Everybody keeps telling shit. me it sucks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dark side is the color wheel, is the a path to many decorations some knight consider unnatural. I think, I, I, I get the joke. Unfortunately, there was a couple of spelling errors in there, and that's okay. Also, hi. Please right. review your super chats before hitting enter for spelling and grammatical mistakes. They might obfuscate the point that you're trying to make. Yeah, I can try and correct them in real time, but some when I saw night, I was like, oh wait, maybe that's part of the joke. And then I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> like, <rip. laughs> but uh, yeah, it's good. Gambled stuff. on that one, Ron. Uh, Billiam has done a four hour breakdown of Lost. I really enjoyed it. Have any of you guys seen it? Have any thoughts? I'd love to see him on one day. So I've seen all of Lost. What about the rest of you? I haven't seen, I've seen anything. I've seen none. None. Yeah. Um, my review has always been, and which is a hot take even for people who hate Lost, season one and two are the only good ones. Then it goes to shit. And I used to think it was season one, two, like three, four, but I rewatched it a couple of years ago. And when I got to season three with a friend, we noticed a sharp decline in execution for characters, and we start we got so annoyed we left. Um, so, but back in the day, I was super into like seasons four. Uh, up to four, but I remember when it gets to like the last few seasons, it gets fucking insane. And I've told you guys before, say it again, they introduce time travel. And, nice. Uh, yeah, not the greatest choice. Lots but... of other stuff too. Um, yeah, but we're in game. It would be and they introduce a, a different type of time travel that's not really time travel at all in the last season, and you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's gets a little weird. Though, uh, covering the first two seasons, I'd be interested in doing on EFAP, maybe someday. Maybe EFAP TV, that could be an idea, because it is really good stuff, uh, at least EFAP I remember TV, being. that'd be nice. We'd have to get, like, our own little, like, a color palette for it to sort of differentiate it from the other ones, though. Make it look really nice. Oh, I didn't remember. I know, I was, like, referring to that thing as I was... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sidious giving Vader life advice, would you call that a... Sithcom? Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bringy's getting coffee. He would have loved that. Now, Vader, you should make sure to save 10% salary. Is that part of the Sithcom? A fun episode where they're deciding how much they're going to pay Stormtroopers. Sheev Palpiterson. You guys going to cover the boys season three? No idea. Uh, no. no. Probably not. I, I just have zero interest in it. It doesn't look like it's likely, considering we haven't checked out any of it. And the fact that I had absolutely zero intention of covering anything to do with Stranger Things, and I'm at the point where I'm like, we might be covering that, because I'm enjoying it mm. too much. I really liked Stranger Things Season 4. I'm seeing a lot of people are really liking it, even people who haven't seen any Stranger Things before, which is one of the most fascinating 
fucking elements of it, honestly. That's interesting. And they added a good villain, and that that does a lot. Because yeah. I mean, uh, the str even from Stranger Things season one, the villain was just kind of you know yeah. like an anonymous monster thing, and then they did that two uh, seasons in a row. Or, I mean, I guess the second one was like. That was a bunch of small ones, and third one is like now it's a huge big one. I think we're here. They're like now we actually have a villain who has a personality. Well, the thing goals. is, there are plenty of like <laughs> what I would call issues with the writing in the in the series, but they're getting. I can't believe I'm saying this. They're getting overshadowed by a motivated, powerful villain that has understandable mechanics. You have what? a new character, the brand new to the show, that bounces off everybody in really different ways. Um, the current characters, some of them that nobody gives a fuck about at all and the other three seasons have been given so much new material that's really strong. Dialogue is much better than it has been in the lesser seasons, I'll put it that way. And um, they've been making use of music. Uh, they've always made use of music, but I feel like it's been stronger this season than has been before. Um, and they give a lot of time to a lot of things to build it up, so... I would go as far as... Oh yeah, don't worry, people in chat, I'm already seeing examples. There are some characters that have suffered this season uh, for other ones to rise up. You know, it happens. But it just seems like the hype... I hope they end it well, because they can... Uh, they can really make Stranger Things a bigger cultural impact again if they can end this one strong and get a good season 5. Because Stranger Things kind of disappeared a little bit. Um, but yes, maybe we'll talk about it. Who knows? What are your favorite football teams? Oh, uh, no. I don't really follow. I don't know. The Kansas City Chiefs, because my parents really like them. And when they win, my parents get a tiny little... They like it, so that's good enough for me. Um, Anyone I've, about the Patriots? Never seen a football game in my life. My favorite's the Patriots. Oh, <laughs> you just <laughs> knew something, was, was, I knew something was up about you. Oh, God. For, for me, growing up, it was the Green Bay Packers, but I'm not really a huge sports guy, so I, I don't know. They might, they, they might suck now. But. Can pack these nuts? Yeah, honestly, they were just the ones I used in an NFL Blitz, so when they were Jeez in the Super Bowl, heads. I'd always be like, yeah, my team. <laughs> I, um, I just think of the Mitchell and Webb sketch with David Mitchell just saying, Next time on the football, the football will be like attacked by the New York City State Giants and the mountains of <laughs> Ipswich. It's just like a bunch of nonsense words, but he says it really aggressively, and it's just really fun. <laughs> Who will win the football? <laughs> uh, you can take it home at the end if you win, yeah. Kenobi is as powerful as Ray confirmed. I don't even know what to think about that fucking scene. I don't you know, know if he could he... accidentally do force lightning. Huh. Probably. That is pretty insane, though. <laughs> they, <laughs> they bring it up a lot as the example, but Yoda, Jedi Master Yoda, one of the strongest in the force, really was having a hard time stopping some rocks from falling on top of him and moving them to the side. And now it's just like we're we're pulling ships down from takeoff and ripping apart hulls. We're lifting half a mountain and throwing it at people mm -hmm. effortlessly. I'm like, guys, calm the fuck down. You used to be able to throw a box at people. No. Yeah. Wait oh, a day a where fucked. Jedi fucking grabs a planet and throws it at somebody. It happened. It's only a matter of time until the real super chosen one uses the force to, yeah, pull a moon onto a planet. Yeah, you're Real right. Chewy. It's only a matter of time. That's I saw a lot of people who were defending the Vader pulling the ship that's thrusting off back to the ground saying like, oh yeah, well, Starkiller did that in Force Unleashed. And it, uh, the, the thing they, they don't remember is that that's a ship that's crashing and he just kind of makes it crash more slowly and moves it away from them. He doesn't stop which is the still, thrusters. Which is better, but still insane. I was going to say, that's it, it, better, it but he does, insane, he does but turn it of, like almost yeah, one to one with his hands, which is just like, that's pretty fucking impressive yeah, you're right. it does get a little slow and star killer is I, powered up as hell like he is uh he, he's definitely overpowered especially for where he'd fit in the timeline but i can wrap my head around he's slowing a falling object much more than like this is a spaceship taking off that you're you're canceling out the entire power of its engines we don't even need like we just all i'd say is just like vader can't do that because he'd have to have done it in several instances where he had the chance to and didn't in the ot i'm sorry it's locked off you're not allowed Put it down. Mm -hmm. uh, you should have thrown Walk the boulder me. from Shrek's swamp. That would have instantly won the battle. 
That is a nice boulder. Yeah. That is a real nice boulder. Also, I watched Shrek the other day. Pretty sure Donkey took out more knights than Shrek in the Duloc arena fight. High rags. Yeah, uh, maybe, is. but I I don't know if maybe it was he was set up for success by Shrek, you know? Yeah. Uh, but they make a great team. You know? Opinions on the boys season three and recent episode. We have not watched it. I've seen it. I was watching the last scene and thought, well, Fringy's wrong again. Then it happened. I laughed so hard. Can't wait to see you Dumbo's reactions. Mm -hmm. They're on the way. Uh, I think you guys will like the mini. It's, it's getting cooked. It's I'm getting excited cooked to see it. Also, play DDLC too. And hi, CJ. Glad you're back. He would appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Digimon of the day is Leomon. All right. It actually sounds like a familiar one. I think. He's like a... Leomon. You got a good picture. Yeah, I remember that fella. Fella. From back as a as a little child boy. Dude, if this guy could like just straight up Fuck. straight up talk to you, you would start to be like, Oh, um, are you happy being my like controlled pet like creature? He's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Like, are you really in control with that guy? Like I don't remember hmm. the rules for Digimon. Are they like <laughs> Are they the same as Pokemon or is it different, like in terms of They're different. They are they creatures that are like alive or are they just sort of I thought they're digital creatures, like they don't exist in the real world, right? You have to go into like a computer, the digi world. Yeah, they have like their own universe, them, right? things going on and stuff. Because that makes sense honestly, a little bit more ethical. <laughs> that's crazy. I would be concerned about leaving that thing at home alone with my wife. <laughs> oh no. Why, you think it's going to fuck your wife? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know that <laughs> she'd be able to handsome? stop it if it wanted it's, to. <laughs> look at it. It's got, it's shirtless. It's got all those fucking muscles on it. Oh. I don't want that, leaving that alone around my wife. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, do your objective standards only apply to Western storytelling, or would you say that they can apply universally to every movie ever made? Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Find me a story that doesn't adhere to the realities of cause and effect. I don't know that there's yeah, one that does. I don't think any culture is uh, separate from those. It seems pretty basal <laughs> to the nature of the universe. Yep, and it's kind of cool, actually, because like, some of the stuff... You see from like foreign countries in terms of, well, it's like Train to Busan. What I have to love and appreciate about that is how much loads of it follows cause and effect. And it's just like satisfying, I guess, in some ways that some of the high scoring things from completely different cultures end up being for the same reason that I think the strongest stories are the strongest stories. Yeah. Um, hi, Rags and friends. Hi. Hello. Hello. What is your favorite story in a video game? For me, it is either Red Dead Redemption 2 or Final Fantasy XIV. Great, I've From got a me. stock answer There's prepared. There's plenty I like, but yeah, we, we, like ourselves some, we like ourselves some Soma. We really, really do. The There's more some... I dug into that game's story for the videos, the more I was like, this is so fucking cool. And it's got huge potential for like a TV, TV show. Um, the Rise and Fall sort of thing, without saying any more. It's kind of um, Bioshocky in that way, which is another one of my favorite sort of game stories. If I was to say, also that. on my list, yeah. not necessarily because I think it's the best written one ever, but I fucking love it. It appeals to me very it's much. Executed so. really well, yeah. Got a good sense of progression as things ramp up. There's a lot of good stuff in you know the Mass Effect series, and mm -hmm. uh, there's some good stuff. In is the, the question best video game narratives or favorite? Your, your favorite story in a favorite. video game. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, Hmm. No, you go for it, because I'm, I'm thinking. Well, I think me and Rags are done now, sort of. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I've been trying to narrow mine down since I heard the question, but I don't know. I'd, I'd probably go with like Metal Gear Solid 3 if I had to pick one, but that might be because I like it for the same reason I like a lot of movies. Like It's, it's just a very exciting, kind of interesting story with characters that are interesting with some cool twists, but there's definitely stories that are executed better. So, I don't know. Like it's, uh, Soma, I think, actually would be a pretty good answer, though. I don't know that I would have picked it had you guys not brought it up. It kind of slips mm. under the radar for a lot of people. More people need to have played it. That's the thing. Yeah, it's almost I, great. I, I think because if, if you explain what Soma is to them and you just say, ah, it's a game where you're I don't kind of at this uh, deep seas. Uh, <laughs> well, no, no, but I, no I, I meant that like, I wasn't going to explain the plot. I was going to say that you're, you're walking around like a, a research base under the, under the ocean and 
some shit's chasing you and you've already you have said to too much. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I, I thought, well, we weren't, I mean, we, weren't we, we should have been I, more I, subtle with our noises, Mahler. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wasn't going to. I don't know what you thought. Do we any, I wasn't going to talk about the reveals. Like that her, is literally her, a reveal. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I guess. I, well, Shut up! I'm trying to think of what it says on the Steam page. Just Stop say you, saying words. Just say okay. you think it's neat. There you go. It's neat. It's a neat game. You should play Soma. After I play it, you'll be able to speak freely. <laughs> You're currently um, chained up in the world of spoilers. Oh, man. It's actually tough, because as I sit here, it's like, what's my favorite? Favorite is, uh, that's a tough one. Is. Um, I'm just trying to pull up all like the my steam games but in order but then it's just gonna be what me scrolling through steam before i just like oh yeah that was pretty cool yeah i like that one um hmm i'm not gonna read it but i think the steam summary spoils more well, I'll, I'll make sure not to read the steam summary in that case i was gonna say i don't know when the last time i read a steam summary of a game's narrative was it's well, like, no, no, like they, yeah, the blurb the on the steam page. Oh, don't put it on a barbecue. Um, the problem is I could just pick a list of games that have really cool stories that I like, but I don't know what I would pick as my favorite. And the discussion would also be as well a matter of um, something that I think is fun to think about is how video games, the different methods that they can use to convey their stories. They can do the conventional cutscenes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But then there's also environmental storytelling in like stealth games or in Metroid Prime, mm -hmm. um, branching paths, like kind of what they tried to do with Mass Effect to some extent. Um, a Black lot Ops of cool 2. stuff in indie games. Well, <laughs> I, I, I mean, that, that did do it, but I don't know how. Katana Zero was cool in terms of, because I see it here on my list, that had a cool story and it was presented yeah. in a way that was really interesting. Um. Uh, I mean, I I like the narrative in a lot of Grand Theft Auto games, but I think a lot of that is much more so that I enjoy the dialogue a lot in those yeah. games, more so than the, the plot itself. The plot's pretty straightforward a lot of the time. Um, I like the story in Deus Ex. Uh, I, I like, um... I mean... Look, I like the story in The Last of Us. I think I think it's I think it's good. That's that's one that I came to appreciate more after two came out. It's like, you know what? One's actually got some pretty cool stuff. Funny that this follows when a few hours earlier it's like that game is so overrated. But you know what? It has a pretty neat story. Things can be good and overrated. Mechanically yes, overrated. Can. The story is mechanically probably overrated. overrated, but not not too hard. Not significantly so. Um I don't know why I'm struggling so much, because there's, there's like a whole bunch, it's just that I can't pick one, really. Uh, I like the story in Infamous, I mentioned that before. Um, Alright, what's your snap replay, decision actually. if someone put a gun to your head and the time was going from 5 to 0 and you have to make, you have to say 1? My favorite video game narrative. It doesn't have to be true, but what would you say? It should be true if um, you can do that. Well, what I will say is that no video game has, up. uh... Yeah, you've run out of time. Too bad. <laughs> it's hilarious if we give him that ultimate. I, I, that was I, the point I, of it. Yeah. The guy holding the fucking the gun. I know, it's the, actually... I know it's the point, but I the caveat would be because I, I <laughs> you frankly, die if you I, don't decide. Yeah, I couldn't tell you a whole lot about the narrative itself, but Ori and the Will of the Wisps uh, gets me yeah. at a certain point every time. There's this one part that gets me every single time, and yeah. Ori in the Blind Forest. There's one part that gets me every single time, like without fail. Um, I, I know both of, of the parts you're referring I, yeah, to. In those yeah, games. exactly. <laughs> I figure you do. And it's because I, I couldn't tell you a whole lot about the narrative of those games really in full. I like them, but I guess the fact that they managed to get that response out of me says a lot about what they're achieving. More With so basically through no, no dialogue to yeah. a side scroller. <laughs> like they, they do a really good job of just visually portraying their story. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, that's that's one of those fun things. What can you achieve with no dialogue or minimal dialogue? Or minimal dialogue, yeah. Yeah. Portal 2's got some great writing as well. All right, there's a whole bunch of answers. So oh, Metal was last, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, for me, it's uh, God of War 2018. I love that story. Yeah. Uh, spe especially, the, I said it multiple times, because it works if you haven't played the other God of Wars. 
but it does so much more if you play them and you're like aware of the whole uh, story of Kratos and then when a certain thing happens, when you need to get something and then I'm, I'm just being vague so for some people who haven't played it, uh, just just hits all the all the good fan service feels, but it's also very important to the, the overall story in, as well. That game and just the all thing. the dialogue in that game is fucking amazing. Like, it's really it's on, good dialogue. It's on uh, Steam now, too. Really good port. It is. I haven't um, even bought it on Steam yet because I just recently replayed it on Stream. <laughs> and it's like, oh, by the way, it's come out on Steam now. It's like, oh, okay. I'm looking forward I, to streaming I that it. again. Yeah, me I too. played it on the Give Me the God of War difficulty, and it was unbelievably difficult, but because it's a Sony game, you don't get a specific achievement for playing it on the highest difficulty. Cause they, they want <laughs> oh, the really? Like, uh, well, most of uh, Sony games, I think since about uh, 2017, maybe 2016, ah, they started okay. just totally eliminating difficulty trophies to the first party games. That's interesting. So, like, you, say, you can get the definitely ones for like uncharted 2 because i remember playing that mm -hmm. on a uh, crushing difficulty all of the uncharted games i think yeah yeah there I mean, is those were like God the standard War. achievements Not... anyways for most parts like oh I, I can get achievements for just playing all the difficulties or Easy, playing normal, the hardest hard, one immediately yeah. or whatever well there's mm -hmm. a big kind of subculture around collecting platinum trophies so i think they wanted oh, yeah. to make it so that people could play on easy mode and still get a platinum trophy which i think kind of defeats the purpose of I was about like a to trophy say exactly for that, accomplishment. Yeah. It's like, but I don't know. There's a these people tend to use that trophy as more of a statement of their fandom than a a show of an accomplishment. I see. Mm. I got the platinum. I, I like it that much. It's like, oh, or Do, did um, you <laughs> did you find the challenges engaging? To piggyback on what Matt was saying a little bit as well is uh, that was a game that story. Uh, like had me convinced that it did so well on its own that I was like, you know what? I don't even need your, your references to the other three games. I'll take your tiny little indications that maybe, it, you know, like that that actually happened. I don't even know. But then when you get to like the third act, it totally makes it over that yes, we are a sequel to those games, and it's yeah. done yeah. so fucking well. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, like as a friend of mine did compare, and they were like to the Obi Wan show. They were like, isn't it interesting how like him activating that lightsaber should probably be treated with a pretty significant moment, and it's just not at all. It's like the show didn't no, even know yeah. that it matters. Blink and you'd miss it. He does it, then he runs away. It's like, oh, cool. Yay. <laughs> Epic. Um, what up, my N-words? Horizon Zero Dawn is coming to PC. Wait, what's going on? M <laughs> Mola? What year is it? Ooh. Help me. I have a family. Mola, <laughs> please. Uh, <laughs> hope you're okay. But yeah, a lot of Thorny games. PlayStation games. PC. Yeah. Um, Man, there's probably a lot of s salty console boys. Yes, out there. there are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Sony <laughs> there are. Sony's are there. The Sony, though, they it's, are not happy. The era, the era is over. Sony has now recognized what Microsoft actually yeah. aptly recognized some years ago, which is that there's even a if lot it was of money too late. <laughs> Well, it took I, them I, too I, long, it, but even they eventually were like, "Oh yeah, we like money, don't we?" Yeah. For Tonga and Oh No, it's Alex are like paying off their mortgages right now because of the <laughs> yeah, yeah. boys. <laughs> I'm sure for Tonga's getting a lot of good memes out of uh, out of all this. Yeah. Uh, the first land animal was the frongoloid. <laughs> I. You know what? I don't. I don't know if you're correct about that. <laughs> That'd be amazing. If it was. <laughs> Jeez, you're old. <laughs> yeah. What, that would be 400 an million years old? God damn. Yeah. Neat. What, that I'm an eldritch god? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of, of uh, life, well, not the beginning of life on Earth, but not even the beginning of complex life on Earth, but close to it. Now I answer he doesn't is... consider himself the beginning of complex life, you heard it here. That must be, uh, <laughs> that must be scary for that little critter going on land. It's like, what is this? <laughs> what Air? the fuck? <laughs> No, there's nothing here, dude. It, the 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 knowledge that if you go on land, there's like nothing there. There's no yeah. other living things here. It's like, what do I do? Here. What do I do now? It's like I don't... Yeah. our ancestors That's... were amphibious, but they weren't amphibians like modern amphibians. Those are lis amphibians. I think I read that one before. I figured that would be the case. That like a lot of the animal um. I get what what are they called the like canine Bionics? one like yeah something like that let me let me look it up amphibian whatever that 
yeah, I I would imagine that they weren't exactly the same. Um, class. That's the one I was thinking. Yeah, class. Yeah, I figure that's the case. This is the order, by the way, for anybody curious. Life, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. That was one off. I remember the that The hierarchy, cool. <laughs> a biological classification, eight major taxonomic ranks. Because, like, genus is, uh, so, like, canid is genus, right? Or, no, wait. Hell or yeah, it's the best is, one. Canid yeah. is, is family, right? And then canine is, is hold on. I must know. Canada. Did you know that, um... Did you know that uh the name for Dingo is Canis Dingo? That's that's their that's their official name. Canis Dingo. Yes. I like Wait, it. so is Dingo a Latin word? Uh I don't know if it's a Latin word, but that's what they're called. Huh. Um, as opposed to Canis Lupus, the good old grey wolf. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I learned that proper from Fantastic Mr. Fox. When he's like Canis Lupus, Volpus Volpus. <laughs> That's a good movie. I like yeah, that. It's movie. Wes Anderson, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Isn't it? Nice symmetrical shots. Can he hold the frame? He can hold the frame. He does hold the frame. He very oh much holds the nice. frame. I'm kind of very few directors even are aware of. <clears throat> he can get away but... with holding it longer than most. Mm-hmm. So Imagine you have a child. Child says, Daddy, no. I love TFA. Or TLJ, or ROS, or Mando, or Boba, or Kenobi. Can we watch it pretty, please? What do you do? Pick an age and pick an answer. How what do I do I if know. they ask specifically to watch The Last Jedi? If they're my kid, I'm fine with it. It's fine. Yeah, let yeah. watch it. <laughs> I'll watch whatever they want, because, you know, whatever makes them happy. Just I'll just be just like, I hope they're aware I hate it and that we can make memes out of it. And when they're 30, make fun of them for when they were a stupid little kid who liked bad things. Yeah, hey, you like Star right. Wars, too. When you say 30, I'd, I'd do it that moment. <laughs> I'd start establishing a pattern of, you know, reward and punishment. The punishment being humiliation at the hands of your parents. Uh, Fingold, since it sounds like we played basically the same games growing up, what are your favorite pieces of music from the original Ratchet and Clank trilogy? So many certified Ooh. bangers to pick from. That's a good question. Um, the 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 Velden track in um in Ratchet and Clank One is pretty cool. It's like a cool way to start, I guess. When you think about the 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 bangingest bangers, though, um, the the one on Oxen was. Oh wait, no. Or am, I, or am I mixing them up? No, it's it's Orkson, right? They uh, that's the planet where um. No, sorry, I'm I'm mixing them up in my head now. Um, I remember that um, I really like Novalis. That one was really cool. Um, I like the Iridia track uh as well. That one's pretty cool. The the like the main one. No, not Orkson. It was um, Quartu. Quartu had a had a really cool uh track, and then um. I guess that's enough from one. Like Ratchet and Clank Two, um, the the weapons manufacturing um, uh, weapons manufacturing place where you could go on the tours, where like the robot was taking the robots on the tours. That one had a really cool track. Um, Silver City, that's a very easy one to pick. Silver City has really cool music. Um, Ratchet and Clank Three has a lot more uh, orchestral ones, but I really like a lot of the um, stuff in Ratchet and Clank Three. Um, Vel uh, um, Zelda and Starport's a really cool one. That one's super interesting because it's got a very unconventional uh, time signature. It's like eleven eight for a good portion of it, and then it goes to four four, then it jumps back to eleven eight. There's a lot of unconventional um, uh, time signatures in Ratchet and Clank music. A lot of five four. Um, I guess three four is not super unconventional, but like there's three four. Not all yeah, it's um. And if we're going to extend past it, Deadlocked has an awesome soundtrack. Um, the Marauder uh, tournament, super cool. Um, the music when you fight Vox, the final battle music is really cool. And um, I think it's the Ghost Station one. That one's super fun as well. Um, and uh, I liked um, the Tower of Power. I think it was like the Avenger tournament. Climbing the Tower of Power is really cool. Um, yeah, there's a lot of great tracks, uh, in the PlayStation ones. Um, it definitely feels like with those games, 
you can see a sort of change in them. Like Ratchet and Clank One is very much it, Ratchet and Clank One. I think you'd describe it as banger, and two and three are definitely going for an epic tone, which I like as well. And then um, Deadlocked is Edge, just concentrated Edge. So yeah, hopefully banger that's epic then Edge. edge. Yep. Deadlock's the one that's like an arena shooter, right? Yeah, Deadlocked is essentially Ratchet and Clank get uh put abducted and forced into a um gladiator competition called Dread Zone. So it's like yeah. super uh combat focused compared to the other games, which were much more um definitely like Ratchet and Clank one is is probably as close as to pure platformer as the series got. Two and three are more of like hybrid. And then um Deadlocked was like just action oriented. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't played too much of the series, but I've enjoyed them. I always found the writing was uh, pretty funny for the most part. Yeah, it's um, it's it's got cool satire, lots of lots of funny lines and jokes, and a lot of things that they managed to sneak past the censors that were really funny as well. Like, yeah, like they, some pretty edgy jokes. <laughs> yeah, they, your kid might not get this, but you will. Type jokes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, kind of, but even a bit edgier than like anything that Pixar would try to uh try to get in. Well, the, is it the third game is called Up Your Arsenal? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> like, it's very cheeky. Have you lads watched cheeky. Michael? Up Your Arsenal is cheeky. That was unintentional. But Anyway, good. continue. Have you lads watched Michael Clayton starring George Clooney? It's Tony Gilroy's writing and directing debut, and it's one of his best underrated films. One of the best underrated films. I have not. Neither have I. No, I have not seen it. Yay. Um, Justice Dankula, best Twitter meme. I've I've seen some of the stuff he's put out. It's funny. Rather amusing. If anyone's seen it, thoughts on the TV show Psych. I enjoy the hell out of it, but need to ignore the insane luck. I can appreciate it for the comedy. I don't even know if I've heard of it. Really? You haven't? Psych. The TV show? Uh, I have not seen it, no. I've I've I hear a lot of good things about it, uh, but it I have new? not seen it. No, it's not. Well, alrighty. My family's starting to realize that the characters in these shows are trash. Unfortunately, they still think the <laughs> fights are great. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's well, fine. I mean, well, a friend of yeah, a friend of mine was don't despair. So you might be adopted. Hmm. <laughs> A friend of mine was trying to make the case to me the other day. It's like, yeah, well, I kind of like these shows the way I like Transformers movies and stuff. Like, I don't care about the characters or the story or anything. I just like seeing big robots fight. And I'm like, but was that always what you thought of Star Wars? Do you also, it's not that? much of is that. It, really? Is it not? Is that what you get the from these shows? Is shit. Yeah, like, I don't think so. Well, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even have tackled that point <clears> if I wasn't just like, but it, it doesn't, is it not sad to you that now you're putting star wars in the same camp as like michael bay transformers movie that they're equivalent to you and that's that's fine mm-hmm. I, I don't know yeah. like I, i'm well, i'm bothered by that i would also say to the guy like who likes to transform as michael bay ones wouldn't it be cooler if like they had cool stories yeah and- yeah that'd be <laughs> nice so what if, what if we stripped out all of sam witwicky's parents just like cut their scenes out entirely the humans and just have it all be an animated film on cybertron that'd be cool yeah in California, bees are now classified as fish, also high rags. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I'm pretty really? sure that's the case because it expanded rights that needed to go to bees that they couldn't find any other way of doing it. <laughs> that's something to do uh, with. Yeah, apparently California bees can legally be fish and have the same protections a court has ruled. Yeah. Well, Under why specific don't they just... But they just make Why don't specific just give rules the fish for those rights? Yeah, <laughs> like oh, sorry, not fish. I bees, guarantee yeah. you, it's because of the way law works. That's probably the fastest and most efficient way oh. to get the rights. So there's a there's a California Endangered in Species Act, and the ruling found that they could be considered fish under that. So this is what apparently this was it. The issue presented here is whether the bumblebee, a terrestrial invertebrate, falls within the definition of fish as that term is used in the definitions of endangered species in section uh, 2062, threatened species in section 2067, uh, and candidate species, uh, species being considered for listing as endangered or threatened species in section 2068 of the Act. Okay, so it's, it seems like just technicalities and stuff. Well, yeah, and if it's, if it's done in order to, to benefit a 
endangered species, then yeah, I'm all for it. That's fine with me, yeah. If we get to yeah. protect the bumblebee. I'm pretty sure I just watched a Kurz Kazakh video recently about how bumblebee populations are declining in North America and Europe. Yeah, I think there was a Black Mirror episode where they were trying to replace the bumblebees with like little robot bees and then that oh, obviously boy. creates a, an apocalypse because why wouldn't it? The robot, the robot bee queen figured out like what if I <laughs> leverage my power in numbers <laughs> to <laughs> take over the world? It's like bee movie but with robots. We should watch bee movie for EFAP movies. <laughs> Mola, what's the song you used in your Game of Thrones video? You know, the one, there comes a time in all forms of media consumption where you're so utterly bewildered. Thinking of using it for my own video? Uh, also, high rags. Hello. Here's the problem. I do not remember at all what I would have used, and I assumed I would have... Um, I think I remember. I think you told me about it. Was it um Westworld? No. Oh. That is in my TFA video. Oh, sorry. Mixed wires. Game, Game of Thrones one is a while ago now, and I know what part they're talking about, because there comes a time in all forms of media that line's not in my uh, TFA ones. My I heard Westworld one. Season 4 is coming out, and I was like, I didn't even know they made a Season 3 of Westworld. It is coming out, yeah. Hey, maybe it'll be like Stranger yeah. Things and be good. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. yeah, I'd have to go and check, and even then I'm not going to be able to tell you the name of the song. I remember looking for, like, a piano, the uh, copyright-free piano that captured the tone I was going for. That's kind of what I went with. Um, so I'm afraid I won't be able to direct you to it. There should be some way for you to be able to find out if you take the snippet and then put it into some, like, website it might be able to tell you. I don't know. So to clarify, no Stranger Things questions? Uh, no. But it, 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 yeah, sorry if we didn't make that clear. The idea will be save it for, um, at least until the season finishes anyway, but it may be spoilery because, well, Fringy's going through it, and who else? Some people here might end up going through it. It's unclear as of now. So, uh, just give it time, amusing. but then go right ahead. Quite amusing that I didn't... I haven't seen seasons two and three, and apparently it doesn't matter. <laughs> so... Some people will tell you it does. I'm telling you, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fine. Scotus, if you strike me down, I shall become even more mostly peaceful than you could possibly imagine. Roe v. Wade Kenobi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Roe v. Wade Kenobi. <laughs> Roe v. Wade Kenobi. Uh, need to rant. Not only did Vader leave Reaver alive like an idiot, but they left her with her lightsaber and no guards. Empire tracks mm -hmm. lightsaber parts. D dude is so fucking dumb that we didn't even talk about the fact that they just, like, like that lightsaber is worth a shit ton of money and valuable resource. It's an Inquisitor item. Why the fuck are you leaving her with it? What's wrong with you? But whatever, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I look, find I, out I, that it, it was... Pretty... It's funny to think that rage is a powerful motivator, so powerful it kept me alive. All right, you, with a similar wound, we shall leave you after betraying <laughs> you. I'm sure nothing bad will come of this. They literally established yeah. that she's vengeful against them specifically before they even did this to her. Yeah, and gave her the exact same geniuses. wound that he survived. I still can't believe that, that like, she got stabbed in the gut twice and lived. Qui-Gon got stabbed once and died. <laughs> like, I'm serious, man. Like, if we were making the story together, we would flag up times where it's like, well, no, she's going to have to die in this scene. And then you'd be like, yeah, but we want to have that payoff later. It's like, all right, so we have to figure this out. While they would be like, wouldn't they kill her in this scene? It's like, yeah, but we need her later, so they don't. So they don't, yeah. Simple it's as like, that. It's like, you Move understand on. that my raising the question means that I probably need a better answer <laughs> than that? They're, no, they're probably fine. just gonna, on the Reva show, just have it be like, oh, it was Darth Vader's plan all along was to leave her alive so that she could lead them to blank. Yep. Throw anything in blank, it doesn't matter. Uh, Kenobi, don't be embarrassed. It's only nature taking its course. You have no choices to make. Reva, nothing to answer for. You can die with a clear conscience. I'm sure, like, it, I don't know what she's going to be up to, but it wouldn't surprise me if they make her do some incredibly important and good things in the Star Wars like universe. You know, uh, what? She, I wouldn't be surprised if the show happens. She was the one that destroyed the Death Star in Return of the Jedi, actually. As it turns out, she she went out there, flew out there with her force powers and cut the hole in the, in the Death Star that they needed to blow it up. Like when Vader throws the Emperor down the hole before he explodes, she has a boss fight with him she and kills him. 
And then we're yeah, like, yeah, like but he it, comes back it, anyway. And then they're like, yeah, but she was the one that like, killed him. So. Fighting the Balrog as well as they're descending a crazy <laughs> mid air duel. I can't wait for when we're along far enough in this stupid timeline where they just start retconning their own characters' achievements with their new characters. Like, you know, it wasn't Ray that defeated Palpatine, it was actually Reva. Like, they, I mean, it's because it all needs fuel. They need, they're, they're running out of the old fuel. And the only thing they have left now is what they've created. And It's well, like a snake eating it, itself. But here's the thing, I think you give it time, some people will come around and be like, you know what, those sequels were actually pretty innovative and bold. I think you'll find, <laughs> not as many people as I think have come around on the, the, the prequels, but I think they'll be there. Because, yeah, what all yeah, they I'm have sure left to cannibalize? That, oh, they're hey. going to expend everything. That's kind of a new feature. I think that's the first time everyone's ever done it, but uh, someone gifted 10 memberships. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Which is, yeah, a whole bunch Low of people can use those Wait. Chungus emotes. Gifted 10 oh. Mahler members. So how do, gifted 10 Mahler, so what does that mean? You kind of like gifting is, um, subs. Oh, so 10 people got... Remember, $5 oh, wow, membership. ripping up the Twitch again. Of that, guy. that is the yeah. stuff they said. But they, remember, YouTube have correctly <laughs> ripped off Twitch. Twitch failed yeah, to rip off YouTube. Like, they're supposed to rip off what YouTube does better, but they haven't yet. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Where are we? What a Chad. Hey guys, I'm relatively new to the channel, but I've been really enjoying the content. EFAP is the only podcast I like, and that's definitely because of you all. You guys are seriously well, great to listen to. Aww. Oh, thanks. That's good. Yeah, that's I like nice. that. When they, I like your podcast, and it's definitely because of you guys. It's like, oh, good. <laughs> good. It's well, good. Rags, we've been made aware that there are plenty of shows online that just play other people's content. <laughs> so, oh. I really See, that's love our your problem. Show. We, we could have just done that. That would have been so much easier. Would have been way easier, but yeah, we, we fucked up. We other people shit let's get we're moving to twitch regardless of what Mahler just said about twitch and youtube we're going to twitch and we're just gonna steal other people's shit no steal we will content. say whoa every once in a while or wow yeah and i'll eat food off camera i'll eat wow. food yeah You'll that's, hear what I every day. No, that's how i do it the crazy thing is like they would probably, if they didn't get enough pushback, be like, all right, 101, starting up as a React YouTuber, go to Google Hell's Kitchen, find a way to stream it. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? what? What's happening? And make sure to have some food to make it even harder to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also have tits. And the second anyone complains, say, what do you want me to do? Die. Die. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? What am I supposed to do? Die? Weird. Art. I don't know. Uh. Rags, are you, yeah. are you aware of the uh, the drama with Hassan and XQC? <laughs> no, I. So XQC is that other loser streamer, right? Oh, uh, he's he's he uh, steals the most with the least amount of give a shit out of everybody. Okay, <laughs> that's what that's what I know him from. Yeah, yeah, he was in that uh, Dark Viper video. He's popular on the platform, and he decided to do a tier listing of uh, other Twitch streamers. Um, he put he put Hassan in B tier. B tier? Uh, no, he's put mm. him in C tier, didn't he? Oh, no, C tier. C -tier. All right, well, so the important part is whatever tier he was put in, Destiny got put in A tier. A -tier. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that really upset him a lot. So much so that he was talking about how, like, I can't remember exactly the things he said, but he was so mad. He went, he went like, a bit scorched. They call him, like, because I would imagine when Hassan gets in that mood, he like starts like bringing out nationalities <laughs> and ethnic groups and stuff. <laughs> he's got some opinions. No, on Hassan that. is he doesn't like morally superior to all of us. So. Yeah, I, I can believe it. Destiny is definitely up there. He is a high tier streamer. Well, it, it really upset Hassan, and yeah, he said some stuff. Um, but he <laughs> he did. He, he then like went on to F say like, I don't, care, "I don't care, I don't care, I don't care," and everyone's like, uh -huh. it, it, it's, "You know what? Uh, when you say it for the fiftieth time, I'll be convinced." <laughs> it's, yeah, it's something I notice a lot. People who don't care say that they don't. People who do care, care say they don't care a lot. You know what? It just I happens. think I like the example. I don't care about lacrosse. Even oh, though I just mentioned that's it. the you know, Canadian yeah. national. You, you, sport. If you keep using that example, we'll start to wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really not care? What's what's another obscure sport? What's what a, a, a question? Water polo. Yeah, I don't care about water polo. Lacrosse lacrosse is legit pretty big in Canada, to be fair. Well, that's what but, <laughs> but that's I'm indifferent to it, I guess. It, I'm it's not, probably it's probably like the I'm way cricket. 
cricket is in the UK and Australia, I guess. Like, well, in Australia, they like... call it crike it. Crike oh, really? it. Yeah. That, that's no, that's Racism. not true, right? <laughs> that's not true. That's no. <laughs> it's a no right there. It's <laughs> a no for me. Some people, curl, a lot of people are bringing up curling, and that was kind of, that was going to be my second one to bring up, is that it's obscure, but it's not like you, you tell people it's the one where they where they scrub in front of the big stone, you know, thingies. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Oh yeah, that one. Like everyone knows of it, but they don't. When you first ever see it, it looks funny. On your mind. Yeah. yeah, but then you kind of like watch it, and you, you see understand. that they're trying to yeah. aim it and trying to knock the other people. I'm sure that's an incredibly stones. difficult sport to play. Mm -hmm. um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for curlers. Is it cur curlers, I suppose? Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, one of the one things I, uh, I remember when I, I, cause when I briefed, there was a Winter Olympics earlier this year, right? Um, In the I China, so. right? And I, I think I caught them doing, uh, it's, it's bobsledding, I think. Or are there different variations of bobsledding depending on how many people are in the, uh, in the uh, um, toboggan? I two think? men, four men, and the single person is luge. Okay, from the luge, big that was it. Team. I was watching it, and I think uh, as I was watching it, I was wondering, like, what does it mean to be good at this? Not not as, like, an insult, like, genuinely, I, I, I didn't quite... It wasn't immediately fastest, obvious to me. Well, I guess what I mean is how how does one achieve speed by, uh, like, what how are the does techniques... does one achieve speed? It, it's, uh, well, it's the cornering. It's... You're, you're leaning your weight around the the turns yeah, and the yeah. person has yeah, so tables they it's pull a, on the you've got a you you got everyone pushing at the beginning and then there's the person steering and they want every it's a it's an aspect of everyone needs to shift their weight on the turns right. and the driver has to avoid hitting the edges which will slow you down I, okay i was i just found it interesting because with a lot of sports there's a lot more trans it's it's a lot more apparent like the nature of the skill that's at play like it's more visible you know, like the guy who runs fastest, the fastest runner, or um, the guy who lands like the most shots in a particular sport. Whereas with that one, I found it interesting because it's not as clear just by watching. It's always clear. Whoever does it fastest. Well, sure, they're the best. But I, I guess what I mean is the method by which they achieve that um, isn't as mm -hmm. clear as you see with other sports. Just, just interesting is all. Like, and, and I guess they probably arrange themselves by weight. Like, you want to have the heaviest people in front, I imagine. Heavy. I watched Cool Runnings. I just don't remember enough about the specifics of the uh, the bobsledding <laughs> stuff. I just kind of wonder if you want to have the heaviest people in front or have more of an even weight to keep it like all the ice. blades on the ice at the same time. I I would assume that that wouldn't be much of a problem in terms of weight differential. But I think steering wise, would it wouldn't it be easier to steer if most of your weight was in the front where the where you actually have the steering blades. Yeah, um, I assume I'm not sure. I might have it backwards, but uh, I would imagine that's how that that would make it easier. Uh, let me I'm check saying, Bob. I kind of want to look rate. up the physics of bobsledding. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I want to read about it now. Like if there's a book that's about bobsleds. Uh, so the heavier the bobsled, the faster it will ultimately go. However, you ideally want the actual bobsled itself to be lighter because that makes it easier to push. Are you near a bottle or a cup? Oh, when I turned my head there, it <laughs> might have just been hitting the rim of this mug just the right way because I was turning towards my other monitor while I was reading that. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Spooky. Oh. I fell down a well. Fraj on Metal Commander Efab Drachen Lord Hi Rags. Hello. Metal, your, I mean, your people have spoken. I Heil. Know. I'm back. Or whoever they say. That's how that's how you say hello in German, right? Heil. Drachen Lord no, is shut up. Dragon Lord, right? <laughs> I, I go away for two seconds. What is happening? Nothing. Liar. Rajan Middle Commander Efab Drachen Lord. Ew, no. Oh, all right. <laughs> that's like an infamous figure and an internet figure. And in, in I know Dragon Lord is. I don't know if that sentence oh. means something. Oh, it's just Frage's question. So question at Metal 
Medal, so it was probably DDL. I think I saw that earlier. Yeah. I think it's just like he always said, like Medal or something. I don't know. Medal's got that BGC. I don't actually know what's going on with him now. I don't know if he actually had to go to prison or something. Oh, I don't know. I, I actually would, don't know. Why would he go to prison? What did he do? I, I, I think it's just he sh- fire warning shot because he because he did dox himself at some point. So people kept coming to his house or something. Uh, so I don't know if he just moved finally. I I just know the the <clears throat> the community of the city he lived in. They throw money threw money together and bought that house and flattened it to earth because people Jeez, were... he was that infamous the town banded together like something <laughs> to I, buy the I know property. about uh, that story was that there was some Freddy sort Krueger? of like local german sort of um it was some kind of event and um for the event it was October organized first. now it was something else but like it was it was some event that a lot of people attend one. and the the plan was to have it in front of his house and the police, oh, no. the police, the police locked down the town so that nobody could get in to prevent right, that from right, happening. Yeah. So, like, I'm pretty sure that it's just like his whole story has just caused a lot of problems for the German government of just like having to deal with <laughs> this all man the, is a the threat stuff to the that German. happened. Yeah, I don't know if he, he, that, he. I think he just had to move out at some point because he couldn't afford it anymore or something. Uh, and the town well, was like, Dank okay, people. Uh, People need to stop uh, coming to this place, so they just flattened the whole damn thing. Apparently, it, it, like Count Dankula made a couple of videos on Dragon Ball. Yeah, Lord I think that two. Are, like, the, yeah. Make the summary. one or two. Yeah, I think he's made two because there were yeah. there was new developments even after. His, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. First one. Breaking it, news. Um, we will get a part three because apparently lots of stuff still happened after that. So there you go. Do you guys remember the montage in Multiverse of Madness where? They're talking to Mordo for the first time in the alternate universe. Ah, uh, yes. And it's yeah. very 90s. Um, someone's got a tweet saying, What in the living hell is this? The look, it looks like a 90s horror film, just the CGI is a bit advanced. How can Sam Raimi treat this holy Marvel movie like his old horror movies in the 90s? Doc, Doc Derrickson's movie in 2016 was a work of art. It's not a popular That's not tweet. A tweet I'd make. That, right? That's or not a tweet I'd make. It is personally. not a popular tweet. Let's put it that way. You have uh, the freedom yeah. to make that tweet, but I wouldn't recommend it. A lot of Almost people are shitting all of all over it. it sounds wrong. But the funny part to me was that one of the responses is, "Wait, what horror movies has Sam Raimi directed?" Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> he directed Spider Man One, Two, Three, and that's it. Three is a that's horror it. movie. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people would be like, "Oz the Great r- dragged me to hell." What? What do you say? T- even Evil Dead for some people might be like, "Wait, what's that though?" Uh, um. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Assume at least Arkham Origins quality for first. What new licensed game series would you make? Okay, sorry, can you read the first part again? I didn't. Arkham see. Origins quality. Man, I liked Ar- Arkham Origins to be honest. I actually liked it a lot more than Night. I like Origins, but well, that's interesting that they said Origins and not like Arkham City. They said at least. What was the, yeah. So what was get, the super chat? Like, you get the quality of the game Arkham Origins at least, and what new licensed game series would you make? Is mm. Arkham Origins generally regarded as a good game, or is it okay? People tend to not like it. Um, it's probably one of the Arkham games that I, I think has the best story, so there's something going for it. Yeah, it's basically the Arkham games, Rags. Like it's, it's a little bit different because it was a different developer, but it's basically in the same mold. Uh, and I don't know. Any, like, it might be a good like bandage to put on something you fear is going to get really, really bad. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, what what am I what am I worried about other than fucking everything? Uh, and I want my Daredevil game. Oh, and if I can get that kind of um, but then again, it, if you mod the game Sifu with the Daredevil mod, it really feels like the Daredevil game you want. Right. <laughs> You were the long man. You were meant to stream for 12 hours, 8 minimum. <laughs> but what did you do? <laughs> it's true. Not burning me. That's mean. Uh, but yeah, for me, I really don't know, actually. It would be tough, because I guess I'm on board with loads of different IPs. Getting a game that's at least good. Hmm. Hmm. A little bit of a toughie. 
there's plenty of anime that could probably have really good games if any Japanese studio would put effort into one of them, but most anime games are like very quick cash-ins that are not very good. So I'd love a good Berserk game, but we're probably never going to get it. Elden Ring's honestly probably the closest we'll get to that. Maybe there'd be cool They're potential for a Stranger Things game. Yeah. There's got to be some dynamic you can work with with the whole upside-down element. Things game that actually did get made, like a... Uh, I'm pretty sure there was something. For, uh, cool for Berserk? There's a no, few. A lot of people think the Dreamcast Berserk game is really good. Oh, for Stranger Things. Sorry. Yeah, I think Netflix put it's... out some top-down strategy game. game? Really? Yeah, yeah so apparently... Sucks, apparently. <laughs> Oh, really? I, I, I've never played the Dreamcast one. I, just, I hear that game's really good. The only no, Berserk game... I, oh, crap. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that twice somehow, but it's all yeah. okay. Uh, but, 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 but. Hey, boys. Keep up the good work. Sending you good vibes Hello. and real shekels from Israel. What do you think Ooh. will be the next big sci-fi brand that will replace Star Wars? Already exists or yet to come? Well, it's Star Wars. Uh, not Star Wars, Marvel. It does seem like Marvel did unseat Star Wars' position. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Especially when they did the solo TLJ part. Marvel were like, we're taking over, buddy. We're just, and they seem to be doing really well, because everyone still absolutely sucks the dick of every Marvel movie that comes out. Yeah. Um, <sighs> what would take over Marvel, though, if we had that question? It'd just be like, it's probably going to be pretty difficult to do that for a long time. I'd say so. It would probably have to be something original, because I, I don't think there's any major properties which exist now that stand a chance of getting an adaptation that could challenge Marvel and Star Wars, like, scale-wise. Quality-wise, yeah. like, any movie, almost, at this point. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think Avatar will do it, but I guess that's a potential. No. I mean, I guess yeah, Avatar, I guess, could stand to make as much money as those. But, but like, like, as, and as much money seems doubtful, doesn't it? Yeah, probably not. Uh, did you guys see the behind-the-scenes video where Mark Hamill was on set for Book of Boba Fett Luke's Skinwalker scenes? So, why did they use Reese feature? Probably because they were like, we don't need you, man. We've got, uh, we can make him sound younger. We can make him sound just like you sounded in Return of the Jedi, which is what we need to do. He'll be fine. And then, yeah, he sounded like that. Because to be fair, you know, he doesn't sound exactly like he does in Return of the Jedi at this point, but why would he when he's that much older? Sounds like an older man, which is totally fine, but yeah, they, they probably thought their respeech thing was, like, bulletproof. Uh. Wade Milk when? Uh. <laughs> we'll, we'll let him keep his milk. I don't know about that. Uh, Obi-Wan said that he had a brother while in the truck. Yeah, which could end up being some way they make a new series as well. Bring in a new character. They want to be like Marvel. Um, Marvel have characters all over the place all the time. They can pull from all their source. Star Wars kind of have to just keep making it up. Which is funny, because we would prefer that they go and make all their own characters in some other timeline, in some other part of space. That'd be nice. Yeah. Go fuck up your own shit. In my head, Canon Reva was beaten to death by sand people shortly after leaving the Lars farm. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, the, the sand people are a peaceful, noble culture. Yes, they were yeah. proud and noble. Also, Very progressive. Thanks for posting old EFAPs on SoundCloud. Hi, Rags. Hello. It's not me that's doing that, but whoever is, uh, thank you on behalf of the people who prefer the audio versions. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 is a story valley, but gameplay peak of MGS. Yeah, I can agree to that. I don't unless it was Solid 5, yeah. I think I only gonna... played half of it, I think. Because I, I think the, the story... It looks like it it's done, but then you have to do, like, even more after, like, 50 it... hours of gameplay. I, yeah, I don't know, I, I was confused. And there is like another ending and some other arcs that wrap up and quiet storyline huh. ends in chapter two as well. But they, the big problem with Metal Gear Solid five is that there was supposed to be a, an act three or chapter three, but they, they fired Hideo Kojima from Konami before he finished it. You can watch a kind of animatic version of it on YouTube, though. It was kind of neat. They do sort of a Lord of the Flies thing. with uh, Liquid Snake and Psychomantis just have an island where they're like 
children that are running this army because it's the 80s. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never finished that one. Because, like, oh, I think I'm done after 50 hours. And, like, nope, there's more missions, even more. And it's main missions. Like, oh, uh, I think the, I'm good. The story is <laughs> riddled with holes, though. It's like, I can't it, tell it you what the not... story was anymore. I completely yeah, forgot it's... everything. Uh, hey, Mola, I wanted to say you're the, you've easily become uh, one of my favorite channels. Your videos are ex excellently made, and I look forward to your future projects. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to making some more videos for you to hopefully enjoy. Videos of the way. Greetings all, and hi, Rags. Hi. Hello. Yo. Are you guys ever going to cover the Rambo movies? I always thought it was interesting that he doesn't try to kill anyone in first blood to mowing down countless foes by the sequels. Thoughts? Well, really to be fair, not in first... the same character. <laughs> yeah, but also to be fair, in first blood he's in like a hometown. In the sequels he's oftentimes yeah, in like true. foreign lands fighting mm. enemies and stuff. You know, it's... But yeah, uh, they'd be yeah. interesting to go through, I think, yeah. First one's really incredible. Second one's alright, too. Falls off Rainbow after second that, blood. I think. Yeah. I haven't seen the newest one, though, so for all I know, that's great. Final Fantasy XV is a big mess, but I love it. Yeah, that's fair, also. Mm. It, it's a real victim of its story being spread out over too many supplementary materials that aren't just the game itself. There's, there's a CGI movie that uh, Aaron Paul's in, like the guy who plays Jesse in Breaking Bad, and um, as well as a, a 2D anime, that's, I think, four or five shorts that are on YouTube. And hmm. the story makes a lot more sense if you watch both of those and play all the DLCs. But if you were to say, hey, but should you have to do that to understand the story? No. But <laughs> I've played 33 hours of Metal Gear Solid Final Fantasy 15. And that was when a friend was here. He was playing something on my laptop. I was playing something on my PC. On the couch. We're getting drunk. For like a whole weekend, I was playing the game. I think I did like a million side quests and like five main missions. <laughs> I don't even know where. I don't think the story hasn't properly started yet. I, I don't even know. Uh, there, there are two, I believe, chapters in, in the middle of the game or towards the beginning of the game that are, are very long. Like, hey, go kind of explore everything and do a bunch mm -hmm. of side quests. So if it's a 30 hour or say a 40 hour game, like. 25 of those hours are in two of the chapters. Fair enough. And uh, it's up like 16, 17 chapters. Something. I'm trying to remember where I stopped. I think I got some... What's this weird city where you have to go for a tunnel or something? It's like a bit up. There's this weird reporter guy you have to do missions for, and he does like... You need to do... What is it? A, a couple of photographs for him. Like a bunch. Oh yeah, the the photograph missions usually are the ones that you get, you can just find them around the open world. It's yeah, like, hey, yeah. we can take a photo here. Then the end of the game, though, you get to kind of make a little photo album of all the mm. all the photos you thought were the best. Sorry, I think um, I finished that city. I, I don't remember the name or anything. I, was like, I think after that, that's the next main stuff. I don't know. But yeah, there you go. Sam Raimi says, Kevin Feige cast John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic because the fans had a dream of who the perfect Reed Richards would be. Because this is an alternate universe, Kevin said, let's make that dream come true. <laughs> so that means it's Thanks. not going to be... Yeah, back, well, there's, there's, there's two big things for that. First of all, also, nice. <laughs> you said that like you wouldn't want to do a fan cast for the actual timeline. It's like, okay, that's uh, fine. But then secondly, like, this, did you, do you remember what you did to him? <laughs> yeah, like, People the fans like were that, real yeah. thrilled to see him get turned into spaghetti. Yeah. And also, just tell one day how, to, even though Black Bolt, like, I don't, still don't understand how him screaming would blow up his own head, but. Well, why, yeah, he, yeah. yeah. I, I wonder how Black Bolt fans are, like, fans of the Inhumans feel about that. That, like, he doesn't even get to have the fight, he just gets it. Uh, MGS5's gameplay still holds up. Them controls. I, I really enjoyed MGS playing that game. Gameplay. Yeah, yeah, like I liked playing it, but I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> no clue who these people were, what they were doing, what was happening. The, there was a guy who's on fire and he flies. 
and then there's like a lady in a gas mask and Ooh. there's i i don't yeah. even i uh, what the fuck is i don't even know whatever just let it, me play it's a little boy it's psycho mantis from Ogre i'm Soul. like if i just oh that helps <laughs> and the the flaming whale is a vision the flaming whale Oh, you didn't there see was, the whale? Yeah, there was a flaming <laughs> whale in the opening. Right? He, I probably, he, like, I probably, I saw it. I probably just forgot because there's so much weird shit in that game. Probably yeah, times hey, I that, forgot. A, a lot of the weird shit in that game is Psychomantis making people see stuff. So they, they can get pretty wacky with it and still make it sort of make sense within its own universe. But I, a Metal Gear game is never going to be rock solid logic wise. So you're going to have to make a couple jumps but I think they're charming. Will there be an EFAP on Stranger Things? Would be great. It could even be a good topic for 200. Just want a long-form discussion on it. Not sure. Perhaps. No promises on that one. Uh, you can choose only one franchise to replace the last decade of bad content with good versions of their shows and movies. Which do you choose to save? The MCU, the DCEU, or Star Wars? Uh... Star Wars, if it can be saved, I, I think I would like to save Star Wars. With an MCU coming in the close mm. second. Yeah, I'm also kind of myself. But I am, so the, yeah. So, the so snap was, decision, like, I thought I MCU, because it's bigger, there's more content to be good than what Star Wars put out. Like MCU being obviously all the movies plus all the TV shows. Um, and you could say that same for Star Wars, but it just seems to be less. It means we get mm -hmm. more good movies and more TV that's good. And, you know, the MCU is really influential. It's a, a story everybody's watching, pretty much. It would be nice I if think, that was good. I think in that aspect, it would be, I think, easy. I think that uh, Disney would change gears depending on which, like yeah. how they had the MCU has overtaken Star Wars. It's totally possible that it would be the other way around. If Just kind of depending on what people latched onto and what made the money. But I wouldn't want to deny uh, making Star Wars good. If not great, um, all of its content. Yeah, because I it like could, Star Wars. I it like could the bolster MCU. all of the more wonkier parts of its current lore, and then it could expand significantly. There's no reason why Star Wars can't be as big as the MCU, really. Yeah, no reason at all. But yeah, I'm not even sure. Uh, but uh, as you can tell from my choices, the DCEU has been kicked out. <laughs> it's like, I just don't. Yeah, I just don't have any attachment to it. Whatever, whatever well, the DCEU is, I don't really care. Yeah, the about difference it, is. Yeah. Star Wars was built on the OT. The MCU was built on like Phase One and Two, having a lot of good entries. DCU was built on what? Man of Steel. Like, I'm alright. We're not like trying to save its core. And if you want to say like it's built on the source material, fair enough. But like, I'm just mean as they currently stand in the these franchises. Did any of you guys watch Peacemaker? Tried to. Yeah, I thought it was alright. It wasn't great, but uh, is it, there's some good James Gunn humor. Mm -hmm. Decent action scenes. Dramatic story time. My uh, 08 Civic kept burning through belts till I found the cause was a seized AC clutch. No problem. I'll just reroute the serpentine to avoid the mm. bad pulley. I looked um. up the sky with one tear in my eye. I had bypassed the compressor. Nice. <laughs> nice. Hey. Well, hey, and you can feel inspired by the lady who did it the best. You're Great. maybe you're a Skywalker. They're basically like gods. Mm-hmm. That's what I've heard. And in That's a way, I've heard you you can just sort of grab the name whenever you want. I've seen other people do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you too can become a god. Hmm. Oh, compressor. That's great. Kingdom Hearts three and Final Fantasy fifteen both shared the same rough development due to what was going on with Square at the time. A lot of engine changes and rebuilds of the game. Right. Hmm. Um, I wonder if I can summon Riot YMS to the chat. Lion King ripped off Kimba. Oh no. That would be what would do it. You're like a rumbling. I guess that's just, <laughs> yeah. maybe that summons the video, it just starts playing. Um, and by best game I mean, uh, story, it's... And by best game I mean story, it's the only one that's sealed with the brutality of war without coming across the movie as well as quality in all three game types. I think this is the guy who was asking about his game. Oh. Story, it's the only ones that sealed with the brutality of war without coming across as a movie well as quality in all three game types. Is 
he may be talking about Metal Gear Solid Five still. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I'm uh, very it's confused not... by the. The story isn't the reason you play Metal Gear Solid Five. It's, it's it's got a lot of really good flexible gameplay. You can approach objectives from a lot of different you know, strategic philosophies, but if you're going there for like the Metal Gear tight six hour action movie thing it's uh it's oh, not really gonna apparently he's talking about card world of war oh okay it was certainly the most it was, i think it was the first brutal ish call of duty kind of game it felt like it was a lot more raw in its portrayal of war yeah other games i mean they had like dismemberment and like a lot of yeah it was certainly the roughest how is when are you going to do an EFAP movie's Long Kong not a meme yet? I don't know what you mean. The first person to ask that. Not necessarily yeah, a meme question. Me. I hear the movie is pretty yeah. good and I remember liking it. I yeah. ridiculous to just suggest it that would be a, a meme. It's gonna be an EFAP for the ages. I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry, it's gonna be an EFAP for the ages. Some masses are always trying to tiz them uphill. Oh, yeah, late one. Cool. Arniverse movie EFAP, start with Total Recall. Oh, it's a possibility, yeah. Who is this Robbie Wade guy, and how did he die? Uh, Reva, she threw a little battery thing at his at his sewage speeder, as they call them in the uh, show. Rip. Hit him so Boy. hard it killed his kids, too. Blew up carnage everywhere. Hopefully he gets his own series of insane. Maybe his own trilogy. Uh, how would time zones work in Star Wars? Famous um, that, power world, right? Probably, it, yeah. Well, probably in each planet would have uh, each planet would have its time zones, assuming yeah. they did. Which most of them probably. Oh, would. I think. I think what they're asking is like, so planets have different day lengths and different orbital periods. So yeah. how do you line it all up across the galaxy? I guess you. Well, I was getting there. What I what I think what oh, would probably be likely is that, especially if you have a singular, very very large governing body. There would be a set of standard time. There would be there would always be like like our UTC or whatever it's called. But think of it on a galactic scale where everybody just kind of knows what the galactic time is. So if you need to, in a simple way, convey time to someone else who's really far away, you could say, we'll do this and be there and make sure that at, at galactic time 420.6, you you know, this is when an event occurs so that everybody can be on the same page. I assume that's how it would be done. I think you absolutely nailed it, and I was thinking the same. All right. Yeah. Uh, back when Vader and Yoda fought in Soul Calibur, I remember. I remember that. Star yeah, Killer was in that one too. I think like Xbox got Yoda in something was something like that, where depending on what system you were on, mm -hmm. Xbox you got had it. Yoda, PlayStation was Vader. And both got Star Killer. Uh, if you want an actual good example of Master fighting a former student who turned evil, watch Shifu vs. Tai Lung in Kung Fu Panda. So much better. Kung Fu Panda is just a good movie, man. Yeah, I remember that. All being... They're darn good. It's been a long time since I've watched it. There are three Kung Fu Panda movies, right? As far as I know. And uh, there's probably like a holiday spinoff or something like Shrek did. Maybe they should have a crossover with Shrek. Kung, Kung Ooh, Fu Christmas. Kung Fu, Kung Fu Ogre. Yeah. Or the How to Train Your Dragon Dragon. Swamp Fu Panda. I'd watch it. The well, Rise of Skinwalker. The Rise of Skinwalker. <laughs> Nasty. Ugh. Absolutely disgusting. The Rise um, of Skinwalker. If you want a good story involving... So whenever they start like this, you can just be honest yeah. and recommend whatever it is you're about to recommend. <laughs> if, you, if you want it. If you want a good story involving Force Ghosts, one of the comics has a descendant of Luke threatening Luke's Force Ghost with suicide if he doesn't stop talking to him. Wow. That's pretty dark. <laughs> okay. Uh, why do Weekend Warrior and Metal sound the same? <laughs> Germans and Filipinos. Are no yeah. way. That's the same. You are, you are having a joke. I don't think they um, sound the same. I mean, you can have a side by side comparison when you watch Metal's Forge when he was a guest. There you go. Oh. Cheap log, let's go. I don't even know what cheap log is. 
German cheap food. Plug. Cheap plug. Cheap plug is like, is that like goulash? No, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> mm, goulash. Delicious. Uh, thoughts on Rahul Kohli's initial tweet on Reva? She's black, you're racist, there's zero nuance. I think he's lost in the Hollywood bubble. Absolutely. Mm. Loads Absolutely. of actors Absolutely. Um, this is kind of the unfortunate thing. If you like an actor's work, you have to remember they've said something dumb on Twitter. And you just have to be okay with that. They do the thing. It's unfortunate that a lot of the narrative got made about disliking Reva because black, as opposed to just how horribly written her arc is. Yeah, it's just so there we are. Discourse is utterly destroyed. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yep, Good thanks job. So much. Here's my thoughts on Peaky Blinders. It's mostly well written, but it's morally bankrupt. Seasons rank four, greater than five, way greater than two, greater than one, greater than three, and season six can suck my and it. And it. <laughs> oh, no. No, what will it, what will it suck? I don't know. I guess we'll never know. But, I uh, guess we will never know. That, that's for you to fight about because I have not Peaky seen it. Peaky Blinders anyone... is morally bankrupt. That's not good. I'm not sure if... I'm sure people will be like, that's wrong, because I've seen a lot of praise for Peaky Blinders. Me too. This. Fuck, Mary kill, Game of Thrones Season 8, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Multiverse of Madness. Ah. Uh... What does it even mean to kill one of these? Does it mean they're just erased from canon? <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. I assume, if that's the case, a lot of people are going to go with Game of Thrones. Yeah, it was, It's like Game one of, of the worst sure. things that's ever been made, so yeah, probably. It single-handedly, yeah, killed off one of the biggest shows ever made that spanned a good near decade and n tarnished its reputation forever. Um, I don't know how to answer the other two. Irreparably, so too. I'll kill Game yeah, of Thrones, but the other two I have no idea how I could make any of this make sense. Yeah. <laughs> Also, hi, Fringy. Hey. Say hi to Rags for me. Hi, Rags. Hi, Fringy. Wow. There you go. Beautiful. We did it. So it's canonical. Aunt Baru's stubbornness is why Baru and Owen are charred corpses in A New Hope. <laughs> Baru, the Empire are on their way about these droids. Owen, I'm not leaving my home. We're enough. <laughs> yep. She killed him. We can take <laughs> I can absolutely believe that they... The Stormtroopers could have just showed up and said, Hey, we're just curious where they found the droid. I guess you guys you picked it up shooting. from the Dune Sea or whatever. And she starts just shooting. This is my place. We're never going to talk to the Empire. God, get out of here. And the, 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 the battle ensues. I, that is totally life. within her character now. She's just a fucking bitch. <laughs> that's yeah. what I mean. She was barely characterized. And now you've made her that? Like, what the hell? Why? <laughs> Kenobi Same people like said, said it makes sense because she was wounded, and I'm like, oh my god, this again. Kenobi is the show that managed to ruin Aunt Baru. <laughs> Nobody is safe. Run. Hide your uncles, hide your aunts. Uh, hide your kids, hide your wife. Hide your Lukes. <laughs> Anyone but the Patriots, lol rags so salty. I'm sorry Brady resized the b-holes of 90% of the NFL, but that's just what the GOAT does. The GOAT? Greatest of all time. What are you saying? I am stunned. <laughs> I'm gonna be Rest. honest. I just like didn't catch that. Could you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> They said, Rag's so salty. I'm sorry, Brady resized the b-holes of 90% of the NFL, but that's just what the goat does. Do you have particularly oh, strong Tom Brady. Tom Brady? No, oh, he's, I think, oh, it's probably because I said I just don't, I don't like the Patriots, or, like, I'm not a fan of the Patriots. I'm, you I'm you the made fan a, of a statement about sporting teams, therefore you must now defend it. Yeah. So, which is this is or definitely not a meme at all. But the the Patriot f fan who really likes the Patriots because uh, is that well, they're really I guess they're upset they got to clap back. But I just don't care for the Patriots. Apparently, Tom Brady because I don't know anything about football, American He's football. A quarterback. He's got he holds nearly every major quarterback record, including passing yards, completions, touchdowns, passes, and games started. In addition to the most Pro Bowl selections. Never having a losing season, he is the NFL leader in career quarterback wins, quarterback regular yeah. season wins, quarterback playoff wins, and Super Bowl MVP awards, as well as the only Super Bowl MVP for two different franchises. The only quarterback to win a Super Bowl in three separate decades. Brady has also been noted for 
the longevity of his success. He's the oldest NFL MVP at age 40, the oldest Super Bowl uh, MVP at age 43, and the o- oldest quarterback selected uh, to the Pro Bowl at age 44. I, I, yeah, that seems like a lot of accomplishments. <laughs> like, yeah, he's the Patriots quarterback. He's been there way for a long time. So he still I, plays, and he's 44 years old. That's pretty. That's extremely impressive, considering the the physical nature of well, because over in uh, Australia land in the AFL, if you're like playing and you're over the age of thirty, you are rare and you are probably very good. Um, it's it's just not common that you have anybody who's playing really much into their thirties. By then, you're kind of that's it. You're done. You can there'll there'll be newer players who'll come in. So, forty four. Damn. Yeah, I guess uh, they really like Tom Brady. That's good. And you don't, apparently. I don't know. I don't. I I guess. <laughs> I know he's a quarterback on the like of the Patriots or something. I know the name. He's a sports name, but I don't I know anything about sports. I don't. I don't he's care. not not on the Patriots. Anymore. Is he not? Is he moved to some other? It team, says he is in the Tampa Bay Tampa Buccaneers. Bay Bucks, yeah. Okay. Man, that he must have like cost them a pretty penny. Yeah. Kotal, one and two, too obvious. I assume these are the. This is their answer best for the stories. best story. Yeah. Mm. I've only ever heard good things. Yep. Yeah, they're both really good. Uh, frack the boys. Have you watched Invincible yet? No. Yep. Nope. No. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Invincible's good. I liked it a lot. It's um similar concept to the boys, so that might make it uh, seem a little less fresh than it might have had it not come out around the same time but it's Fine. it's animated the um the main performance that got memed like crazy was uh, JK Simmons as the sort of superman yeah. type archetype think mark and, uh, <laughs> think think <laughs> yeah uh, oh, I, I was getting that a lot for about a week think mark think I'm just like yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Look up uh, movie posters for possum. Creepy. Movie posters for possum? Oh, that is kind of creepy. Oh, oh I hate it. Oh. Ew. Oh. That's not nice. Why, don't do that. Why is that called possum? I don't want to know. It's probably a bad <laughs> answer. Like, a creepy answer. Can you spy him deep within? Little possum, black as sin. A Matthew so Holness film. Possum. No, I'm all right. <laughs> Edinburgh Film Festival. Scots. The bloodish Scots. Uh, MGS5 modding is insane. What games do you mod a lot? Um, um I, Doom. I I'd say more than anything. I, the original. Back game. in the day, I did a lot of modding for uh, Amnesia because I just pl- played those custom campaigns because I really liked them. I don't it. make mods myself, but I install them on, let's see, Minecraft, of course. A lot mm-hmm. of uh, some mods for Minecraft. RimWorld. Um, uh, we do some for, when I played Arma, we do some mods on those. There is stuff, that, I'm trying to think of stuff that I've kind of played recently-ish. But for the most part, it's Minecraft and RimWorld. Those are the two I sort of play now that I I use mods for. The last thing I modded was Blade and Sorcery, Sword and Sorcery. Which way around was it? Blade and Sorcery, the VR title. Just putting in oh. more, more weapons and stuff. Uh, some funtisms there. Uh, what else? Warhammer, Total War, some uh, I was like rebalancing mods and stuff. Because sometimes, for me personally, Warhammer, Total War feels a little bit arcadey. So Sounds it makes don't the, buy RimWorld, pirate it, it so the, fucking overpriced. Jeez. Mm-hmm. Is oh, yeah, RimWorld that expensive? Uh, the, huh? That's insane. RimWorld is worth every fucking penny. Oh yeah, RimWorld is awesome. I bought yeah, the Thunder, DLC Thunder super said, quick. Dark Souls 3 mods, like the convergence mods and stuff. There's some cool stuff there as well. I mean, hey. Uh, oh, yeah, Gmod. Yeah. 
it does happen that we'll say, hmm, I'm not sure if that game was worth full price. In the same way that some games you're like, that game might be worth more than full price. Yeah. <laughs> Elden Ring was kind of that, honestly. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to replaying that in a year or so, and then there's like a million mods out for it. So, next one says, Dinosaur of the day, Sitakasaurus. Fossils from this dinosaur have given us the first preserves cloaca known from a non ava Avalian? 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 Cloaca and the avian? Yeah. A dinosaur and a belly button. It is an early relative to Triceratops. Wait, hold on. Why would it... If it's born from an egg, why would it have a belly button? I assume something connects it to the egg, right? Is there, a, is there some kind of a connecting thing that keeps it sort of, like, attached inside so it doesn't slosh around too much? Or I don't know. I am not familiar enough. There might I, earlier I said I'm bad with biology. I'm going to cite that again. <laughs> I know, just just dinosaur oh, cool. To the yoke, <laughs> dinosaur cool. Well, like the dinosaurs. Star Wars video game. <laughs> oh, called oh, before you do it. Um, I, I looked up Cetacosaurus, and it and it said showing results for Stegosaurus. I guess by the way I spelled it. And the first question people ask: Why is Stegosaurus the dumbest dinosaur? <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Wow! I'm like, cool Whoa. As fuck. I, so I I clicked on it because I'm like that's so harsh. Like oh my goodness, you've never met. And it says uh, why is Stegosaurus the dumbest dinosaur? Stegosaurus is often called the dumbest dinosaur because of its incredibly small brain. In fact, scientists originally believed that its brain was too small to control such a large <laughs> creature, and that it used an auxiliary quote unquote brain located above its rear legs to help control its movements. It's also oh. the horniest dinosaur. Uh, is it? Or the big like plate horns on its back and I guess you'd call yeah. them it. It doesn't have any horns. Dinosaur. Those are <laughs> the spiniest yes. dinosaur. Look yeah. at those yeah, strongest there's spiniest. Spiny. There's no no horns here. Ah, Triceratops okay. is really cool. Triceratops. You see you, that's what you say like Triceratops is very horny. Okay. Ha ha ha. Yes. That is very oh, it's got oh, like oh, yeah, it's, right. it's got like oh, it's got I, a few of them. I didn't do yeah. my studying. I skipped Jurassic <laughs> World Dominion. Ew. Oh yeah, oh, that, if you well, want, none of us have watched it either. So yeah, we're behind on our shitty media. <laughs> oh no. Uh, thoughts on the Chucky TV series? Oh, I didn't see it. Why? I have never seen any <laughs> Chucky thing. I've seen Chucky one and three. I wouldn't mind doing the Chucky <clears throat> series at some point. Does it get weird? I. I yeah, they, well, that's what I was going to say. I was like, I don't, I don't think Child's Play ever needed a sequel. Never mind. <laughs> like seven sequels in a series. Yes, it did. It needs more. <laughs> no, no. All right. Win this one. <laughs> I don't feel passionate enough about it to argue. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't care about Chucky. It's a, kind of a neat thing, I guess. Uh, but no, I haven't seen the TV show. Um, Star Wars video games really never let me forget the music. Going to be a great asset to make use of, isn't it? <laughs> Good meme. <laughs> you gotta show them. Yeah, you I was like, in the audience, see this? Oh, it's that way. I've had that all screen for a while. <laughs> I it love is. They uh, that little image of Hoba from that episode is yeah. such a perfect encapsulation of comfort. Yeah, it's so just cozy. A toasty little cinnamon bun. Cinnamon bun. I never <laughs> want to get out of this bed. Oh, gotta, <laughs> gotta pee immediately. Think, yeah. over, think, 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 think. <laughs> I guess I'll get up. <laughs> um. <laughs> I want to see the show of just Yoda tending to his little swamp. God. Yeah. <laughs> maybe then, he like starts little... doing calligraphy. He always wanted to, but he never got the time. Yeah, and like maybe he's got a, a piece that he really loves, and a little bug creature takes it and starts jumping up and down and around. Yoda's like, no, and has to chase it until he becomes friends yeah. with this creature. See, there's your writing challenges, like 
creating a show that is just Yoda hanging out on Dagobah and making it really interesting. But you could do it. You could do it. Bring you look up the opening of the Bumblebee movie. That's exactly what you're looking for in a Transformers movie. I hear that, that movie is better than the uh, the Michael Bay Transformers films. I remember yeah, at people least the... like that opening. They don't like as much the rest of it. Right. Well, I think it's just what people want. It's so odd that especially in the climate that we're in now, that there isn't just like a full-blown Transformers animated movie on yep. Cybertron. Like, you imagine that now would be the time to do that instead of having the human characters and having it all be on Earth. Like, that's what people want to see, I think. Yeah, it looks like it's just a flat out, like, they're on Cybertron and there's a bunch of, like, Transformers that actually look like the 80s cartoon chilling out. Well, mm -hmm. not chilling out. They're actually in an intense battle, but yeah. nevertheless. <laughs> uh, she frosty. Hulk's feet. All right. She okay. Hulk's feet? Oh, that's a show that we might I, have to watch or not have to watch. She Hulk's feet, the show? Um, Dang. Oh, yeah. Everyone's cool. getting a spinoff. Even her feet are getting... <laughs> Jeez. Hey, Moller and Co. Just recently posted a video and have grown some following. How did that feel for you? How did you feel when tackling a new video? Um, I think when the first video kicked off, I immediately was in the mindset of like, right, so the next thing I make has to be something that I can actually speak on with some level of insight. It has to be something I have passion for and something that the people who've just liked the previous video would like. And obviously I was like, what about an in-depth look into The Last Jedi? That should be fun. And then it was fun. And the rest is history. Rags, what about you? Okay. Like oh. how, how you, how did it like feel when you, you like started to gain some traction in terms of people noticing what you were doing and like then how did it influence like the next videos you worked on? I don't know. I can't remember. I I legit can't remember how I sort of felt other than it was insane. You know, like what what's happening here? This is I don't. How do I? What do I do? How do I deal with this? But I don't really know. Um how that influenced my video making thought process is just a while ago. And I don't, I just don't remember. I just don't remember. I guess, uh, in my case, it's kind of funny because the end game video is the best, most successful. Uh, I was going to say, uh, I mean, I, I think it's, it's, I, I think that video turned out all right. And that yeah. one is uh, doing well at the moment. So I guess that process is ongoing. I know what I'm working on next, but, I mean, also doing the Obi-Wan stuff, so that's kind yeah. of a... Uh, I don't know how much it's influenced, though, because what I chose to start working on next, kind of, it became apparent to me that that's what it was going to be anyway, because that's where my interests lie. That's that's it. I want to do it that way. Whatever, wherever my interests lie is what I'll make a video on. I don't really have a following, but my wife's doing well. Well, it's hey. all right. <laughs> I mean, well, if either you or Bell want to say anything about the video creation process, go right ahead. What? 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 Uh, oh, uh, I mean, I mean, I only did the one John Wick video, and that did all right, considering I, my following was way smaller when I put it out, and it got deleted immediately when I posted it. So that was yeah, that's fun. That was an experience. Hey, you did your first uh, scripted video, and a week later, okay, we nuked it. Give us money to, or we nuked your channel. It's like. Yeah, no, oh, that's the only video on my channel. You can't flag anything else, you fucking scammers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I mean, now I'm doing the, the whole Metal Forge thing, which was, I mean, it was basically Mewpsley's idea. I mean, I guess you said, you should do something on a regular basis. And I was, okay, and then the next day I did a Dune review. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, that, that's definitely fun. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a video that uh, went like uh, viral or whatever, so I'm just I'm just chugging along doing my my content and stuff. Jamie Lannister, I don't care what people think of me. Tywin Lannister, no, that's what you want people to think. Mic drop from the master. In conclusion, Hassan cares. Hi, Rags. <laughs> Hello. Oh, In dude. conclusion, Hassan cares. True. <laughs> It goes a lot. And and again, this this has got to be such a clear example of this. Like, he's got so much money. He's got a, a <laughs> career that a lot of people would want to have. 
and he gets really angry that someone put him on a tier list below someone else who he has more money, money than it? and more fame and more people like him. And yeah. yet, and yet, it's not about money. It's about I don't know self confidence. I guess. <laughs> I <don't know>. Dude, <laughs> I want to see that vision yeah. of the Dark Knight. <laughs> Yeah. It can't be about money if you advocate for socialism. Oh. The Joker's self-help book. Also, <laughs> the joke. But also, also check out my BMW. Hey. Uh, uh. Oh, feel the rhythm, feel the rhythm, get on up. It's bobsled time. Cool runnings. I remember the film. I don't remember anything that happens in it anymore. Well, I remember that they lose at the end, but then they walk wow. across wow. the first line and everybody... Oil. And every... Spoilers for just real historical events. Yes, from thirty uh, years ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. I suppose, but technically, all of narrative are historical <laughs> events now. Like that's yes. literally what reading a history book is—is is getting all the spoilers. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. spoilers. Like, all right, spoilers. Um, Napoleon. It didn't. It didn't pan out. It's like, whoa, hey, damn. It, dude, that would be an interesting thing to, like, not tell anybody... Well, it, it, like, it, it's kind of experimental, because I don't know how else you do this, but... To have a bunch of kids, you know, like, let's say 20 of them grow up, um, in, on, you know, in a Earth-like environment, but they never know about the World Wars. And then they're given World War One and Two as, like, TV shows. And then they're, t <laughs> like, with fake names where needed, and then they're told, like, no, all of this actually happened. I wonder what kind of experience that would be. Like, I wonder if... It would be incredibly tragic and shocking that they would just like hope that their world wouldn't have been capable of something like that. But you know, maybe what what would be the first thing that strikes them as the most absurd to believe that this actually happened? You know, I think it would probably be a, a, a five stages kind of deal. Like at first, they would probably be in denial. They'd yeah. Be like no, no way. And where would we go from there? I I'm not sure, but I feel like the first if I. Never even heard of World War II and then saw the opening of Saving Private Ryan, I would probably think that you were showing me fiction. Well, that, you wouldn't really, like you said, you wouldn't want to believe that's what's happened, you know? Yeah. Uh, Authentic Observer made a great video about the defeminization of women in media, Galadriel in Rings of Power. Vorsch made a shit response. She came back with a gold tier video slamming him. She watches Drinker 2. She should come on EFAP. Yeah. Who, Such an Adam did it last her week. channel name again? Authentic Observer. Um, well, when we get around to the Rings of Power coverage, I w I've already said I wouldn't mind having Disparu on. I've been on a few streams with him and um, this 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 girl. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Disparu. This lady. Guy. Yeah, I'll check this out. I'm aware you of. You do notice um, that a lot, though. Like everyone. Oh, has oh. Have to uh, yeah, Vorsch's response. I'm aware of that. Yeah, that's what yeah, Sitch and Adam last week did, Bosch's response to her video. I've seen the clip where it's fucking bizarre that he's, he looks at how she's dressed and says she wants to be sexually harassed by the men in Mad Men. What? It's just like this... <laughs> baffling. Like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is not your... You're not allowed to say that. That's not your team. Stop. You sound really fucking weird. Um, and yeah, she took full advantage of that. Why wouldn't you? Um, and as far as I'm aware, she did a pretty strong response because Rings of Power, not looking good. You don't want to be on the side of defending what they're probably going to do with that. Um, but hey, we'll give it a fair shake when it's out, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely, we will. No. Wow. <laughs> For metal. Metal's, metal's already decided it's the best thing Down ever. Down with metal. Boom. Yay. He already loves it. Yeah, it's my favorite show ever. Uh, rah, rah, rah. Best show. Oh. Um, Black Mirror's White Christmas messed with my head. Yeah, it's yeah. quite a strong episode. Uh, Speaking of Mad Men. Yeah. <laughs> nice and creepy, that episode. It's full of all kinds of very horrifying future potentials. That That's the problem with that show. You're like, oh no, that's going to happen, isn't it? <laughs> Damn, fell asleep and now I'm stuck in the past. Hi, Mark, and hi, Rags. Hello. Hello. Also, hi, Moodle. Hello. Um, watch the behind-the-scenes video, like, five minutes long. Mark Hamill was giving comments on how he feels Luke would say the lines, and they shot each scene once with Mark Hamill and again with the other actor. Well, they didn't save his lines, did they? <laughs> <laughs> they, 
<laughs> they compared it with the robot and said, you know what, the robot's got this. They probably did. They probably said the robot's, the robot's got sounds this. younger. Yeah. That's that's probably the the protection money that's being paid so that Mark doesn't have any more conversations about his disagreements on the direction Luke was taking. I think at this point he's not going to say anything mean about Disney Star Wars ever again. They, they were just pretending to record. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's on totally. Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, that Why was good. Red first, light on. No, this first, is a new camera. He's first like, take first again. Try, good yeah. job. It doesn't sound like me in the final version. They're like, no, that was you. That was it, you. It's totally you. That was you. We did a little yeah, bit of like, like you know, audio yeah. stuff balancing at the end. But like, <laughs> Dude, I, I could totally see a bit like, oh, we, we, we just increased the volume. It, it, it does sound like that when you do that, yeah. Mm. yeah. We did some pitching, that's it. Just yeah. change the pitch. Yeah, but it's all you, buddy. Thanks. We really appreciate you showing up on set. See you and, the then, and then they look show. at their watch. Oh, oof, you've got to go now, don't you? Yeah, you've got to go. Damn. <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, the next time he says, so what are you filming? They're like, yeah, so we're shooting here. And then he drives there and it's just nothing. It's no like, one there. <laughs> they lied to him. To he get phones him. They're like, he's like, oh, Kenobi Mark, in the field. Oh, I'm so sorry. We gave we, you the wrong address. Last minute change. Yeah. Damn. Last minute change for the shooting Ooh, schedule. We've already yeah. fired the intern that did that. Off they go. <laughs> yeah. We so, also don't shoot. Also done shooting, so back, you can just eh? drive home. It's fine. Yeah, look, all right, it's it's fine. Okay, we appreciate it. Okay, <laughs> just hang up on. Yeah, on their end, it's just them going, yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. Okay, yeah? bye. Okay, 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 bye. okay bye. Bye. <laughs> Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Just tries to say goodbye like five times. She just keeps talking. <laughs> it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It would have been better if it was about him learning of Anakin's past, i.e. TRs, while Vader hunts a fake Obi-Wan who's a Jedi working for Reva, no Leia. Jedi working for Reva? How does that work? I love how I'm always at the point that I'm blanket agreeing when I hear it would be better if, I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah, I already... <laughs> the idea of separating them out entirely, Vader and Obi-Wan, on their, their plots, that's already better to me. We get to draw out the meaning of why you're showing us these events at the same time, because a good writer can make a strong reason for that. Um, Mark, where foe you live? Be loud and clear, JK. Um, to Toronto area? Canada? I mean, uh, I'm not going to give you my, like, exact address, <laughs> but... <laughs> we need a house number, damn it! <laughs> I, li I live in the biggest city in the country above America. Oh, there you go. Uh, this just says "Wow" as in "World at War," I guess. Mm. Oh yeah, they were saying that's what they were talking about. I got you. Hey, EFAP crew. Two questions. One. So, how do you guys feel about Callisto Protocol? Ooh, I'm looking looks forward. Looks pretty cool. cool. Yeah, yeah looking forward uh, to it. I hope it's gonna be great. I, I I can't imagine why any of us wouldn't play it. Um, and most of us yeah, on stream, I'm so. Very just. I like that it comes out like two or three months before the remaster comes the out. Dead Space yeah. Remake, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I feel there will be comparisons made, probably. Yeah. yeah I, I guarantee you, everyone on that Dead Space team is hoping Callisto Protocol is going to suck. They're like, please, <laughs> please, be please, bad. Be, please bad. be bad. Please be bad. And two, do you think there are video games that don't or shouldn't need a remake or remaster? Yeah. Absolutely. There's loads. <laughs> yeah. Um, For the most part, any any game that has a scalable PC version, I don't think you ever really need to do a remaster of, because mm. if, if you can make it so that you can scale the resolution of a game from the 80s or 90s up to 8K, like, and I don't know, you can always add mods well, too to make things look a little prettier, but... Especially stylized games, like I could never imagine them being like, we need to remaster Kirby's Epic Yarn. Like, um, <laughs> probably not, no. With realistic graphics. But, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of what other examples I would say where you don't... Like, Metroid Prime, I don't see why that would... Maybe update the controls, I guess, you could have that. Yeah, yeah the mm -hmm. controls mm -hmm. of the GameCube version are rough. But the um, Prime Hack mod on PC, if you play with perfect mouse keyboard controls, mm -hmm. ooh, that is, uh, that's some good video game there. Um, you guys got any other ideas on games you'd be like, you don't need to touch that? Um, you Pac don't Man. need to touch it. Uh, yeah. Um, need to touch. I'm sure there's probably yeah. It's games that are really simple. 
games that a link to the past that's probably a fair shout as well yeah 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 there's probably a lot of games from that era that that game boy advance kind of because you know where they have their own like style and look and you kind of like it and you really appreciate it now and you don't want them to fuck around with it just a suggestion of um resident evil 4 is like if we strictly got a graphical update i'd be fine with that yeah the um the HD project for Resident Evil 4 looks pretty crazy, but the the big problem I have with Resident Evil 4 uh, playing it now is that there's no there's no really perfect control scheme for it that feels uh, you know modern uh, and not from the gameplay mechanics or anything, but just specifically the controls. Because on the Steam version, you got you still have to like aim with the left analog stick, which even for controller aiming is a bit weird, and the mouse keyboard controls are. Uh, for some reason, I can never get any mapping, like key binding, that works well. So I, 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 I could do with some revamp controls for Resident Evil 4, but that's pretty much I it. I play 4 on mouse and keyboard, and it's fine for me. There's a couple odd buttons. Uh, I think some of the most strangest pairing of bindings that I've ever seen for a game are in Resident Evil 4, the, the, the Steam version, mm -hmm. to pick up an item let me double check what they are um i uh, i just want to uh let's see da, 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 da. you okay yeah you have to you you use backspace to pick up an item in your inventory <laughs> and if you want to rotate it it's page down <laughs> that's the weirdest bindings ever mm. I don't I think I've ever no used backspace and page clue. down. <laughs> no clue why, because all of the other buttons are pretty normal. You know, E and F and move around. It's, it's pretty standard. You know, shift to run and, you know, space to bring out your night. Really standard stuff, really. Mm -hmm. And then it just throws you those, the backspace <laughs> and space down. And so every time you go to your inventory and you want to move stuff around, you just have to move your hand over Ooh. to those buttons that are way out there. And I don't know. That's just someone just decided those would be the buttons. Yeah, and it's that some of them are unmappable too, so you can't even like rebind them. And apparently the the MT framework, which is the engine that Capcom was using at the time, their games are like notoriously difficult to mod, which is why you don't see very many Resident Evil 4 mods out there. But uh, that HD project one that just got released uh, a couple months ago looks crazy good. Like I, I strongly recommend checking Notice it's a backspace to delete, not page down. So it's just delete. You have the delete key. As ah. just, to, just for accuracy. But that was weird because I know when I started playing, I was like, what? Where are the buttons? Because you assume it's just like F or E or R, something like that, yeah. to mm -hmm. just pick up and rotate items. But no, no, backspace and delete, of course. <laughs> uh, hi, Rags. Hello. Are you going to play Dark Tide when it comes out? It's the 40K version of Vermintide. Yeah. I think it'd make a great EFAP gaming. Um, I will probably play it. I've played a lot of Vermintide 2. I have over a thousand hours in it. Uh, I enjoy it mostly, enough to play that much of it. So we will see how Dark Tide turns out. Mm. I don't think it would be... It might be okay for EFAP movies. The problem is that EFAP, the, our crew, were on the, the three corners of the world. <laughs> and so, like, ping and stuff can be a legitimate yeah. issue. Depends yeah. on what we play. So a game like those that have, I just don't think it would be a game that would be great for EFAP gaming. It's one you kind of want to really kind of get into. The more you get into it, sort of the better it gets. And plus, there is definitely a timing element to it and aiming at moving objects element. As and Court of Black Garrett and X-Ray Girl have been playing Vermintide on their, their Sunday co-op streams that they, they do together. So um, they will be playing Vermintide tomorrow, and they are certainly going to be playing Dark Tide in September. Sweet. I'm looking forward to it. We'll see. We'll see. That, that Fat Shark is, um, they make some odd decisions. I'm not, they do, yeah. I'm not completely pleased with Vermintide 2. I really like it for what it, like the, the gameplay stuff, a lot of it I really like. But there's some like legit downright steps back from the first Vermintide and there's some baffling decisions the they make. Yeah, like loot acquisition loot is just objectively in general is worse. It's it's one of the few games where you can you could spend um materials to make your weapons and gear objectively worse. Um yeah. <laughs> it is it's it's a legitimately bad system that you're just gonna have to deal with in order to progress through the game. And it's uh 
Yeah, I can see how it would turn a lot of people off because nobody wants to get on a game, play a few levels, uh, especially in a game where losing is a huge loss to your progression. And, and your team. well, everyone loses. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing. It's because uh, some games, it's just if you if you're the weak link on your co-op team, it's it's like they can still kind of finish the the round, but it's uh, no, it's, not very easy to do that. that in this is a whole different issue in terms of if you the amount of stuff that you get at the end of a round. If you lose, it's very, very little. And if you win, it's the thing you need. And mm -hmm. so if you lose, even if you get to the very end and lose at the very end, it feels like you've wasted your time. Yeah. And that's a shitty yeah. feeling to have. And then when you do win and you get those materials and then you try to upgrade a weapon or roll for new properties or whatever, and you just make your weapon objectively worse. That's just a shit tier decision that whoever made just should be fucking fired. What a ridiculously stupid thing to put in a video game. And as much as I like that game, I don't, I don't blame at all. The fact that people might not stick around or they see that and they're just like, yeah, I'm just not going to put up with this. I got better things to do with my time. Especially when Vermintide one just had a, it had a legitimately better system. Hmm. Uh, Will you going to revisit Doom Eternal? Uh, to be fair, I've never played it, but... I might finish it one day, but I just don't I, care about it at all. I think I need to give it another, like, shot, as in start from the beginning, play through the end. I should, well, I, I, I wouldn't mind streaming the first and second again, just why not, yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I guess like it's just... played for it once, so I like it. I like Doom Eternal. I guess I'm just trying to figure out why it is that with Doom, I sort of blasted through that one right to the end, whereas with uh, Eternal, for whatever reason, I just stop, and I'm not yeah, that's quite what I sure did. why. Eternal's a lot more complex than Doom 2016. Doom 2016, there's not a lot of barriers in your way other than just the combat's challenge, whereas Doom Eternal, if you don't, if you don't understand the systems of how to kind of chain the different abilities you have and things you can do together it's really difficult to get through some of the the more intense encounters especially towards the end of the game uh i guess it kind of depends on what difficulty you're playing on too uh, i think ultra violence is kind of the sweet spot right i was just i just wasn't having that much fun through and through in eternal and i loved the doom 2016 but eternal never did it for me i just i i like I was having fun. Um, I remember though that when it was the the mini boss that you would fight, I just really struggled with uh with that mini boss. Like you know what was Which it one? the the doom the the doom slayer dude like the, Do the doom guy. hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For whatever reason, I just I just found it very difficult to. Uh, what, is uh, it the one the one that has the the shield and the shotgun and the dogs yeah, or yeah, the yeah. the guy? Okay, oh, yeah, that's oh, yeah. the that's the marauder. I think and, the um, first yeah, one yeah, yeah, I, I struggled I remember with. people mentioning that, yeah. I uh, really struggled. Even in the Marauders, um, there there is a way that you can figure out how to I'm take sure it so is. that you can kill them in like two or three volleys of their attack, and it's all about kind of keeping them at the range where they're not close enough to use the shotgun, but he's not far enough away to use his big projectile attack with the axe. So I don't know it's kind of it, it's a weird enemy because it's it's one that you have to keep at mid range. But that's the kind of what I mean. There's like a lot more that you need to be thinking about consciously in Eternal, whereas Doom 2016, it's more like, do I still have health? Do I still have armor? Do I still have ammo? Cool. And that's yeah. And I guess worry about. I guess I wouldn't say that any one of those is necessarily better or worse from a design standpoint. They're just different. Um, mm -hmm. And it might have been the attitude that I came into Eternal with wasn't compatible. I guess so. Yeah, I'm, I'd I'd be happy to give that game another shot. Well, they follow up with saying. Rags is a good boy, but he and the guest had a lot of bad takes based on faulty info, i.e. it encourages defensive gameplay. Which one? Uh, Eternal. Eternal? Oh, uh, no, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say that at all. It, you can't even reload unless you get, get into the fray and use your chainsaw. Or, something. or like, you yeah, can't even reload your ammo. I think I think I it does a, a pretty good job of uh, making you aggressive, uh, I think. I don't remember anyone saying that with the defensive thing. I could be well, wrong. I, it's been I, a while, I don't so I don't, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I just listened to everybody, but I don't even remember it myself. That was a while ago at this point. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't need to go back. I, I'm pretty, I, I think I was on that one. because I think I, I always meant to play the game. I just never did. Yeah. 
Um, also, how do y'all feel about Adia 2, High Rags? Uh, Red Dead Redemption, I, I assume that is. Yeah, I still haven't only played it's... the multiplayer briefly. It seemed really neat. Still haven't played that one. I haven't played it. I really like Red Dead Redemption 2. Yep, very solid story. Very, very interesting open world. Uh, I think the combat could probably use yes some, uh, <laughs> readjustments. Yep, I don't know why we're still tapping the X button to sprint. 2018 yeah, when the game came out. Weird one too. But otherwise, yeah, I like. Uh, fun fact, Disney's own continuity Qui-Gon cannot manifest himself as a Force ghost. He didn't complete the training from the wills. I've seen a lot of people Ugh. saying this. Apparently it's like <laughs> definitive canon from both IP holders that Qui-Gon can only do a voice. He can't do physical form. They don't care anymore. We they don't, don't really care. Yeah, they I definitely just, don't I don't care, fuck. and they don't care. I just don't fucking care. I would I care about that if... Matters. I would they, care about that if they won't. got everything else uh, correct. I'd be like, oh no. But at this point, yeah, getting something the, like that point, wrong yeah. really doesn't scratch the surface of my concerns compared to all the other shit, you know? Um, but I understand people getting annoyed by it. Bring Ian Brady, sitting in a tree. E-F-A-P-P-I-N-G. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> Plut, marry, kill. Tala, Fennec, Shand, and Aunt Baru. So immediately Let marry Mary Fennec go. out of the three. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a relatively socially normal person who's also incredibly talented. And like competent, thanks to... Yeah, her... You know, I, I'd have to go back and look at some of the things she does, mm. but I think she's definitely the strongest of the three in terms of just sort of being a normal person that you could probably just talk to on the daily. Yeah. As uh, for plotting or killing exactly. Tala or Aunt Brew, I have no idea. I'd toss it up, throw a dice, I don't really care. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what it means to plot somebody. Oh. oh. I have a couple um, ideas. Well, oh, Tala, God. I guess she's too st stupid. And I just don't. I mean, Aunt like pretty fucking dumb. If we go from the Kenobi yeah, but I, I know she could like function in a like a household situation, you know, like Let's she just, could yeah. be. As long as no stormtroopers show up or yeah, death, we should be fine. And plus, if that happens, you got to be like, listen, no, we're not. Just you don't, you don't give in to her, her stupid. Out. Yeah, you don't give in to her stupid nonsense about we're gonna Sith Lords come and no, we're not gonna hide. We're gonna. Fight him in our kitchen. It's like you're crazy. You're actually insane. Mm -hmm. Go sleep. Uh, on the topic of Transformers, EFAP movies when? Not sure exactly when, but that's also an arc we'll do. Oh, It'll happen, boy. guys. You've got like years of EFAP left. Possibly 20, decades. 30, yeah. Oh boy. Uh, Jurassic World Dominion broke my heart. I wasn't expecting it to be great, but not so disappointing. It was a funeral to my most beloved movie. Um. They've all Fallen been Kingdom that, was, to be fair. Yeah, Fallen yeah. Kingdom was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. It really was. Um, also, please update the EFAPS playlist. It stops in the 150. Hi, Rags. Oh my god. Hello. It really has been way too long since I've updated that. God uh, damn. I'll figure out a good time to do it, but it'll, at this point it's going to take me a while. And that's okay. Okay. Um... Actual comment I've seen regarding the final duel. It was so poetic when their lightsabers touched, it turned purple. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the Jedi spirit of Mace Windu. They're summoning Mace Windu. Oh, no. And that means something, I guess. Uh, Stake Bentley's video on MGS4 is a must-watch. Long. Fair enough. All right. I think I might blame MGS4 on the, the current state of of Sony's outputs all all kind of being walk forward for 10 seconds and then watch a 30 minute cinematic these days. <laughs> I, I believe Metal Gear Solid 4 was probably the one that did that and became a huge success first. You know what? I think I'll uh I think that I would actually put the onus a lot more on Naughty Dog than uh The Last than, of Us. Uh, I was going to say isn't the Last of Us I, is the 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 fucker <laughs> the one that ruined everything the fucker. Yeah, I would say that um, because you could say with Uncharted, Uncharted definitely has like the mandatory walking sections, but like, it's still it's it's still at least when you look at like one and two, it's still like doing the video game thing where it kind of tries to more clearly divide cutscenes and gameplay. Mm -hmm. Um, I think yeah, I think The Last of Us and the, all the praise it got, Citizen Kane of video games was what kicked off, and also I think it was a, I've said this before, but it was it was multiple factors it was like coming into that generation of consoles 
the Xbox One had such a shit reputation and a lot of it was stemming from multiplayer and like microtransactions and stuff like that. You know, the, the Halo gets Forza, that's all they had. And so like Sony at that time was leaning away, frankly, from what I think they were doing well, which was a lot of variety in their games to like very much all of their games started to fit into that mold. Greatness awaits and all that shit. And they got a bunch of awards for it. And then like they ended up in a place where all of their games now are the same genre. Not to say yeah. that they're bad, but they're all the same broadly. Uh, and if you don't like third person cinematic action adventure games, what do you got? Ratchet and Clank? Like, that's it. Everything else can broadly be fit into that categorization. And I think that's The Last of Us fault more so than, uh, I haven't played Metal Gear Solid 4. I hear that game has like nine hours of cutscenes, but I don't think that game kicked it off. I think it was The Last of Us. I think it, it sort of showed them that they could do that and have people be happy about it. Where I think that prior to that, I think even, even Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, there was a lot of criticism about how much time you actually spend with cutscenes. But I think by the time 4 came out, just because it looked so amazing for the time, like, I don't know if you guys remember, it was, it was actually the same year Modern Warfare came out, or Modern yeah, think, Warfare 1. And 2000 came out in 2000, I think. Yeah, so those, those two games were like, oh, like video games are starting to look almost as good as movies. Like, this, this is pretty nuts. And, and Metal Gear Solid 4, is, it, it's fun. Like, I mean, they are, I mean, the, even just watching the cutscenes, there's some really amazing action scenes in it, but... It really is. I kind of noticed it when I was replaying through all of them with X Ray Girl and some streams that we were doing together. And Metal Gear Solid 4, I'm just like, okay, so now we can talk to the chat because I'm playing the game and we'll wait for the next cutscene to like watch again because that was the whole thing. We were trying to make her watch the Metal Gear games and see if she actually understands it. And we noticed that we hardly had any time to actually play the game. It was like, okay, yeah, cutscene again. Help me out here on this one. I haven't played those games. From what I've heard, even though Metal Gear games have like really long cutscenes, generally when the game starts, it's like gameplay. There isn't much in terms of walking, like slow walking mandatory sections a lot of the time. Like it, it No, is yeah, no, no, that that doesn't happen hardly ever. Like I, I there's yeah. uh, you could maybe say chapter three of Metal Gear Solid Four is a bit of that where you're in you're in Europe and not really doing the typical gameplay. But for the most part, the gameplay kicks off and it's actually really solid. But Metal Gear Solid 4 is, it, it's very limited. And there's really only two areas of the game where you can even do stealth. Like, for the most part, it's a mm -hmm. shooter. So it, it was a bit of an odd one. I hear that that one was the odd one. That uh, Kojima didn't even really feel like making it, but everybody wanted it. So he did. I, yeah. I always say that um, the, the best one is 3. That's what I hear a lot yeah. of the time, that the best one is 3. Yeah, I, I would say that is safe to say, at least from a narrative standpoint. Um, gameplay, probably a toss-up between five and Revengeance, I guess, but Revengeance kind of isn't really... <laughs> like, like, it, it, Revengeance it's a plat that, yeah. platinum action game, so it's not it's not really a stealth game in the same vein. Chat, someone said Metal Gear Solid 4 has awful pacing. I can believe you. It's one yeah. of the reasons why I didn't play Uncharted 4 again, is because I... Like, this is the risk you run when you go very heavily into narrative and when you make what I would consider at this point to just be a flat-out mistake, which is we need to try and blend cinematics and gameplay. So let's have slow walking talking. I think that the best way to do it is to just clearly segment gameplay and narrative unless mm -hmm. you can tell your story without ever taking away massive amounts of control from the player. Um, just do what Infamous does, where like characters will talk to you on the phone, but you have full control, and you can still run around and jump around and fight people. Like they don't take away any of the mechanics from you to deliver story. I think that when you do that, it can be really cool the first time around, but after that, it's like, damn man, like I just want to play the video game, you know? Well, like, that that would be a difficult concept to wrap their head around for a, a Last of Us Stan I was arguing with the other day who tried to make the case that Ellie Ellie in the cutscenes and Ellie in the gameplay are two different people and I shouldn't hold them to the same moral standard. What? Nice. That's actually absurd. That's uh, probably one of the dumbest things I've heard. <laughs> yeah. That's really stupid, actually. Um <laughs> whole point of um it's insane point of like that's what ludonarrative dissonance is where like it's yep. it becomes 
Why would they say that? The whole I thought the whole theme of that game is like violence begets violence. How yeah. how is like any questions about morality or whatever? Like it, what in the okay. All right, whatever. He was trying to make the argument that her goal was to confront Abby, not to kill Abby. So her letting Abby what? live makes perfect sense. And I was like, well, what about all the like the scores of people she killed to get to Abby? It's like, well, that's gameplay. It's a different person. I'm like, what? Oh. what the hell? It's like we mm. obviously like we got to suspend our disbelief while playing video games. Otherwise, all of us are mass murderers. I was like, yeah, but first, say the Doom Slayer and Doom Eternal, him massacring demons makes perfect sense with his character. What? You can't have this, it both ways. What what is highlighted is what ludo narrative dissonance is. This is why when you're making your game, you don't do what Tomb Raider does, where like in a cutscene, she's like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry, I killed you," and then you just open up into a standard <laughs> combat section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where you <laughs> like start. 2013 <laughs> your only your only thing that they do to try and soften that is have lara say i'm sorry while you're in full control <laughs> well, just yeah. fighting these people it's really bad it's a disconnect like when you play mario you're not there thinking like man these fuck these goombas like Man, I wonder if they're like oppressed by the by the peach regime Wait, you know? you're like, not? any sort of <laughs> any sort of government things like Ludo narrative dissonance is something that you need to try and think about when you're creating a video game. I think that just, um, I think they're just saying, well, just ignore it. Like, mm, you know, ideally you would want it so that your story doesn't contradict your gameplay narratively. Um, and a lot of the way to, well, just the way to avoid it is to not, I, Matthew Matosa said it, and I'll keep saying it because it's really true. They made Bioshock Infinite into a first person shooter because that's what sells, even though it, contradicts the story that they're trying to tell in a lot of ways as opposed to odd world abe's odyssey which he brings up in that video where it's like well the gameplay is like in tandem with the story it's either the story came after they decided what kind of game they wanted to make or they decided what kind of game they wanted to make to support the story they wanted to tell mm -hmm. you can always not make a third person action adventure game if like your third person action adventure stuff is going to contradict um the story you're trying to tell I think, um, speaking of Kojima, Death Stranding does a really good job of um, achieving, I guess, ludonarrative consonants. That okay. The gameplay systems in that game actually reflect the, and I'll, I'll say the word, themes of the story he's trying to tell in um, some really, really kind of interesting ways. Um, I, I, I could I'll send you a link to the video I made on it where I explain it in a bit more depth because this has been quite a tangent for a super chat. And I, I apologize. No, nah, that's... Tangents on EFAP, perish oh, thought. That never happened before. <laughs> what? Crazy, really, honestly. <laughs> Terrifying. Uh, the things those kids would find weirdest from World War II would likely be Wojtek or Jack Churchill or Owen J. Baguette. Uh, some weird stuff happened in that war. Fair enough. Got some heartburn remedies. Uh, Gaviscon. <laughs> or whatever yeah. equivalent is in your area. <laughs> Antacids. Uh, and then avoid eating the things that cause it, I guess. I think that, that is that's actually priority one. I'm I get hard like three times in my life, so I don't I don't know. Are we want lens of Anakin's past, i.e. the Tuscan Raiders, while Vader hunts a fake Ben, which is the trap orchestrated by Reva and a Jedi that wants him dead. Okay, that yeah, that 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 sounds like it could work yeah. real well, actually, yeah. Um I'd probably put Obi-Wan on a bit more of a Something else happens other than that. But I assume you're saying that's just something that happens while he's doing that. But I like the idea of Vader hunting down Jedi and he's, there's actually a trap set for him. And he has to, like, you know, struggle to escape it or to be victorious over it. Um, even though he's kind of a bad guy, you know, like bad guy POV, but we're still interested to see how he can overcome the challenge sort of thing. Be far better than what we got. Lovely. Do you think EFAP would have been formed if most franchise movies produced from the last seven years were objectively good slash passable? If given the choice, would you... Oh, wait, so that's the first question. Um, I don't know, but maybe... I don't even know. We wouldn't have met. Yeah, we'd be on completely different paths. So that, I likely yeah, wouldn't so be talking to Rags been... or Fringy right now. Yeah, that that's kind of the, the big starter to this you know this element of the super chat is that we would not have met if tlj was a good movie 
Well, I would have. I, I was, already knew Rags before I would have known, came yeah. out, but but, but Mole would have like, been Muller, still Wolf. I would have continued I making. Realm of the long. Yeah, like if TLJ was really good, I just would have carried on making the videos I was making, and I don't. I have no idea where mm -hmm. I would have ended up. It might have been that a bad game comes out, and I make a video on that. That maybe that kicked off, and then I just focused on making game reviews. Um. Or whatever else. Who knows? Uh, but would EFAB exist? Certainly not in its current form, as for at all. Like, probably not. I can't see why it would exist if you remove all of those other components. Yeah. If given the choice, would you give up all of EFAB for that outcome? So when you say give up all of EFAB, do you mean that Mirags and Fringy no longer run it as a show, but everything else stays the same? And then at the same time we get loads of all the franchises get good content released? I think that's the idea. Because um, we would just do a different show. This is what I mean about like the question is a bit... I'm trying to think, figure out the spirit of the question. Give up all of EFAB. I, like, does that mean including not meeting Regs or Fringy and becoming friends with them? I, yeah, because this is the thing. If it meant... Um, what if, you know, if the wizard can send me back there and everything can be good, would I take that? And the, the, that's a problem for me, because I've very much enjoyed my time with meeting all the people I have. Um, so it's, it's not an easy Plus decision Plus everything to make. else that people have done. I mean, think about all the careers that TLJ launched. <laughs> it really did. I mean, TLJ. I don't want to... Yeah. It would imply yeah. that all of that is lost as well, the entire discussion. I mean, yeah, sure, franchises die, but the old stuff is still there. And, I mean, hey... Sometimes you just got to take it. Sometimes you, you got to roll with what media Life's is out. And who knows what all of the other different effects that occurred because of these franchises being I would, terrible. I would have some would, yeah. very fundamental, almost philosophical concerns about the nature of the art history that's being created. Because if it's done by magic and not humans at that point, because what I'm arguing here is like, we've forced them to be good. Therefore, mm -hmm. that's not actually something that we've achieved. And so that's kind yeah. of concer concerning. It should be that we like do everything we can. Kind of yeah, it, it, I would prefer to live in the real world, quote unquote, and to push yeah, for I better writing. Mean. That's another aspect of it too. It's kind of like the whole God. It, it's like, how can you, if you could do such and such to make such and such? It's like I don't, I don't know if I just, I don't know if I have the right to kind of make those kinds of decisions to change things that other people have done and made, and especially because these movies and everything they're. It's not like it's one person. It's huge teams that, and, and these massive companies, and there's a it's a spider web of people doing this and that and this and that, and there's so much networking that's involved in it. And these are not little things. And I don't. I just don't think it's something that you should change, even if the franchises are bad. Well, who knows all the knock on effects that that has? And yes. maybe it's not the worst thing in the world that we get bad franchises. You know, really, when you get down to it. We still get good stuff coming out, and absolutely, uh, we'll still try and point that out and point out the bad stuff and just go on. Like, is it? Um, I think it's actually one of the we're missing the context at the beginning of it, but the the new mini that'll come out for Kenobi. Um, I think I jokingly describe this as a a shit converter podcast in passing, and it relates more <laughs> so to the uh, stuff like Kenobi or Boba Fett, where nobody really wants to watch those shows when they really hate them, but what gets created as we a result of us. something good out of it. Yeah. yeah, I feel like discussing them and reacting to them can turn them into something that's much more consumable. Um, and so, yeah, you've got it converted and then good stuff. So in a way, it's like, it's not so bad. Um, but yeah, there's lots to think about, and it would be a struggle to answer that with ease, because uh, maybe someone could convince me if all franchises were really well written, the world would genuinely be better off because everyone would be more inspired and more unified on a lot of different things. I don't know if that would actually translate, but maybe an argument could be made. Um, thank you, Massives and High Ranks. Hello. I think the Left 4 Dead 2 would be better for EFAP Gaming than Vermintide. Probably, yeah. Probably. I think, uh, in fact, I think definitely. I think it definitely would be. Um, Mark has been a great host. He should be brought on permanently and even take over Morla. It's good because you don't even have to rename the stream. I, I swear that one wasn't me. 
Wait, how does that even? What do you mean we wouldn't have to rename the stream? <laughs> Rename the stream. I, uh, I don't know. What's this, the stream called? Every frame of pause. Like the title of this episode. The Not thing the is, like, oh, I guess this is with Mark the Cyborg. But, in the. Oh, I thought they they were referring to Efab, and I was like, well, I guess you wouldn't have to I, rename it for whoever was to be taken over. That's what I was looking at the the title of the specific episode right now that you've made. I, I guess thank you though. That that's a very nice <laughs> thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely a, agree, of course, but you know. If a competent yeah, writer and or director was selected, would you be down to see a prequel series set in the late eighties universe of OG Jurassic Park, possibly a limited series spin off film, Irax? Uh, Hi. What would you make it about? Like the the way the, the research being discovered or something like that? Maybe or like when as they're making the first dinosaurs and how how that goes, but I, I think the the question is less about what's a a base concept that could be turned into something good, and more is is there any chance that the people who are currently in charge of it are actually going to execute something well, no matter what concept they're handed? Because the thing is, and, when you say if a competent writer and director was selected, would you? And I'm like, yes. Because, yeah. Uh, you know, I'll watch whatever <laughs> they come up with. However, um, if we remove that part and just say, like, of all the different ideas in the world, which one do you want to push to be made? This one, I'm not very tempted by. I'm like, uh, Jurassic Park's fine. Don't need to do anything to it. Yeah, just leave it. I mean, it's it's been one good movie and everything else. Leave it's, it alone. It, it's it's literally Jaws. It's the, those series have the same trajectory. A near hmm. masterpiece first movie and a bunch of sequels that don't really matter. Yeah, just stop touching it. Leave it alone. It's on the table. Yeah, it gathers a bit of dust, but that's okay. Just leave it alone. Well, you know, you can always wipe off the dust and watch it and enjoy mm -hmm. it. Uh, how long do we have to wait until a Marvel slash Star Wars crossover? Reva, Captain oh. Marvel, Scarlet Witch joining up to fight Darth Mansplain. Hi, Rags. Want Hello! It. It'll, I, I can see them doing a Marvel Star Wars crossover at some point. Don't know. That was a, it's sad that I actually think they might consider that. That that was um, Parks and Recreation, the, the show that Chris Pratt was on. I think all, um, not Oliver Platt, um, other short chubby guy, uh, Patton Oswalt mm -hmm. had this this big rant where he was talking about what's going to happen now that Sony or sorry uh, Disney owns both Star Wars and Marvel, and he does kind of like a fan fiction that seemed like it was off the top of his head because. It was one of those, like, you know, scenes in, like, a show like The Office where it's just the people improvising and they rant. And um, it actually seems like he did a pretty good job of explaining it. Uh, oddly more so than I've seen a lot of scripts coming out of Marvel or Star Wars these days. I was going to say, whatever he came up with, just think of it, but way worse, and they might do <laughs> it. Uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance is the greatest medieval RPG. I recommend it to all. It is more incredible considering it was completely crowdfunded. I think I, I, I need to go. go back and really look into playing. I own it, but I've not played it. That was and one of those games that I bought because of the backlash against it. And I was like, ah, fuck these people. I'll check it out. <laughs> See what made people so angry. Yeah. Um. Well, that's it. We caught up with the... Oh, there's another one. <laughs> <laughs> South Africa's long-named town is We Buffles Mid-Teens things, which means two buffaloes shot dead with one bullet fountain. Oh. One bullet fountain? Damn. Yeah, oh jeez, can you imagine killing two buffaloes with one bullet? That must be a hell of a bullet. Damn. A good shot, too. Was it Weasel Badge said video title a joke? I'm afraid IGN said Obi-Wan Kenobi is amazing, okay? <laughs> Wasn't us. <laughs> Where? I should have put it in quotes. I'm not sure why I didn't. I put the other one in quotes. <laughs> I think I ran out of space, um, so I had to sacrifice something. Uh, also, hi, Rex. Hello. Alrighty. We did it. And that is the end of the Super Chat. Um, oh, wow. Before, yeah, we, yeah. before we wrap up, um, Mark, why don't you tell the kind people in chat wait, whoa, 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 who you even are? What are you up to? What's, what's happening these days? Hello, everybody. I'm Mark the Cyborg. I'm, I make videos on YouTube, although I've been working on this Metroid video since uh, the last summer because uh, I started a military course that distracted me for quite some time and then i finished it and elden ring came out and now i've got 
I've got a 20,000 word script for Elden Ring as well as a half edited Metroid video, which I'm hoping to have both of done by the FNT Vegas meetup in, in August, which is uh, August 17th, if anyone's going to be in Vegas. And um, yeah, and I'm married to X-Ray Girl, who's the Friday Night Tights producer. And um, I uh, last week, actually, Disparu, her and I and Epic Mike from Geeks and Gamers all did a reaction stream for Serenity, the, the movie of Firefly. Oh, neat. And uh, she is on her X-Ray Girl channel is doing Raiders of the Lost Ark, which she's never seen before on wow. Monday. Wow, Jay. Wow, Jay. I, I might... <laughs> Oh, uh, Jay, Jay, Jay makes X-Ray Girl look like a film historian in comparison. <laughs> Wait, do you mean that back with Dole Frontwoods? Because uh, I thought you were going to try and say that Jay is... I, Wait, who are you saying has seen more? Because I'm curious. <laughs> I'm saying Jay, Jay look like a movie historian. Jay has seen more films than X-Ray Girl are has. Are you sure I'm about that? Pretty sure, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I could, Watch we have tales that could you. guys have you. been ragging out of... I married Extra Girl, trust me. <laughs> like, there's times where I'll be like, hey. Yeah, well, I married yeah. Jay. <laughs> yeah, Jay's our manager. What does that even mean? Oh, yeah, fair enough. I'll, I'll be like, hey, just like in Die Hard, she'll be like, what's Die Hard? I'll be like, not even I oh, haven't no. seen it. You said, what's Die Hard just now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be fair. I don't even know that I believe that happened. It's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay Mahler, next, next time she's producing a real BBC episode, or if you're what on is the FNT, Die Hard? Yeah, no, just try picking the, the most. Of course, she's seen this movie and say, "Hey, uh, X-ray girl, out of curiosity, have you seen this?" I guarantee you, she's saying no. To be fair, I wonder what the most commonly seen movie is. It's a, um, it's kind I of. I would have said Star Wars. Time probably movie. Star Wars. Kind of a blessing in disguise to have someone you care about a lot not have seen loads of great stuff. Yeah, like, <laughs> uh, I got an excuse. I'm gonna watch Raiders of the Lost Ark right after this. Actually. Yeah. Good stuff. Um. So yeah, there's a link. To Mark Cyborg's channel, you um you end up popping up on lots of different streams here and there too, do you not? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm in in the groups of people. You're a stream slut, of, yeah. indeed. Um, well, yeah, you know, it's always always good to have you. We had you on for the Elden Ring discussion, correct? Indeed, yes. And uh, actually, I even referenced that EFAP stream in my script in a couple places, mostly because I got to thank Theo for uh, really challenging me on a few points that made me kind of think and dig a little bit harder on but uh yeah it's the longest script i've ever written and um well, i, I yeah, don't we... want to finish the video until it's it's good and ready though because i'll have you know though uh, it was said that we must have been afraid of theo on that stream as no one could challenge him Terrifying. <laughs> yeah. well it, i think that it was the the tricky thing about it is while i didn't necessarily agree with his takes he was also not wrong so i'm like eh. That, that oh, doesn't I, bother me as much as it bothers you, but it that is an issue. You're correct. He's, um, he's pretty obsessed with From Software's work. I've always enjoyed listening to his takes on, on it. He's he's like he's like a EFAP's version of Matthew Matosis. The closest we'll get. We got him there. <laughs> a little pocket <laughs> Matthew Matosis. And um, yeah, uh, that'll that'll be good shit when it comes out. So, like I said, link in description. Metal. What are you up to? Oh, I'm doing all kinds of things. Liar. Uh, Okay, I'm not doing anything. Ruther. Back to you. No, uh, as I already mentioned earlier, Metal's Forge, weekly thing I'll do now, uh, either alone or with guests. Uh, the last two were with... Uh, one was with Ass. Heels was Babyface. Uh, we talked about Dread, the new one, 2012. Yeah. The that new was... one. Wait, it's so fucking old. True. It is already 10 years <laughs> no old. One that's uh, so old. Yeah, and yeah. when uh, through that, it's basically just uh, if it's a guest, the guest says, Metal, watch this movie, and then we'll talk about it. And it's like, okay. Well, like, okay. Well, so far, every time I told people, hey, you can make me watch something good or something bad, <laughs> always a good movie so hey. far. <laughs> no one has taken anything bad yet. Uh, but I think Jay might uh, pick that <laughs> at some point. They're going to make uh, you suffer. And the one last week was with a Meme Repository. Uh, we basically have a, a DC animated arc uh, right now. Mm -hmm. And we watched Justice League Crisis on Two Earths last week uh, and talked about that. That was the longest Metals Forge to date with four hours and 15 minutes. It was My a long forge God. for the ages, if you will. Uh, so yeah, and there's going to be a new one tomorrow. 
uh, afternoon, night, I'll see. And I'll be talking about uh, Revenge of the Warrior or Warrior King or whatever name it has in your country because apparently it has like seven different names. Um, so yeah, that should be fun. That movie was not as good as I remembered it. So that's, that's probably going to be fun to talk about. Uh, mm. Specifically in the terms of it being cut to hell by the Weinstein company for Western markets. And I don't know what the fuck they did, but I think they kind of destroyed that movie and its pacing. Uh, so yeah, that's probably going to be a topic at hand. And other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm doing strumbles on the Twitch. Uh, I'm currently going, just just playing some, some Zelda games, Legend of Zelda, and I'm currently playing Majora's Mask for the very first time, uh, playing through that. And that has been a really good time. I'm actually surprised I never played it before because I am, I think it's pretty darn good so far. I'm, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Well, sweet. So there you go. Yeah. I myself am working on the Kenobi Mini. It'll be out tomorrow, hopefully, other than that. Working on bigger team video, and I'm still sorting out IRL stuff that's making me a little slower than usual. But that's about it for me. Rags and Fringy, what do you guys got going on, if anything? Uh, I suppose same as normal. I've just been busy the last couple of weeks doing a few things, but video should be done pretty soon. And I hope to, I hope to have the final Kenobi video out. Oh, I don't know what time is. It. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, hopefully, uh, Monday, I think. So that'll be something to see. It'll be amazing. That'll be magical. Mm. Um, I'm just helping with uh, the, the Obi Wan, but that's nearly done. So then after that, it'll just be back, full steam ahead mm -hmm. on the old projects next video and yeah, whatnot. <laughs> that's it. Alrighty. Um. Let me read these last three that came in. Uh, be warned, the story and world for KCD has quite a bit of tism. KCD? KCD. Kingdom Come Deliverance. Oh, Kingdom Come Deliverance, yeah. Ah. Uh. Fair enough. Um, goodbye, Allah Akbar. And for real, though, Drunk Stream <laughs> When. Um, d d playing some more video games is going to be back on the menu, boys, soon enough. Uh, yeah. The, the wheels will be spinning back up soon enough with, with a lot of different things. I didn't show you that EFAP TV variant for no reason. But um, Also, Halloween's Ooh. on the way. It's getting there, right? Fighting times. Got a whole arc ready for you guys. Ooh. Um, but yeah, anything else any of you want to say before we sign off? Oh, yeah. He, uh, the Jay and me are watching through TNG episode per episode. That releases every week over on Jay's nice. second channel, I think it is. Hey. Um, it's been fun. It's been fun stuff. Good job. That's uh, Empress of Milk, if you guys want to go check that out. That's the one, yes. Um, it's June, Halloween's on the way. It's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween is Basically, always on the yeah. way. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you for the very kind donations. And uh, tune in tomorrow for EFAP mini finale for Kenobi. I'm sure you'll have some rather fun times with what you would have heard our opinions are on a lot of this episode from today. And, oh yeah, um, it'll be a ride. Yeah, um, we'll be back next week, but it will likely not be live. Um, it'll be the copyright meme fab. But in the weeks following that, they will likely probably all be live. Uh, until we get the anniversary, which we are inching toward every day. Thank you all so much, and good night. Bye. Yeah, good night, everybody. Thanks for showing up. We'll see you later.